Hey, it's Uba from Team Navi. 大家好，我是实习战队的小鬼。I'm Fax, and I play for Facebook. 大家好，我是陪玩战队的 X Life 的。I can't imagine the game without fans. 粉丝们以各种方式支持我们，和我们站在一起。Imagine what it feel like to have skin drafts and then our team in the game. It would be like we are actually in the battlegrounds ourselves in the game. 兄弟们，现在登录游戏就能看到我们精英设计的皮肤了。We designed the skins in the way we've always imagined, wanted, and thought that would be cool. 现在设计好的皮肤已在云中上架了。If I encountered a player wearing our skins in the game, I would feel like、um, proud to be to like、uh, see that. 然后也是希望大家能够期待一下我们这款皮肤吧。也请大家持续关注我们。Please stay tuned for our development in the project.
Hello, players. I'm Pop Juglera. Welcome to our new series, CM's Letter, where we'll be addressing some of your thoughts and updating you on the latest changes we've brought to the game based on your feedback. Speaking of changes, today we'd like to discuss the recent changes made to normal matches. Over the past years, we've heard your feedback about the early phase of normal matches feeling too long or not being able to find enough items to loot. So, we've decided to implement significant changes to the normal matches rule set starting from update 23.1. First off, the playtime from phases 1 to 3 has been greatly reduced to match the early gameplay time of ranked mode. With this, we hope you'll be able to enjoy a faster paced match right from the start. Secondly, we've generally increased the number of weapons, items, and vehicles that spawn throughout the battlegrounds, making it easier for you to find everything you'll need. Finally, other settings such as the plane route and last circle location have been adjusted to match the settings of ranked mode as well. These changes have been made based on your feedback and our analysis of player data over the years. Our aim is to reduce the discomfort and difficulty that players may face when jumping from normal match to ranked. If you haven't tried out the updated normal match just yet, head over to the Battlegrounds and let us know what you think. We always appreciate your feedback and take them into account when creating the optimal PUBG Battlegrounds experience. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time with more exciting updates. Now we can be in the game to play PUBG ourselves. We've designed our own hair in our mind. It's a very beautiful hair. Guys, you can see our new hair now. If I encountered a player wearing our skins in the game, I would feel like um, proud to, be, to like, uh, see that. PUBG Esports가 오랫동안 고민해왔던 지점 중에 하나가 팀들에게 실질적인 혜택과 더불어서 공간 성장하는 모델을 만들고자 하는 것이었습니다. 그러한 맥락에서 글로벌 파트너 팀 프로젝트를 시작하게 되었습니다. 그 시작으로 GPT 스킨을 제작을 하게 되었습니다. 이번 스킨은 팀에서 원화를 직접 제작을 해주셨는데요. 그 퀄리티가 정말 예상보다 훨씬 좋아서 깜짝 놀랐습니다. 팬분들께도 응원하는 팀에서 직접 제작을 해주셨기 때문에 더욱더 의미가 클 것이라 생각이 되는데요. 자신이 응원하는 팀에 대해서 오랫동안 응원해온 보람이 있구나. I have imagined what it would feel like to have skins representing our team. It would be like we are actually in the battlegrounds ourselves in the game. Now we can be in the game to play PUBG ourselves. We designed the skins in the way we've always imagined, wanted, and thought that would be cool. I hope our fans really love the skins. I think they look really cool, so I think the fans will enjoy them as well. Well, the big challenge is to create something that represents the brand and it has to look cool so the fan has a desire for it. So you need to find the right elements and colors with meaning. I'm thrilled uh, that uh, GPT skins will help our fans uh, be united with our team. It's always exciting because you only create these things in the digital world and it's a great joy to see our fans who will win in our skin. 希望这些皮肤能代表我们十七战队，并向大家展示我们战队的文化和精神含义，这样才能确保皮肤能够被广大玩家喜爱和接受。对我来说挺激动的，能在 PUBG 里看到代表我们十七战队的皮肤饰品，这个过程让我想要拿出更好、更有说服力的表现，来更好的在电竞领域定位我。自己和队伍，就对于选手来说，在游戏里就拥有自己的那种专属道具啊，或者皮肤，就是非常有意义的一件事。然后希望以后这种合作也能够越来越多吧。I believe there will be more opportunities communicating with our fans, expanding the global partner team program. 
안녕하세요 저는 PCC 캐릭터 팀의 이준호입니다 캐릭터가 있는 의상, 총기, 그리고 탈 것들을 제작하고 있습니다 팀별로 그런 색깔이나 특성이 있는 디자인이라고 생각했고 일반 옷으로 생각해도 굉장히 멋스러운 디자인이라고 생각했습니다 팬들이 모았을 때 가장 중요하다고 생각되는 부분들 그런 부분에 중점을 더 작업을 했고요 팬분들이나 이제 유저분들이 보았을 때 우리 팀의 이 유니폼을 입고 실제로 경기를 할수 있겠구나 하면서 약간 그런 것들에 대한 만족을 위해서 생각을 하면서 작업을 했습니다 And I want to thank every fan for your support. It like means a lot for us. I cannot imagine the world without fans. 期待一下我们这款皮肤吧. 所以说你们的支持对于我们非常重要，也希望大家多多支持十七战队。谢谢大家。Xavier's position in, in particular is really tr Ooh. tricky for Ghibli. Ooh. Oh! Bing is once again landing a sick headshot! How is he getting away with this? Two more bullets in this AWM. Can Vegas make anything oh! else happen? Yes, he can! Stop! Please! Unbelievable! Vegas! <laughs> Desperate to eat the points. They're set in 15th. There's Cumin with the first instantly. The flush to follow. As now Sinan tries to find oh, another one. Cumin again. Oh, oh, oh. And one the third as well. It's on. It's now. It's on now. It's on this maneuver for these yep. to go out with a bang and not go out with the whip for the sense coming on in. Oldless with the grenade at the ready. It looks oh. good. Oldless takes down two of New Happy. For Akkad, still at her, holding the line, gets another. All of a sudden, this push for third party, or excuse me, for third eye, looked good, and now it doesn't. But they're losing players themselves. It's not going to be a free grab. It's not going to be an uh, easy continuation of this game, despite being a center spot. And it looks like Sun Sister also want to take part in this. Petrical Road actually backed away. They realized that. Oh, I say that. It's actually going to be third eye eliminated. Oldless swinging around the corner. This. I mean, you, like you said, FaZe needs points, and now they're walking right to the guns of Genji. Taming is making a pay, getting three headshots with the SLR. I'm Fax, and I play for Facebook. 大家好，我是陪我战队的 X Lab 的。I can't imagine the game without fans. 粉丝们以各种方式支持我们，和我们站在一起。
imagined what it feel like to have skins representing in our team in the game. It would be like we are actually in the battlegrounds ourselves in the game. We designed the skins in the way we've always imagined, wanted, and thought that would be cool. If I encountered a player wearing our skins in the game, I would feel like um, proud to be to like uh, see that. Please stay tuned for our development in the project. Hello players, I'm PUBG Glera. Welcome to our new series, CM's Letter, where we'll be addressing some of your thoughts and updating you on the latest changes we've brought to the game based on your feedback. Speaking of changes, today we'd like to discuss the recent changes made to normal matches. Over the past years, we've heard your feedback about the early phase of normal matches feeling too long or not being able to find enough items to loot. So, we've decided to implement significant changes to the normal matches rule set starting from update 23.1. First off, the playtime from phases 1 to 3 has been greatly reduced to match the early gameplay time of ranked mode. With this, we hope you'll be able to enjoy a faster paced match right from the start. Secondly, we've generally increased the number of weapons, items, and vehicles that spawn throughout the battlegrounds, making it easier for you to find everything you'll need. Finally, other settings such as the plane route and last circle location have been adjusted to match the settings of ranked mode as well. These changes have been made based on your feedback and our analysis of player data over the years. Our aim is to reduce the discomfort and difficulty that players may face when jumping from normal match to ranked. If you haven't tried out the updated normal match just yet, head over to the Battlegrounds and let us know what you think. We always appreciate your feedback and take them into account when creating the optimal PUBG Battlegrounds experience. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time with more exciting updates. Now we can be in the game to play PUBG ourselves. We have created our own and If I encountered a player wearing our skins in the game, I would feel like um, proud to be to like uh, see that. PUBG Esports가 오랫동안 고민해왔던 지점 중에 하나가 팀들에게 실질적인 혜택과 더불어서 동반 성장하는 모델을 만들고자 하는 것이었습니다. 그러한 맥락에서 글로벌 파트너 팀 프로젝트를 시작하게 되었습니다. 그 시작으로 GPT 스킨을 제작을 하게 되었습니다. 이번 스킨은 팀에서 원화를 직접 제작을 해주셨는데요. 
그 퀄리티가 정말 예상보다 훨씬 좋아서 깜짝 놀랐습니다 팬분들께도 응원하는 팀에서 직접 제작을 해주셨기 때문에 더욱더 의미가 클 것이라 생각이 되는데요 자신이 응원하는 팀에 대해서 오랫동안 응원해온 보람이 있구나 느끼실 수 있는 계기가 될수 있을 것 같습니다 I have imagined what it would feel like to have skins representing our team It would be like we are actually in the battlegrounds ourselves in the game Now we can be in the game to play PUBG ourselves We designed the skins in the way we've always imagined, wanted and thought that would be cool I hope our fans really love the skins I think they look really cool so I think the fans will enjoy them as well Well, the big challenge is to create something that represents the brand and it has to look cool so the fan has a desire for it so you need to find the right elements and colors with meaning I'm thrilled uh, that uh, GPT skins will help our fans uh, be united with our team. It's always exciting because you only create these things in the digital world. And it's a great joy to see our fans who will win in our skin. I hope these skins can represent our 17th team and show us our culture and culture. So we can ensure our skins can be loved by the wide world and accepted. I'm very excited to see our 17th team in PUBG on PUBG. This process is very exciting. 让我想要拿出更好、更有说服力的表现，来更好的在电竞领域定位我自己和队伍。这对于选手来说，在游戏里就拥有自己的那种专属道具啊，或者皮肤，就是非常有意义的一件事。然后希望以后这种合作也能够越来越多吧。I believe there will be more opportunities communicating with our fans, expanding the global partner team program. 안녕하세요. 저는 PCC 캐릭터 팀의 이준호입니다. 캐릭터가 있는 의상, 총기, 그리고 탈 것들을 제작하고 있습니다. 팀별로 그런 색깔이나 특성이 있는 디자인이라고 생각했고 일반 옷으로 생각해도 굉장히 멋스러운 디자인이라고 생각했습니다. 팬들이 모았을 때 가장 중요하다고 생각되는 부분들 그런 부분에 중점을 더 작업을 했고요. 팬분들이나 이제 유저분들이 보았을 때 우리 팀의 이 유니폼을 입고 실제로 경기를 할수 있겠구나 하면서 약간 그런 것들에 대한 만족을 위해서 생각을 하면서 작업을 했습니다. And I want to thank every fan for your support. It like means a lot for us. I cannot imagine the world without fans. 期待一下我们这款皮肤吧。所以说，你们的支持对于我们非常重要，也希望大家多多支持十七战队。谢谢大家。Xavier's position in, in particular is really tr Ooh. tricky for Ghibli. Ooh. Oh! Bing is once again landing a sick headshot! How is he getting away with this? Two more bullets in this AWM. Can Vegas make any oh! else happen? Yes, he can! Stop! That's Please! Unbelievable! Vegas! <laughs> Desperate to eat the points, they're set in 15th. There's Cumin with the first instantly. The flush to follow. As now Simon tries to find oh, another one. Oh, Cumin again. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. The third as well. It's on. It's now. It's on now. It's on this maneuver for these yep. to go out with a bang and not go out with the whip for the sense coming on in. Oldless with the grenade at the ready. It looks oh. good. Oldless takes down two of New Happy. For Akkad, still at her, holding the line, gets another. All of a sudden, this push for third party, or excuse me, for third eye, looked good, and now it doesn't. But they're losing players themselves. It's not going to be a free grab. It's not going to be an uh, easy continuation of this game, despite being a center spot. And it looks like Sun Sister also want to take part in this. Petrical Road actually backed away. They realized that. Oh, well, I say that. It's actually going to be third eye eliminated. Old list swinging around the corner. This. I mean, you, like you said, Baze needs points, and now they're walking right to the guns of Genji. Taemin is making a pay, getting three headshots with the SLR.
Good morning. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're watching around the world. Welcome to PGS1. We are live from the Battle Arena Malaysia, a premier esports event venue located in Jaya Shopping Center. My name is Toffees. I am joined by Avenger, and it's time to get into the grand finals. Avenger, are you ready for three days of nonstop action? Honestly, this is all we've been waiting for, right? Yes. Super excited to get things started here. We have 16 fantastic teams. I can't wait to crown champion. 16 teams that have ground their way up. We started this whole thing with open qualifiers in different regions to get all the way here. You've been joining us for the loser's bracket, the winner's bracket, and everything in between to guarantee that we have the best 16 teams for you to take the field today. Let's take a quick look at the schedule. Everything I just talked about is done and dusted. All that matters is the grand finals and it's go time. Yeah, and I gotta say, I love the double elimination. It's the way to go for them mm. from this point, right? We had some teams that obviously went through the winner's bracket. The eight best teams yeah. should be here. Some of the favorites should be in there, but we had a really rough grinder for that one. And we had to have some teams that were on the favorites path to go to through the losers and then come here for the grand final, of course. And some that didn't make it out of the losers, but if you can't make it out, you don't deserve to play. Prize pool, $500,000 up for grabs, 80K for first place, and then a massive drop off after that, Martin. Yeah, for sure. It's a huge difference here. It's the first time we kind of see a double or more than double here for the first place. So 80,000 is going to be a lot of money for the first place group. And this is what we talked about with that grind through. We started with group stages. We had the winner's bracket for the teams that got to go straight through. Some haven't played for th three days. If you were those winner's bracket top eight, we'll see if that ice makes them better or worse going forward. But all that matters now is 18 matches over three days. So extra matches this time around, which I think is going to benefit some of these teams. Yeah, if you could guarantee yourself to be both in winner's bracket and loser's bracket, that would be the most training. The road to PGS here, of course, I want to see the PGS qualification points. If you win here, you get 200 PGS is points. That an, is that automatic? Yeah, I mean, it's the top four, the most points, the top four points that you get here from PGS 1 and PGS 2, mm -hmm. that's going to go straight to PGC. So if you get 200, that's going to be almost a guarantee to go to PGC. So as long as you don't just completely dog water the year, you are in good shape to make a run to PGC. So that's a lot on the line for these first place teams. Here's the 16 teams who are dropping in to try to get their hands on that $80,000 and the lion's share of those PGS points. Uh, Martin, any surprises, pleasant surprises maybe on this list? Yeah, I mean, um Honestly, surprised to see how how go through the winners bracket. They were really good, and uh, they've been surprising all throughout the whole year. So I'm really excited to see them play here. Absolutely, I'll tell you my pleasant surprise. Third Eye, they're down there on the bottom. They did struggle they had to go through the losers bracket, but this is a team that started out in the open qualifiers in North America and has literally played every single stage of PGS1 to get to here. Yeah, and here, of course, the losers, the winners, playing three days, we're playing 18 matches. Yep. I feel like that's a really good sweet spot here now that we're still only playing two maps. Once we get more, it might be changing a little bit. I gotta say, also very surprised with Gen G. They had an yeah. amazing run into losers. They were second last place in the group stage, and everyone was talking about it. Is it gonna be enough for them? It's, they seem like a team, though, that might benefit from having to go oh, to yeah. losers. Oh, yeah, sure. The teams coming out of losers bracket are sharp. They only had one day off, so they're firing in all cylinders coming into this. We'll see if that affects it. Now, if you're playing at home, there's still time to get your fantasy teams in. Kills are worth two points. Survival, if they're up, if your guy gets flushed and the team still wins, you lose that five. So make sure you pick the right players. Now look at this. Three members of Luminosity, my pick to win this event, up there on the top picks for Fantasy. And the other two that is in the top five most points gained is not playing because Petrica Road, they didn't make it through losers and New Happy didn't make it through losers. So very surprising to see these players. Obviously, of course, they did well, but now they're not going to be able to get any points for you. So make sure you go check your Fantasy League team if you haven't updated it. All right, let's take a look at who's got the team. If you need some help building your team right now, James Kailaris has had one of the strongest teams at this event, so copy him. I think Martin, I don't know if you copied him or if he copied you, oh, but copied you're running me. in line there. I right, copied me. Uh, I have Kickstarter's captain. I have a pretty good faith in him, of course. Mm. Also, Uba. Now, they did, did too well in Uba's winner's bracket monster. not to bring in a player there. Of course, here, Paper, Toby, and Cameron's team. Right now, also a lot of similarities. You have a lot of teams and a lot of players that you have to pick. You feel like they're the favorites, right? It's hard not to pick Uba with the Uba factor. If he comes out strong on day one, I haven't seen him this good since 2019, and he seems like he's better. He's aged perfectly. Uh, we'll see if he <laughs> continues to go forward. Let's take a look at the talent leaderboard. Look at James that. is over 100 points ahead of some of the guys on our team. You and I, neck and neck, but really, I think it's the... Uh, 
Brawl for the bottom. Toby and Cameron are going to be keeping an eye on throughout the day today. Tied there at 786. Who's going to be worse? I checked the, the overall, like the, the global leaderboard for that. It's actually, I believe it was Nikos that is actually in lead with more than 1,100 points. What? And he's been picking Kickstart, 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 Kickstart. That as well. Well, it's, it, his team's about Kickstart, Kickstart. Our games are about me, 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 me. Miramar, Orangle, back and forth throughout the day. Starting in the Dusty Dunes. Does that give any team an advantage, you think? Nah, I'm just going to with The only big difference is that Usually we play 3-3, three, three, right? Mm -hmm. But here we change it all the time. Now it's a fresh change, and I actually like it. And I think the teams are actually completely fine with we it. We saw too. a lot of hot drops on Miramar in the earlier stages. Do you think we're going to see those hot drops again, or has it all sort of sorted itself out at this point? Absolute fun stories. Okay. Uh, one fun story about Miramar is actually that uh, you know Gunner he went in and said, you know, we want Impala. Cerberus also wanted Impala, yeah. and he offered them a brawl. So they actually went to each other's room yeah. without talking about it, and they they came to an agreement. Maybe we shouldn't brawl. Maybe we should maybe fight for it. So maybe we're going to see them hot drop in Impala. Maybe we'll see uh, Cerberus inside the last time instead. So it could Fair be interesting. Enough. So there be might fun. be an in-game brawl right at the start yeah. of this one. We also got the 17 Sonics thing going on. And if you guys want to support a team in particular, the team skins are on sale right now through the 17th. So go ahead and get your chance to represent your team in game and we're going to be giving away codes throughout the broadcast today so that you can get some of those skins for your game in fact we're going to go ahead and give away one of them right now so get those fingers ready to type in this code in just a minute to get your free skin for 17. go ahead there it is the bottom right now do you think 17 is going to be at the top at the end of today Mm, we'll see. It depends if they have Picado Pachinki to themselves. It's it's likely that they're going to have it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's see if, if that's the case. Uh, and if they kind of got everything started from losers because they've, they've had a they've had a, a, a rough run, you know, uh, so far. And, uh, yeah, I, I got to say, I'm, I don't have 17 in my top four at the moment. So that, let's pivot yeah. off that. Who is Who do you think? Take a team. Who do you think wins this? And what's their victory condition? Win the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I... I think for sure Luminosity Gaming has a big chance here. They their their 13 point day was to kick in the right direction. I think they have a good chance. Otherwise, Navi also look really strong in winners brackets. Of course, I agree. If either of those teams put up a big day one, it's going to be huge. Guys, the stage is set. The players are in their chairs. The trophy is up for grabs. Without further ado, let's get this show started. Welcome to PGS1, coming live to you from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It's been an exciting tournament so far with our best players around the world competing for the past seven days. Today marks the beginning of their final battle and I'm sure the teams are ready to give their all to become the first ever PGS1 champions. I'm your host, Bella, and today I'm joined by Paper Thin. Paper, are you excited? Oh yeah, absolutely, Bella. The teams that have made it this far have worked incredibly hard and shown their skills across some of the most intense PUBG action we have ever seen. Yeah, and the stakes can't be any higher with the prize pool of $500,000 on the line and of course the title of the PGS1 champions, the players will be, you know, giving their all to for the grand finals. <laughs> Absolutely. So guys, sit back, relax and get ready for some insane PUBG action. Yeah, we got some amazing matches lined up today, and I'm sure I, you guys can't wait to see how it's all going to play out. The first match is up in a few minutes, so make sure to stay and watch how it all goes. Well, without further ado, we are ready to kick off the PGS1 Grand Finals. Let's get into the games and find out who will be the champions of the new era. Being the best isn't just about winning the trophy. It's about giving you everything and showing the world what you're made of. That's what I'm here to do. Oh, 저희가 패자조에서 이게 되게 초조하고 긴장했었는데 결국엔 저희가 올라갈 거란 믿음이 있었기 때문에 평소 실력이 그대로 나온 것 같고. Yeah! 
그랜드 파이널에서도 저희가 PWS에서 왜 우승했는지 보여줄 수 있을 것 같습니다. I know that the grand final will be a challenge, but I'm up for it. I'm going to give everything I have and leave it all on the field. 我们在小组赛中经历了起伏，但我们成功晋级了总决赛。我们不会把这个机会当成理所当然，我们会全力以赴，放开来打。무대를부시러 PGS 에왔습니다예전모습을신경쓰지않고최선을다하고제일강한모습을보여드리겠습니다조심하세요 Our journey to the grand final has been a roller coaster ride. We faced some tough challenges along the way, but it just makes us stronger. Now we're ready to take on whatever comes on our way in the grand final. Ở giải đấu lần này, chúng tôi không chỉ là muốn giành được chiếc cúp mà để chứng minh rằng là người Việt Nam không có dở. Các bạn hãy chờ xem màn chào đón của bọn tôi nhé. We have overcome all the problems we face, and now it's time to grab our champion. We are ready. 虽然我们在胜者组的状态不是很理想，但是我们不会因此失去了信心。我们会以此为动力，在决赛中全力以赴。你们就拭目以待吧。要不要买了？哈，让你们，我们 Team Data Gaming 来把这个世界知道，我们是 Team 世界。We may be underestimated, but we're ready to rise to the occasion and make a statement. Kendimizi dünyaya göstermeye ve bu yolda başarıyı kazanacağımıza inanıyoruz. Get ready for the finals, because SDK is coming. Defending the title is never easy, but we are up for the challenge. We know that the other teams are going to be looking to knock us off the perk. I am willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that we stay on top. We are ready. Ready. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. It is time for PGS1 Grand Finals. 18 rounds to go before we crown our first ever global champion of the year. And uh, Toby, there are some favorites coming into this lobby for sure. Some of them were favorites from the very beginning of this competition, but also quite a lot of I don't want to necessarily call them underdogs anymore because mm. teams like Howell really showed up in winners. Yeah, uh, just a bunch of teams that are just kind of really showing that this is a pretty deep pool that we have here in the Grand Finals. It is going to be absolutely phenomenal. One through 18, all the matches. I think every single game is going to show us the very best PUBG we could have put for. And I just got to add, these intro videos are getting better and better. Turn them and up and add the chills all the way through. All these teams, you could hear it from themselves too. They want it desperately. They want to bring home the trophy. Yeah, I know. And uh, it's all going to start here. Uh, new lobby, brand new composition of teams. I don't think we're going to be getting as many hot drops, not nearly as many hot drops uh, as we did during groups. And then of course the two winners and losers brackets, though I do think there might be one yeah. at the start. I'm not gonna spoil it just in case it doesn't happen. You never know how these negotiations go down. It's almost like the UN sometimes where teams sit down, they True. bring their case, they try and see what they can negotiate. Exactly, we are gonna hop over to Miramar. Of course, Tess brought it down as well, or broke Ooh. it down as well. We're getting the teams ready. We're getting the players ready. I don't know if you caught that, that was a big old X over Tigerson's face. 17 are ready uh, for to take on the Sonics and make sure that their center spot is claimed. That, I can guarantee, uh, is not going to be hot drop. The, the Sonics are prepared to leave. They know that it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. Uh, 17 Gaming are not going to leave their drop spot, and 17, I believe, have gone public saying that they are willing to throw this tournament to, to keep uh, Pachinki Picado for themselves, so that is not what uh, Sonics are going to be fighting for. They know that that is not a losing battle necessarily, but they have higher... Uh, goal There's more to fight for exactly. than just Picardo Pachingi. Couldn't agree anything more. Let's see now match number one of 18. It's hovered on over on Miramar. The playing path this time around came very eastern. And you know why I like this in particular? Because with this lobby, there are now a ton of teams opting to loot out east. So most teams, if not all, should be able to go exactly where they want despite 
this plane path looking somewhat southeastern skewed. I don't know if you guys can hear it in, uh, through, so. through our mics. So. I don't know if you can, but there are uh, there's a lot of yelling, at least, that there was j until just a moment ago between a couple of different teams, and it's exciting because they are ready to play. They are giving it their all, and yes, mm -hmm. as you can see, the plane path is southeast skewed, so anything El Pozo or beyond, a bit more difficult to get to, and it's Impala. That's the... Uh, that's, that's the spot to that's keep the dry at least for now at least for now the only hot drop that we've heard could potentially be one of it we'll see if that's going to happen or not we also know that luminosity who uh, have in the past looted minas they are not going to try and contest navi they will stay right to the east of them though over in junkyard so we'll see if maybe there's going to be some fighting for vehicles some early on commotion because again with 18 matches to go you can risk trying to claim something here in the first one and still go into the remaining 17 yeah. well off so i wouldn't be surprised to see a few overlaps here in the first game of Miramar, first game of first yeah. game of Wrangle as well. Yeah, there uh, there's a lot uh, of room to play with, exactly. really. But I can we're looking at the map right now. I can tell you, Impala is not being contested. Cerberus did concede that position to the Sonics, and we are going to watch Soul with a very early win 94, trying to take a couple of shots towards third eye. Not going to really land on the Richie B just yet, but you know what? You got to take the shots. I was going to say, imagine Pio gets a chance as well to uh, assert some early on dominance as the first circle takes us up towards the north. Ooh. This is interesting, mainly because a lot, if not almost all teams opted to jump out early on. So how will the journeys be up towards Crucial Valle? We have to wait and see. I mean, with no hot drops here, that's going to be a lot of teams all coming in from the south side yep. from a lot of different angles. Now, if you're a team like Ascend or Third Eye who are south but southwest, you have an easier time wrapping up all over the way around El Pozo and coming in from the west side of that mm. circle. But as it stands right now with the terrain in play, there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be coming in from the south yep. end, whether it's a little bit east or a little bit west, that's still a lot of traffic from two specific points. Now, you mentioned them briefly, but I want to go back to them again. Ascent and Danawa as well, two yeah. teams we've seen trying to utilize very similar rotation paths. Now, they haven't had Third Eye in the middle of them when they've done this in the pre in, in the past. What I'm talking about is Northern Circles, both Danawa and Ascent like to really wrap hard northwest, even around El Pozo, around the Copadilla, all the way up towards Oasis and in from there. So so could potentially be a little bit of commotion off of that one as well. Shalu throwing a grenade out the window. I thought that was... It got me looking at the map, wondering if there was a, <laughs> a little bit of a hot drop that we missed. But there is going to be a little bit of a roster change, as you can see. Uh, Shalu stepping back into play uh, instead of Wing's Eye. And a huge player to have back on your team. A player who has performed globally time and time and time again. Not to take anything away from Wang Sai, because him stepping in kind of last second, really, yeah. notice, came in, played an amazing anchor, taking me back instantly to one of the first games up in Wrangle. Amazing anchor player, amazing contained player, really phenomenal performance. Now, Sololsi out as Tycon yeah. is back in as well. Yeah, missed Tycon for a little bit, but... Uh, he was not necessary for them to advance from the winner's bracket, but still an amazing player. And if you can, if you can get him back uh, on the field, you're going to take that. Uh, I believe that's all the roster moves, it should though, be. It should to be. the game. But again, I mean, credit to Sololsi as well. S second story of a player stepping in. Not, I mean, of course, they're always prepared to take over when sure. need be. But e you never hope that it's going to happen because you do have your select for. Let's listen to a quick interview here from 17's Little Ghost. <laughs> 第一天被人战术针对过后大伙儿心态都不太好然后经过两天我们四个选手加教练的调整心态也恢复过来主要是还是心态吧其他上没什么调整其实我觉得进入决赛后应该更没有不知道希望他先拿人一样都不知道完这
Heaven there off on the side, or sorry, Gumen there off on the side angle could be a good anchor position because now Glass and Tozzi are in the room, but Crazy 1.2 pushing forward gets immediately dropped by the Vector. Yep, Vector up close as deadly as any other gun really, and the more shots fired here, Navi here is the better off they're going to be. The probably might just pull on over and see what happens on the other side of the street. Summer now. Bottom floor, blue glass. A couple of pieces of utility grenades come out, but Summer is just pushing on through. Does not care about grenades at all. Gets the knock, but it's going to be Tozi again with that SMG. Not a very popular weapon, but it is doing the work here. Sure is. Sure is. Doesn't have the extended mag either, so only so many bullets to work with. Heaven down to low HP. He gets headshotted. And now, 4AM trying to reset a bit in the building here. Xiao Hai Lu sat next to each other. Should be able to get the flush onto glass as well. But Gumen is up on the ridge on the other side, potentially. Able to cover. Nope, not gonna happen. I believe there's a little bit of smoke there allowing Zhao Hai to get that mm. kill confirmed. But now Lu goes down, so they're just taking loss after loss after loss. This is the Navi third party finally yeah. coming into play. Example spotted the final member of uh, 4AM Xiao Hai going for the revive, and Ghibli are also pushing in because they know they have these 4AM members on the ropes. Yep, they trade on the west side. Peeking on over as, as well. I mean, again, you want to get off to a good start early, and what better than finding freebies, shooting people in the back in the grand finals? You wouldn't have it any other way. It's not just about getting freebies yourself, it's also about knocking out a big piece of the competition yep. very early on, yep. 4 a.m. especially. But even Ghibli have shown some really strong signs of greatness, especially coming from the loser's bracket. So now it's been evened up a fair bit, 2v2. And with the pressure of day trade leaving with Flash flying away, there is still Navi on the east side, mm. and that alone could keep this fight very contained. I'm actually kind of glad to see Navi not overcommit to this fight because they know that there's no way they're the only couple of teams inside uh, in the circle here and what is a good third party for them could potentially become a fourth party for any other team wrapping up behind them. So prioritizing the compound and as you can see here example really right now the only one with a proper angle on the compound over on the other side trying to see what he can find. Got a knock early but did not get the flush off of it. And also keep in mind, this is not the only fight. In fact, you even see Third Eye and Ascend having rotated yep. around each other, also in a bit of engagement. I believe Snakers from Luminosity also went down. Yep. So this is a lot of early fighting. I think part of it is because there is no hot drop. That's just more population trying to find its way to, into phase one. And we led into it early on, right? Saying that there is going to be overlaps, especially with, as you said too, a new lobby, Erangel, Miramar, at least the first, maybe even two games could be the same way. But as predicted as well, Ascend over the top would run into both Danawa and Third Eye, but Ascend in the end the ones to take casualties off of it. Oh, the fight's finally breaking out. Heaven with a shotgun up close, not expected. They were so focused on the other final Ghibli player that Heaven is just now able to run amok. Peeking back and forth out, that is 4 a.m. eliminated in 16th place, all four out before 10 minutes. Now, Ghibli are wounded themselves, but they were able to stabilize. There yeah. is still going to be Navi breathing down their throats, breathing down their necks, but they're in a central position, so it is unlikely that they will need to go for a drastic move mm. anytime soon. And plenty of games still left to be played, so for Ghibli, even if they take casualties early on, salvaging points in the first couple of games of the the grand finals is huge because that way you don't sit and look after four games or oh, we only got two no you might have ten uh, combined over the first couple of games even when things don't go your way checking back into third eye on the north side got a little bit of a scuffle with the send as we saw got a kill off of that so they're going to be taking that point uh, into this first phase everyone also moving around sonics 17 still have yet to run into each other but that will be an explosive fight whenever it happens whether it's a, a hot drop or a late game finish Yes, Xiao Bei. Decent angle towards the east, wanting to make sure that no one's able to wrap down that direction. They see Taikan up on the roof as well, or the roof, up on the top of the hill as well, as he tries to get a better overlook position. Again, this first circle, I mean, he can really swing anywhere, and there are some really interesting endgame areas available in this one, especially with how many teams have now been able to claim somewhat center positions here. Genji now moving in. Coming in last, uh, usually, well, they're definitely one of the more conservative teams in the, this lobby. Don't look for early engagements. This is the team that not a lot of expectations coming into this, especially after group stage. Mm. But I don't know what clicked. I don't know what happened <laughs> in loser's bracket. But they just suddenly remembered how to play the yeah. game. And so I think that this is not a team that you can underestimate. Uh, here, I, I, there's no team that you can really underestimate oh, no. here in the grand finals. But you gotta basically forget what Genji looked like in groups exactly. if you're gonna face them here. I'm not gonna lie, had they scraped their way into the grand finals, I would not have had any expectations from them. But uh, as you said, the men turned things around in the uh, in the losers bracket and are now looking very, very good. Ten seconds before we see phase 
number two, and it's been evened up a little bit, but Third Eye and Danawa, they're towards the north, and that is still quite open. It's a lot of field, Ooh. but it's going to be a hard... Of course, this is a PGS hard shift, not PGS <laughs> one. It's PGS hard shift, and it's going to be a hard shift towards the east, towards Terra Bronco. Uh, Sonics have a great spot. Servers have a great spot. Chiamba are coming in late yep. to a really, really good spot, though it is a little bit on the low ground, but they can perhaps race those two aforementioned teams for the nice, more controlling high ground positions, but a lot of teams on the west side, it's a big open field where we're seeing 17 cross through, so this might be a few kills being taken on traffic rotation. There's there's definitely going to be commotion as all these teams trying to make the win, and as you said, Tiamba clapping their hands as they get the shift in their direction, and now the two remaining Luminosity players trying to take out 17 on rotation. Ooh, One tire, tire out on the Mirado, you know what that means, Spinneroo. As Flot tries to see if he can find it, they have no other option. They gotta commit to this fight. Yeah, 17 are crashing. They're getting full revenge on this. Pretty Curtis, SDK here on the high ground is gonna be third partying in this. That's gonna be Logos going down. As we see more teams all fighting each other in the kill feed. This is again quite early, mm. but the rotations are uh well, making it happen, rather. Yeah, exactly. So many teams have to come through the same few funnels, and teams will collide because of it. MS able to find Schofield's kill instantly stolen away, though, from Ali as this fight now. In a bit of a stalemate, and with two players down on the side of 17, I'm not sure how much they can overcommit to it, especially with now STK sat on that southern side. One member of 17 knocked, one member fully confirmed, and uh, Xiao DD is being picked apart as we speak. But Rello goes down to a nice grenade from Xiao Bei. So those two pitted 17 players, despite being cornered between two different teams, they are still doing damage and looking for the opportunities. Yeah, 17 yet to find their first point. Here in the grand finals, Xiao Bei loving an eight on them. But Flood, ready for that one. As I say, that actually jumps straight back into it. Not taken down, though. Able to stay alive. Su Chu trying to hold the west side door. Not able to find a whole lot either. Xiao Bei now pushes. Sold off in hand. There you go. Xiao Bei finds one, finds two. Luminosity out in 15th. Still a lot of heavy damage towards 17 and STK. And they have them surrounded. Vegas even swung himself across the road. Alo is going that direction as well. Unsure if STK are going to be sticking around to make sure 17 can be put in the dirt right behind Luminosity. Or are they going to use this opportunity? Opportunity to sort of speed ahead and get to yeah. more towards the center, but the center is not safe either. No, I lied, they're crashing. Yeah, full speed, they're coming in, and only with two the first time around, leaving Purdy and Penta up on the hill. As I say, the Penta actually now wrapping down towards the compound itself as well. So they will be in a 3v2 position with Purdy up on the top, but how do they push this? Alo, set alone right now. Cavalry is arriving, first one in, instantly down. Suju, not going for the flush, awaiting the second peak around Vegas. Able to take him down in return. Alo tried to bait out the shot to get the information, but he's gonna have to send his own body inside now Shabby, the last one up for 17 with a spray down against Penta Ooh. he is gonna get the knock down to half HP trying to confirm that kill to get at least one more point because surrounded by three other members of STK it's looking very unlikely but he has an opportunity to try and maybe get some meds Kurt was gonna call that rotation mm. behind the blue the info has been fed across no doubt Pert though not in a position to really do a whole lot actively other than give the info Shabby smart knowing that he has Purdy Curdy up on the hillside to try and wrap underneath Xiaobei was able to get inside, takes a little bit of damage from a grenade, has some time to heal, the flash is going to guarantee that as we see another fight in the picture in picture between Ghibli and Cerberus, Heaven still dealing a lot of damage to the shotgun, but here's Xiaobei. More flashes at the ready. Neo knows he needs to go for a fight, but stuck in the door frame. STK take it. Heaven has just found three knocks. Solo versus Cerberus, taking out three. And the issue for now Cerberus is that their fourth ain't around. He's nowhere near here. Heaven found two against 17 early with a shotgun. He might just have five eliminations, five kills with a shotgun right off the get-go. There you go, five kills for Heaven, all of them with a pump action. What a great scavenge game for Ghibli. Oh, definitely. They got definitely. The, I believe they were the first victims knock-wise. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the fact that they were in first place, granted, after one game, but with seven points, it's still huge, a good huge. showing. And the hard shift back towards the west is still funneling people into this one singular hilltop. We have SQ here, we have Heaven, of course. Cerberus were here. Uh, Tycon is a bit more towards the south, but Howl and Navi are also roaming around this singular hillside. Only so many areas to play in this area of the map because the southern side is so incredibly open. So a lot of the teams kind of forced into the midside belt of it, and now Howl eliminated. Navi and Sonic sharing. A few points in between them. You can see Sonics really want to deal with Heaven down below, but just seeing three being taken down from Cerberus might have them think the better of it. A lot of grenades being lobbied that way. Yep. He's chilling. 
Uh, it's, I mean, it's open, so you can throw those grenades in, but it is also quite wide, so trying to bank them onto that back wall where Heaven is holding can be a little difficult, and as you saw, Sonics can't focus too heavily on it. They mm. can't really get to the best angle unless they get tagged in the back by a Navi, so they might just have to leave Heaven there and exactly. maybe be in a little bit of a, of a friendly relationship. Yeah. Uh, Heaven defends the low ground, they defend the high. Exactly, especially now that they have heard the vehicles from Navi come in behind as well. Well aware there's other areas of the map they need to concern themselves with more. Navi in the meantime, opting to rotate out on foot, knowing that Sonics weren't really too eager to peek them up the hillside, so they'll be able to play this one. But as you can see here on the map too, it's just so open. It's so difficult so to rotate through here. The good thing, I guess, for the server right now is that so many players have gone out early, so you do have that much more space to maneuver. Yeah, but a lot more space to still be seen because you, true, cannot, true. you cannot overstate just how open this is. It, there are some ridges to play with because it's not a field, Nessus, like there, there are parts of fields that you, mm. you can see in front of you, but it's not entirely a field. But at the same time, because the the elevation is in play, maybe the ridges are nerf from that. Look at this rotation from Gen G. They still have two people in Fox and Taman over towards the east, but all the way down south, DG is set on the southern side of this road, and then Pio, we know him as a solo player, making his way up close. Unluckily for him, first bullet hits the rock in front of him, and Vegas able to 180 and get out of that one alive. Now Pio has to reconsider. Do I yeah. stick around alone, or do I wait for my team? You can see Taman is coming up. DG 98 is still over on the other side, kind of playing the Overwatch position. Good thing for SDK now aware that they have opponents nearby. Yeah, with the, the moments remaining in phase number three, as we do see Brex go down, third eye with another kill uh, going their direction. But the circle is closing, and so if anyone, whether it's third eye, whether it's Gen G, want to go for a fight, there is only so much that you'd be willing to commit yeah. to it. Because where is the next zone going to go? Oh, okay. Opus goes down to kill your Kai. That was a really good spray, and this hardship to the Northeast will favor this fight continuing, yeah. because this is now a fight for what could be a strong position. A lot of suppressive fire coming in from Tianba, actually, for Kill Yakai trying to stay put up on the top. Nate finds one, finds a second as well, though, but Adam was first to the trigger. So Kill Yakai falls, and I don't think there's a whole lot Chris can do from this, but especially now, not with Vox crossing over. Vox thrown out in the open, so if Chris spots it, if Chris senses it, could take him out, but I think Vox is going to have the angle, drops Chris very, very low. Chris is a powerhouse, uh, can still do a lot of damage as a solo, but that is going to be it for Ascend. They go out in 12th place, third eye with four kills. They lose one. They're trying to go for the revive, but Navi are pushing towards the north. They heard, they saw that happen in the kill feed, and they want to stake their claim to this northern ridge. Navi are masters of third partying, always able to find kills in positions they should never be in, and of course, they'll be right over the top as soon as they can over. Peaks on over, instantly falls back though, so Flash comes his way in return. More frag grenades coming out. Adam trying to get the covering fire. Richard B with a frag grenade in return. They're bouncing all away from each other. And Vox with this position mm. that he was able to take from Chris is a nice angle yeah. to keep Navi from really overflowing this ridge. But this is Navi controlled of this site. Third Eye have such little uh, ground to play with. And Navi having to fall back now as well because Sonic's on the southern side are starting to suppress too. And I love the fact that we saw just quickly there from um, from Vox that he shoots even just into the mountainside. They just need to hear gunshots, they need to hear shots connect to force them further back because they were very alone on the other side of the ridge. But Vox's assistance forced Navi back. SDK now making the run over the open field. Finding a small little hill, but it's really not a lot of cover. And Tygon has a grenade yeah. at the ready. Shots behind onto Twisted Minds, because they're, they're contending for the exact same spot. Spyro does go down. Attempted drive-by not going to work out for Twisted Minds. And now that's a single shack that yeah. the remaining European players are holding in. With a crossfire set up, damage is coming out. Spyro does get confirmed. Completely surrounded there by STK. Not a whole lot for Lou and Perfect Nix to do. They're not even on the side of the shack from where they can get inside it. So uh, not a whole lot going. They're not inside the next circle. Penta and Vegas will have to move, but you'd have to imagine they could stick around for long enough that they can take Twisted Minds down first. I'm wondering why... Uh, I'm surprised that Penta and Vegas haven't been able to do more damage while we see Twisted Minds still just put it all in trying to defend this position. I wonder if it's because Day Trade are third partying the peaks from Vegas and Penta, but they're mm. just going to get to their vehicles and send it all in. While Twisted Minds, they're retreating from that position. Position. It is a really good call to get out yeah, because yeah. that was such a scary spot. But the question is, where can they follow up to? Good rotation timing for them. We'll see now that nade oh, just bounces off the hillside a bit. Shoal Alia able to get back up alive as Dano has now made their presence known. Anonyx, I believe it was, found Alia just moments ago. And look at this area. So difficult to play around. Dano knows that they have third eye on the other side too.
And here comes Chiamba as well. All these teams putting attention towards the north because essentially Sonics has the south on lock, it seems, as well as Daytrade, who get another knock onto STK, but it's a hard shift once again <laughs> towards the east. So this fight on the north side is very, very powerful. Yeah. Everywhere else, it's just going to be trying to survive. Sure, it's the southern side of this map. It's going to be on fire more than it already is. You can see a loop effect. There's barely any utility left between these two, and they have to try and see how the hell do they get out of this position. Cerberus Falls, 11th place for them, a state trade racks up another. Genji pushing up north, filling in the position that was let go by Tiamba as they also went to go favor the north side. There is PO Entainment still there on the south, so we know how much Genji love their splits mm -hmm. when they can mm -hmm. get them, when they're uncontested on them. And well, with, when the blue coming in in just a short amount of time, the uh, Taman and PO have a short amount of time themselves to get a knock or, or two before they then have to group up. Bushes, I was just going to mention this. Bushes is sat alone on the rock side. It does have no and some flash to kind of help cover the position. And now they spot them in the open. Issue is, should have seen them much, much earlier. I get that they're looking the other way, but you have to focus one fight at a time. Here comes the full on pull up. Perfect is able to get one. It's a fight for potential 10th place elimination here between Penta and Perfectix. Penta with the frag. He knows he doesn't have time to reload before Perfectix goes for the push and gets STK out of the lobby. STK put up a really good fight, but it was not enough with Twisted Minds and Day Trade shooting from all different angles. Perfectix going for the revive, and you can see in the distance, Day Trade, they're going to push into the zone, leaving mm. Belmont there just to watch over the last stragglers from the south, but even he is now going towards the zone. Back to Gen G now as everyone is all grouping up. They have a small all little ridge, kind of a dip at the top to play around, and this is where that Sonics compound might start to get yeah. really activated. Sure is. In the meantime, we've got to give kudos to Heaven as well for having been able to stay alive for this long, almost in placement points. Now it's a solo player. Belmont powers perfectus out of the vehicle. Those should be the next to follow anytime soon. That first headshot is definitely going to make it more likely that he will fall. Does he give it to Heaven? Potentially. Let's see. Is he welcome with a headshot? Not going to happen. There you go. Flash finds it. Down to eight teams left. We are starting to hit placement positions now as Twisted Minds go out in ninth. And looking at the map, all but P.O. Of course, it's all but P.O. <laughs> is actually uh, in the zone. I think Danawa and Third Eye may have one or two stragglers that are just outside the barrier, but they're just trying to get that positioning in. But Gen G, they are focused on Sonics. They have a nice little crossfire set up with P.O. on the south, Tamin on the north. Anchoring in from Chiamba while DJ98 and Foxy poke and prod this compound. Sonics haven't really been able to move too much around it because of the terrain as well as uh, Navi and Day Trade's yeah. angles. I'm surprised that, especially knowing that Ghibli only has a solo player left in the compound, that with them pulling up, Sonics don't do more, like play more aggro to try and wrap out East. I guess it's partially because Fox Apio was sat down on the southern side and trying to suppress him. In the meantime, now let's hop up towards the north again as Third Eye and Danawa. Heads up close to one another. Soul is getting very, very close to third eye. The circle is going to basically center up. That mm. center is not controlled by anyone. We're going to see a couple of different fights here, one north, one south, and we'll see if Navi and Chiamba, where exactly they want to be activated in either of those two directions. Salutes baiting a peek out from third eye, because again, it's all about trying to give Soul that opportunity to get that second strike in once one of the other Danawa players gets the first. Oh, let's see Soul. Surprise player trying to sneak his way over the rich line. As long as they're shooting, they shouldn't be able to hear the footsteps. One code on the other side there, but Soul finds one, finds the second as well. Nice flank, nice peak, almost takes down the third. Soul gets activated. Richard B did get the first knock of this engagement, but now Soul is here to close the fight to finish what Danawa have been teasing with, toying with for the past couple of minutes. It's all on Vox, and look at Tianba squeezing in from the south side. Tianba coming in on one side, Navi wanting a piece of this pie as well from the southwest. Tianba wants to get it done with, he does succeed in doing so. Kill confirmed, but so much attention now is coming to this north side of the map. Yeah, Danawa are now outside of the zone, and they're in one small little pocket. Who do they push through, Navi or Chamba? It's a couple little bits of points of damage against Chamba Longskirt down to 39 HP, forced to fall away. This is a little bit of space for Danawa to try and push yeah. forward, but they're running in one singular pathway, one singular line, which Chamba, with all of their ranged weaponry, can try and shut down. That's even an arm in the hands of 77. Yeah. I mean, all that, not all, but a lot of... Uh Wishes go from the um, from uh, Danawa that Gen G starts pushing up from the southern side, but they're playing this Whoa. one very passive. And on X falls to Longsko. Nice spray coming through with the barrel there. Attempted information drive by from Anonix does get punished. Grenades not exactly finding Longskirt's position, falling just a bit short. And the range poking and prodding from the rest of Danawa is just 
Not finding the mark. Long through with the prone spray down. Salute is now knocked. Now let's all in for Donawa going out. Just unable to get what feels like a single point of damage into Tiamba. And again, on the backside of all of this, Gen G sat in a perfect position to pounce, but combination of power power suppressing and them, I think a little worried that if they do push up north, that Sonyx will push out, forces them to stick around for a little longer. They trade grenades as they push into Navi. They're trying to circumvent Sonic's hold and they're going in through another team's four-man uh, position here. Mel falling away. Everyone else from Navi is playing into the open graveyard. That yeah. grenade just not finding where it needed to go. It's good positions around the fence, around the, this barrier, around this wall. But with Alia taken very, very low of day trade. Oh, we Ooh. knew that the follow-up is going to get the knock. That's going to force example potentially to go for the revive. Mel has to fall away. Yeah. And that's day trade taking the space as well as Chiamba third partying. Yeah, with Tiampa now over one rich time, Daytrip pushing in from the other Navi all of a sudden in a very, very poor position, trying to play full control. In the meantime, Heaven, the solo player from very early on in the game, has snuck his way into top six. They traded in the hard cover. Circle's gonna set her up once again. Not a single soul is inside nope. this next zone. And Tiampa and Genji, as you said, have a lot of movement, a lot of freedom. Day trade do not, and they're just putting that pressure onto Navi. Mel goes down. Alia did get revived and met it up. N Grenade at the ready knows that it just needs to be tossed on the opposite side of that wall, but Norrens and Belmont, Ooh. they are going huge right now. It is only Uba remaining. Deal with a little bit of damage. He's in such a tough position. The issue for Day Trade is they can't really wrap into the only entry without jumping over is exactly where Flash went down off of that gate right there. So Uba, nice angle for him, knowing the only spot he can really play here is in that exact position. He's creeping forward. He wants to try and catch Day Trade off guard, potentially. Wait. Norrens has the shotgun, ready for the one and done. Pump and dump, and he's gonna go for the shot. That's at least gonna be the information while Belmont is going to confirm the kills that they knocked. And then, of course, the jump shot he is gonna get Navi out of this, but Gen G. Heaven is still alive in all of this. He found one before, now he finds Mime as well. All of a sudden, Sonix just has h one left alive. Again, Gen G playing this one extremely passive, not wanting to one into Heaven, but Heaven is continuing to rack up points. 12 points for Ghibli right I mean, now, he, and it's been only heaven for however long, for yeah. a long amount of time. The spray is going to come out from H-Win, not exactly going to find that knock. And then Gen G putting so much pressure from the opposite side, both these solos down into what feels like single-digit health points. They're just trying to fight to see who is going to go out first, because neither of them is escaping from Gen G. H-Win does go out to the blue, and heaven sprayed down, and it's, whoa, it's going to be the Molotov from H-Win to get that final kill, but now we're in the top three teams. Yep. Top four placement for Ghibli. I don't think they expected that when they lost two as the first and second players of this match. But kudos to Heaven for racking up a ton of points in this one here. Genji, so far, only one kill again. Could have played more aggressive up towards Champ, but opted not to, whoa. but now they got four. Wait, where is Pio? Where is Pio? Well, he's getting the knock, so I guess let him keep playing his game. But he is pushed so far forward behind enemy lines, and Tianba have been devastated. It's yep. all onto Longskur right now to try and save the day. But with the amount of knock, Ooh. well, not able to get that that trade onto Pio. I think he thought he had it. He's kind of stopped shooting mid spray to try and find it. Now he does find him in return. Pio does Pio things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. He found the two knocks early on, and I think, regardless of how you look at it, Tiamba has been very fatally wounded off of that Pio peak on over in Ishii. Long skirt, solo player left alive on the team. Three up for Gen G, and the circle favors them as now Day Trade has to make a play. Well, if Norrens is able to get a knock here with the arm, um, with Genji spread as they are, at least a few of them could be an opportunity, but no, the covering fire is going to be spotted. Belmoth may be trying to wrap on the south side, but Daytreet are currently just lying in wait. Longster did find an opening, an opportunity to go for the revive. So with the teammate in tow, perhaps if Daytreet yeah. and Tiamba strike at the same time, they could then really take this game from Gen G's hands. Belmoth strikes first. I like this wraparound. They know they're playing solo games now. I mean, both Belmoth and Neurons is full level three gear. So if you're going to be outnumbered, at least have the Kevlar to support your position. Belmoth sprays over once again. DG98 down to half HP. Taman on the, the rotate to go find that separate angle. DG98 has the highest piece of terrain. So it can see, you would assume, the most here. Yeah. While Foxy is just trying to make sure that Chiamba don't push in from the north side, he needs to play his life. Having lost Pio, you cannot give up any more knocks. Belmont still with the spray with the 3x, but 
just not able to find the opening that he needs, and so instead, the smoke grenades are going to come out. Yeah, loving that Gen G are committing both team and DG to try and prevent the day trade peak on over, because Foxy, it's an open field area, can easily hold off the two Tiamba players on his own. As I say that, though, here comes Longskirt, wrapping around the side, the info must be fed across fast. Jumbo are focused on both Genji and Daedee's They bowling. know that unless they get an opening onto a member like Foxy or even get a knock on the South members of Gen G, really they want to just play for second. And so yeah. keeping Day Trade out of this phase eight will be the name of the game for them. Tame with a couple of shots through, taking Bill Month low. Gotta hit those shots, Norrin. You got the omen hand. Gotta see if you can find one. One knock here could be a winning knock, but now Smoke's a fading. Tamen finds the first. Still got Bellman up alive, but this is playing so much into the favor of Tiamo because they're allowed to push on forward. Fox is still trying to maintain control 1v2. Long to power power pushing forward. Flash is going to come out from Foxy. And then a Molotov as well, but it's not going to land at Foxy's feet, so he can still play around that ridge. He's being very active. Is, Foxy is buying his team so much time to focus the southern side right now. They should never be allowed to be able to maintain this position for so long, but it's all thanks to Foxy. But the Tayman is also knocked very, very low. He was yeah. just given a little bit of line of sight towards these Tiamba members. We're in phase nine right now. We know where the game is going to end, and no one has control of that position. It's the bottom of this dip, and Daytrade with the revive. Okay, well, no one's down to the blue. That one's not going to go up again. Yep, not gonna happen, Chiamba now. 2v3, weren't able to deal with Foxy. Kudos to you, buddy, for holding off now. One falls, pow, pow, solo against the rest, but he finds the first one, almost gets down Foxy as well. One versus two, pow, pow versus the world right now. The information can still come from Long Screw, but the revive is... Yeah. I don't know if Pao would even consider going for it, but no helmet. Yep. Just constantly having to peek against the high ground. Uh, members of Gen G. Foxy now pushing forward while Taman holds point, keeps Pow Pow distracted. And Foxy, he is ready to strike the final nail in the coffin and take Ooh. game number one. Taman dropped very, very low. Foxy wants this. He wants it. He's going to get it. Gen G winning game number one. Huge game for them. Four kill performance. Gen G put up a play style, a plan that was we're going to be passive. We're going to let the battles unfold because then we will have the upper hand in the end game. Kudos, mega kudos to Foxy for staying in this position for as long as it did. And more importantly than that, P.O.'s long flank, getting those two knocks, catching Chiamba off guard. Yep, yep. yep. I don't know if that was the winning maneuver, but it was certainly an incredibly important one. Let's go to a break and then the desk as we get ready for game number two. Welcome back. Gen G takes the first chicken dinner of the grand finals and they do it aggressively, amazingly, and they just absolutely control that final circle. I, I gotta say, what a chaotic first game here in the yeah. grand final. That was <laughs> insane to see, you know, Kipley in the beginning fighting 4 a.m. Heaven popping off, having an insane game right? with, the, with the pump shotgun. That was crazy to see. And also a really rare ending. This is like yeah. finding like a rare card in a pack opening or something. Like <laughs> they're super, super rare. We see these kind of endings here. And it, uh, it paid off all the way through and Genji popped off. So Genji does get the chicken dinner foil and uh, comes out with that big win. I will say we did see a lot of trench gun, a lot of oh, shotgun yeah. play, a lot of uncomfortable crashes for some of these teams. And some of our favorites got caught early. I know we saw LG get picked off by Cerberus. Uh, a lot of them just really couldn't put anything together. Now, when we got here today, did you expect Gen G to show up and have such a major game one? 
Ooh, uh, maybe after the the showing that we saw them in the losers, they they had some some good maybe snowball effect yeah. we can see from them, and also Pio's opening there. He died sure, but he had an insane opening on Tianpa. Right. It looked like a good game from Tianpa from the from the get go there. They had a really good out of control in the northeastern side. The terrain was looking really good yeah. for them, and Gen G was forced to kind of take this fight with, with day trade that are on the western side, right? I gotta say though, day trade looking strong too. They yeah. took down Navi quite easily, and that push on the on the cemetery there. Yeah, day trade was a beautiful fight, but I do think that's what it came down to in that game. Peel making the sacrifice play, basically. Right. Tiamba played the east side of that circle right, for right. so long. They got a couple of good shifts, and I think they were in a position to potentially win it. Pio going in and being that sort of, I'm I'm willing to lose it all to get two of you down. Exactly. Really changed the game. Like, that seemed to be the turning point. That was literally the, the reason why Genji was able to win this year. They only got four kills, sure, but it's a 14-point game for them. Tianba, 13 there for that. But day trade, 10 Ooh. kills. And Ghibli. And Heaven as well, able to pop off for Ghibli. He secured so many kills, and he secured fourth for them, too, there. But this push here for day trade, I really love what I'm seeing from them. Yeah, no, I love what I'm seeing for them. A bit of irony for Na'Vi taking that fight in the graveyard where they ultimately ended their run. Here we get Sonics again, pushed by Heaven, and Heaven, I think, single-handedly wiped all but one of the Sonics there. It was just beautiful. He was in a league of his own, as was Day Trade. Here's this fight with Na'Vi back to the graveyard. Nerns with that double pop up over the top. And then from then, they were just racking up kills. I love what I'm seeing from the sawed off again and again and again. But yeah. you gotta remember, going forward, we're not gonna see that as much because it's gonna be the smoke grenade launcher that's yeah. gonna be the meta going forward. But it's been showing really, really strong there. Having that pocket shotgun is looking good. This is the other one you were talking about, Pio having that off angle, making yep. sure he can get two down from Tianba. And that went to be really crucial for the Gen G win there. It was close though. I gotta say the, the way that they played it and also how Longscore is able to, to push out and get Pao Pao in a good spot here. It ended up being fantastic here for Gen G though, but only four kills, 14 points. It's not a big win for them, but they can have this kind of consistency in terms of the, yep. the lower amount of kill games. That's going to be fine for them. And I mean, while they only got one kill across the board, I mean, look at that damage count from Taman. He's definitely, I think, going to be the man of the match on this one. 737 damage. This just speaks to the way that they played a little bit different. I think Gen G was playing a lot more crashy earlier in this event, being very sort of in your face. Now they're still doing that, but they're playing defensive. They had a great job. Sort of, okay, P.O., you go, but we're going to have right, an anchor. Right. We're going to have a cover position. I like the Gen G that we're seeing going into this grand final. And sure enough, it will be Taman that wins that man of the match. Yeah, I love what I'm seeing from, uh, from them so far. And I got to say, what we've been seeing from Taman, he's had some really good DMR shots. Yeah. He's been really putting in work with that, both in terms of the knocks he's getting and also the damage and kills he's getting. And some of the other stages we saw, he was like, he was getting headshots, headshots. And with this LR as well, like you're you're putting in 79 plus damage. Mm. Somebody's just got rest. It's a knock again, right? So it's it's good to see your team being able to step up for the man of the match. Four That's knockouts is obviously huge, but the, the one kill, he didn't manage to close all of them out. Yeah, and I think they were okay with that. They weren't over, over committing for those flushes. Right, right. Here's the match leaderboard. It'll be pretty much the same as the overall leaderboard right now. This is game number one of the grand finals. Day Trade walks away with 15 massive points. Genji right behind him. But as you go down that board, really, it's just those top four teams just sucked up so many kills. Right, right. Is that a symptom of how crazy this circle was? Oh, yeah. I mean, the phase seven shift, there was nobody in it. Yeah, exactly. They're, I mean, they're in a spot where they're able to, you know, hold out everybody else, make sure they can kind of third party the situations. And also, the way that the circle moved away again and again yeah once you're in a in a spot where you can kind of gatekeep from inside the circle that's, that's what we saw from day trade as well holding on to that southwestern side there they're able to take down so many shoot to kill as well yeah. kind of went into the arms and they're forced to get in there twisted minds were one of them sonics were in a fantastic spot but heaven taking two knocks with the pump action yeah that's uh, that's obviously rough for them they they could potentially have taken on gen g or sweeped out and taken that kind of eastern side later but yeah, he got completely destroyed, and Genji was able to just hold the high ground and make sure it just put in put damage into uh, Sonics. Absolutely, take a quick look. That was third eye there, studying the maps. They did middle of the pack. I think that's what you're going to look for for right. them throughout today to just stay in the middle, look for four or five points a game, and be there on the final day. What do you consider uh, like a success besides, of course, grand final? I mean, to be honest, with, with third eye, the fact that they started in an open qualifier right, exactly. slot, and they, they're the only team that I know of to play every single stage of this event. I think if they finish top. 10, they will be ex incredibly happy oh, with sure. that performance. You know, ask the players personally, they'll say, no, I want to win. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're required to say that, right? This is a team who will not be happy with just top 10. The Sonics, they had a good spot. They got caught, though, by that push. And I know yeah. they're not going to be happy. They were uncontested. 17 got to keep. 
Picado, they went to Impala. Do you think that'll stand on Arangel? I think so too. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be the the, the change drops, and I think that's the clever idea. They were um, they're comfortable with yeah. after PGIS, you know, for a year, year and a half, they're like we're gonna we're gonna keep fighting Picado Pachinko, but they're back to kind of. I feel like they want to win again. Yeah. Like it's been a long enough time, so yeah, we'll see um, we'll see how it's gonna work for them. All right, it's time for us to get over to the magnificent meadows of Arangel and kick off game number two of the Grand Finals. Thank you so much, Tavis. Thank you so much, Martin, for the great analysis on the desk. We're headed on over to Erangel for the first time here in the Grand Finals. A little bit of an alluding to potential hot drops. I do not think we should see anything similar to what we had last game cam over on Miramar. Don't think it's going to happen. One thing that I do know it's going to happen, though, is that these players are going to be flying out from the far western side of the map. Uh, I don't know about that, because there have been a lot of adjustments in drop spots. So with the map that I personally have chalked up myself, I think it's gotten a lot more even with this one. But yeah, I don't think we're going to have... There's not going to be any hot drops on this. There was potential drama between Ghibli and STK, but they sorted that one out. I don't think it's... Um, and I mean, Cerberus backed away from Sonics on Miramar, so they're definitely going to... Oh, you're talking about the plane path. That is what I was telling I you. Were you. About, I thought you were talking about like the rotations and everything. I'm you're like, talking how, about the plane path. How long is it going to go on about this thing that I didn't throw to him? Uh, that's my bad. That's my bad. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We can jump straight back to it. As you said, probably no hot drops, but the very hot western plane yeah. path. Arguably one of the most hot western plane paths you can get on a map of Wrangle. So uh, if you're a hot committed military power team, <clears throat> luminosity, yeah. it's a bit of a stretch to get down there. It's not just luminosity. Uh, Third Eye also playing pretty far east. And yeah. Howl's spot around Shelter, not great for them to get to either. So you can already see Howl going to, uh, seems to be alternative drop around Swamp. <laughs> Which is I mean, not ever really a drop. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the games do end up in there and someone will sit around with a UMP and a shotgun and they'll win the game. So we'll see. We'll see if they get blessed with the Zerg going in their direction or how things are going to pan on. Ouch. I'll be flying eastbound towards their, uh, their spawn of farm. See that vehicle commotion early on as 17 grabs one off of Twisted Minds. And again, of course, we're going to see these things. I actually kind of like that the ghost is all the way up here because they had an easy reach down towards yeah. the Pachinki, but up to go for it anyway. And Circle, okay, hard north is where we are headed. So at least they're on the right west to east side of the map, but only having bridges to cross over. That could cause yeah. some commotion. And that does mean for the teams that are that are going to their east positions. I'm looking at Navi as the, the biggest ones for this. Mm. It's gonna be a bad rotation for them because they haven't even gotten to their drop spot. We are still seeing a couple of attempts at knocking people out of the sky. If you get a gun early and there are still parachutes above you, might as well go for it. Uh, it's happened a few times over the course of the hey. entire history of uh, PUBG Esports. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's low chance, but it's a free you know attempt. You ain't gonna win the lot of you lottery if you ain't playing. Exactly. So you might as well uh, exactly. see if you can find yourself an easy one. And even if you don't get the flush on him, you now know exactly what team, especially with a plane path like this, where you're not necessarily sure of all the team's alt drops, you will know exactly who it is. And you also know that um, he's probably gonna swing a little further west next time he flies past your building. Looking at Ascend with their new alt alts, like seven position all <laughs> drop scavenging all around everything but they should have a good rotation in it's only if tiamba or cerberus want to gatekeep that south side but with the river not really favoring the south edge of this yeah. zone i think everyone's just going to be trying to push across through georgia pole uh, north of razak etc you say that i would say i think a lot of teams are going to up to swing hot east over yasnaya the only area of the map where you can actually cross south to north avoiding bridges. Yeah. And with us being this early on into the grand finals and teams wanting three points early, I would expect to see a lot of teams try and like, kind of just set up gatekeeps on these bridges. Pro player, pro, pro tip, okay. get a boat. Okay. Hey. It's been a while since we've seen a boatation uh, from Primorsk all the way up to Zarki. <laughs> yeah. Just saying, maybe I'm... oldies can be goodies. Okay, so question is, since yeah. it's been a while, yeah. is there a reason that it's been a while? Yeah. Yeah, 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 there is. They learned how to play PUBG since <laughs> yes. then. Who would have thought? I know, I know. Okay, you know if there's one hot shifts west, I'm all for it. Howl, you know what? Take that boat, swing it to Saga, do whatever you want. But for now, I think keeping control of your vehicle is probably the play. Let's take a look at the replay here as we continue this one forward. And that's Heaven against Cerberus. Of course. Just boom, the boom. solo hold, double shotgun. 
They pushed us too, and well, the shotgun is like the one weapon that could really take care of this. And that, that, it was that, that was the shot oh. that was completely unearned. We were wondering why you were ahead of me in fantasy, and then we were like, oh, wait. Yeah, oh, wait, I have heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Jamba third eye. Third Shotguns. eye just can't not get a break. They always get into early engagements, but Vox now gonna remind us, gonna repeat what heaven just did, it seems. I like this repositioning from Vox. He knows that if I take the fight alone inside the compound, there's not a lot I can do. 100 HP to 0 HP, just like that. One shot to the chest. Shotguns are insanely OP. It's all about positioning for that weaponry, which should be with a grenade throwing out, and then the rest of Third Eye arriving. Adam stopping short to try and get some damage on the Linshu and Richie B. Avoiding a couple of grenades. The Tiampa are swarming the site. Adam's angle just not good enough. Can the rest of Third Eye hold on while he repositions again? Ooh! Finds one in the chest, gets him the second time around as well. Oldless instantly there though to trade as Tiampa now fully committing to this fight. We do have both 17 and Twisted Minds in the nearby vicinity too. So look for those trackers from the side and see if maybe there's going to be some third party commotion. Adam going down is huge because that was the anchor of the Overwatch position and mm. it's all up to Old List right now. It is only Pow Pow down for... Oh, he jumps down! Tries to do a sneaky little Assassin's Creed maneuver but is not going to catch Chiamba off guard. 7-7 seven, seven with the final shot. Their third eye are eliminated incredibly early. But mm. are there other teams in position to perhaps capitalize? STK and Twisted Minds might have thought of it, but instead they just run into each other. It's very rare that we see so many teams just full speed sent it up into the open hills here in a phase one. But of course, with the plane being so far west and so many of these teams having a chance to wrap up early, they know they have to claim real estate early on in order to secure it because there's a lot of teams looking this way. Lou finds Vegas wide out in the open. Yeah, Vegas really likes making these plays, but sometimes can be a bit too far ahead of the rest of the team. A bit caught out here and it's going to get punished for it. No revive going to be possible. The rest of SDK are pushing towards the north. And I mean, the reason we're seeing so many fights, I think you just touched on it, is that top third of the, of the circle, water, bottom third, yep. below the river, and unlikely to, to stay in play. Everyone is rushing for this, this center Peninsula, rim. kind of just going out there. Yeah, exactly. The bunny ear. The bunny ear. You know what? That's a good call. I'll call that entire place the bunny from now on, regardless of whether you're just west of Stalpa. The bunny or, 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 I get it. I get it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Now, in the meantime, wrapping their way on forward, side by side with Sonic. You just see a little bit of Tickleton there in their minimap, in the bottom left corner, uh, bottom right corner of your screens. But uh, I think Sonic's heard that they saw the vehicles come through and like, you know what? We actually kind of want to play a whole game this time around, so let's uh, let's allow them to wrap on through. Human, trying to find an opportunistic knock here with Kurt solo player in this split. It's a sneaky angle coming in from the ridge line. And Kurt doesn't seem to be yeah. that aware of, I mean, aware of the potential for sure, but not that uh, defensive from it. But maybe the, some call out happened because he's going to drop in the high ground, get in the vehicle. No, he's getting to the tower. It's definitely a better solo position Point. to hold. But this could be an opportunity for Gumin. Shots coming out. Ooh. Just barely get the knock. But that is another knock against SDK. And no way in hell they're getting that rest up either. The two remaining SDK players in too good of a position to really flex out. Now, a bit surprised, especially when Vegas fell down, but they're still up to try and maintain a 2-1 split in arguably one of the most prioritized areas of the map early on. Of course, pretty much regardless of where the second circle will take us, teams will rotate out of the shorelines. But uh, this early on, I'm surprised. And also, uh, Foxy knocked himself on From, Milia, from a in. UAZ. Not even a bite. I think he jumped out of the car. Like a fat, fat finger and... Uh, and, and and just, you know what, I don't need, uh, first plate, pfft, who needs it anyway? He didn't die last game, so if he, he, he took 62 damage last game. Maybe he just wanted to feel what it feels like to get knocked. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to take some damage, guys. <laughs> we'll see now, Ruin, trying to wrap on through as Howl wants to reposition himself out towards the west. I like that idea because so many times have we seen these circles shift out towards that western field just north of George Ball. 17 Gaming, hold on to Cube. They're one of the teams that are going to be looking over those bridges that, yep. as you mentioned, they're such a big threat. If you're coming in as late, you're still waiting a few teams. Might as well wrap hard east. I imagine Gen G are going to be doing that, but uh, Day Trade and Ascend here, they're coming in from the west side, yep. so for them it would be a big waste of time and gas. They are just going to have to brave the bridge. I think if you're smart and you're Ascend here, you stick around for a little while longer. Wait those extra minute and 30 seconds. You know that the north side is already fully taken. There's nothing for you to come for. Yes, you can sit in a spot from where you can scout further forward, but no reason to fully commit to any side of the circles just yet. Just wait for the new ones to pop. Who knows? Maybe you get a southern hardship, because hardships would be too rare these days, apparently. 
Um, and then you'd be blessed. So might as well just stick around. You know you're gonna have to go north anyway, and the team's there. Probably gonna be gone by the time you get there anyway. Little built up here that Brax is gonna get some information from. Smart. Hal as well, getting close to Ghibli. Ghibli have flexed out even further since they got that kill onto yeah. Kurt. Yeah. Nice little split. They're staying active. They want to maintain this high uh, ranking position for as long as they can. No reason to give up that podium spot just yet, as we also see the Sonics group on in, and Genji in the blue coming in super, super late. No reason to hurry. I mean, melee team with the north side shift coming yeah. in. They know they're going to be late to the party again, as I said. Similar story to Ascent. They know they're going to be late to the party. And honestly, perfect timing for them would be hitting Rossock around the new circle pub, because they're going to be coming in full speed, maybe even even that far out, going to be able to beat a team or two to the punch for a uh, good position. That's true. That's actually a, a fair point, especially if it's an eastern shift. Exactly. 20 seconds left. Sonic stalling for a second, pulling away. I imagine they spotted something from either Luminosity or Na'Vi just ahead of them. Mm. And now Day Trade, who have been pushing themselves a little forward. These two members at God Compound, uh, the other two are on South George Hilltop, which is right next to the edge, but that is 100% for information. But it's going to be... It's actually kind of center, but because of the water, it's essentially a hard shift towards the north. This favors most of the teams in, but then you have the day trades and the ascents mm. and the Gen Gs that are now going to have to find somewhere to try and slot in. The interesting thing is for right now, the way that we look at it, all teams that are coming in from outside the circle are rotating uphill into the literally unknown. So we'll see how these rotations are going to come through, Sonics. Like, what angle do you get? Because you know that regardless, there could be players sitting behind trees, behind rocks, yeah. anywhere, wherever you try and rotate through. Because as you can see, with how aggressing early on, you need to like you need to take spots early yeah. in this area of the map because there are only so many available. Yeah, we saw LG concede space to Na'Vi, and Na'Vi are still on the rotate, perhaps trying to chase the spot that Howell have a faster uh, direction I think they saw them. to get to. Yeah, they're going to stop early. It's, this is kind of a dip that Na'Vi are playing around, but Howell finding this active, like actively um, reinforced trench is certainly mm. an even better spot. It has uh, in the past become the uh, kind of the magnet for grenades over the top, and when the nades are thrown from a spot from where you can't see the opponents throwing them, it's it makes true. it uh, a little difficult to stay alive. In the meantime, Twisted Minds full control of the plane crash area, but of course they would have heard the vehicles from HAL just coming in. So Lou, trying to make sure that no one is peeking forward. HAL are not a threat to Twisted Minds right now, as much as it would be mm. very, very... Um, a good number of points if they can just drop those grenades in that trench, as you mentioned. They want to make sure that they can defend from another team who is perhaps more desperate and will be sending immediately into their position because Howl are not a threat right now. Day Trade pushing across the bridge. 17 have yet to be activated onto them. Cerberus have sent it on ahead, so that's some position for Day Trade to take, and we're still waiting to see what Ascend opt to do on this southwest edge. Yep. I know that Face ain't here, but I love the damage, the mental damage they have done to Ascend because they have been gatekeeping them throughout the entirety of the season in EMEA and Ascent, every time they come to anything that looks like a bridge or a potential gatekeep spot, they all stop, they all get out of the cars, they scout forward, and honestly, I mean, it's adding another at least 45 seconds to every rotation they make us. Oh, they could be there, they could be there, they could be there, but don't worry, yeah. don't worry, Ascent, you're, you're, you should be all right this time around. We'll see if there's any spot, uh, space left for Ascent on the west side because Cerberus are... Arriving at one of those possible spots, though not quite on that edge. I was eyeing up that hill just above Tiamba, yeah. but Day Trade, they are eyeing Tiamba's compound directly. Linshu still with the shotgun in play. They've been plugged so far inside Day Trade. Well, they assume that someone's here, but they don't know exactly where it is. Grenades are coming out. They're being dodged. No Linshu with the underhand frag. This one could be a nice knock. Norris is terrifyingly alone, and now he gets knocked too. There's no way Flash can come down and help Belmont. It's over hill position. Ain't pretty gaining him any cover either. So uh, a little, uh, uh, little little head scratch up on that one. Now Flash driving into the entirety of servers. I'm not sure, honestly, what Daytrade was expecting coming into this circle this late that these positions wouldn't already have been claimed. Yeah, this is some rough it's communication for Daytrade. Yeah. Because... That compound, if they wanted to approach it, they needed to send all four. They sent one and maybe some Overwatch, and then Flash just continued on into a place that had a high chance of being occupied already. At the very least, that's giving space for Ascend. Not only do they need to send all four, but they need to send all four three minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a little, a little late, a little late to try and claim those sort of positions, even though it is at struggle, but it just kind of goes to show how little there is of proper real estate in this area of the map. We just saw Gen G. They slotted in on the east side and now Twisted Minds still trolling above Howl's mm. position. But the circle is going to be a shift towards the north. Spyro, Twisted 
Ghost and Mines, Material and all get activated. Nox and now over the follow-up grenades. Howl's run this round might be eliminated in the blink of an eye, and it is what indeed out in 15th place. What a setup. I saw Spyro flexing over to that side a bit earlier. He snuck his way there. It took him a solid 30 seconds. When he got there, didn't shoot this one. Guys, guys. There's a whole team down here. If this circle goes away, we wait here, and then we take him out. It was pretty much a 3-2-1, let's shoot, and they were down in a blink of an eye. I Great. really would have wanted a second chance at that one. <laughs> have to be more aware, and here it is, the remaining yep. members of Day Trade just trying to send it through, hopefully, an, an unexposed angle, but it's going to be a crossfire between 17 and Twisted Mind. Suju with the first. It's all going to be on Pooh Chills and driving directly into Twisted Minds territory. Lou is here for the follow-up, and that is Day Trade eliminated in 14th place. Day Trade wrapped so wisely on Miramar in the previous game, and it's as if they've forgotten how to rotate coming into game number two. That's a, yeah. little, uh, a little unlucky. Some decisions made there that they would have to go over. Of course, since we're going back and forth between the maps, they have a solid hour, maybe an hour and a half, to reconsider their next upcoming Erangel rotations, because those ones clearly didn't work out for them. Navi actually left that hill side back onto these dips that are similar to the Badlands west of school, which we haven't been in a while. Uh, now Genji also pushing in, but 4 a.m. are getting a bit close. Pio's arriving back. They're going to be sliding themselves in on this edge, and this is a, a good position to defend from, mm. but it is on the edge. They're likely going to have to leave at some point. It's the it's weird when you look at it, but it's the closest towards the center position from where you can still bring your vehicle. Everything now is hillside, it's open, and they want to keep those cars for as long as they yes. can, because do we shift north, do we shift into shooting range? You can't just run down that hill. You've got to full speed send it. So right now, Gen G staking to the edge is a very, very wise idea. Yeah, they don't want to be caught in, this, in a similar situation that Day Trade exactly. did, so they're just exactly. playing super safe. They're going to wait to see where Phase 4 gets activated, and that's going to be more of a committed approach at that point. But right now, Pio is watching the backfield, but it's actually a push up the hill on the east side from Danawa. That was the initial point of contact, Foxy readjusting and still aware that 4AM could also yep. pounce off of that initial Danawa engagement. And that's the issue for Genji now. Are they aware that it's two full teams? I mean, Salute is still sat in the crossroads compound further north, kind of playing the, uh, the, the, the big brother protector and all of this, the UAV role effectively. This allowing for Pio, like all these shots coming through, it is sold to find the knock, but it was actually Salute that spotted him first. Two first shots connected from him. Great peak from far away. Man. Genji, their, their spread, it looked good, but... You gotta, you gotta win the fights, you gotta hit those yeah, shots, yeah. and you also gotta just make sure you don't get snuck up upon. They're, They're arriving back to pick everyone up, ready for phase four, but ultimately this is just to get out of dodge because they are in a very, very hairy situation. P.O. where are is they? It's saveable, and it looks like Genji actually trying to send it into the Korean brothers. Okay, they're just saying, you know what? You took out one of ours, but we'll just full speed send it straight into you. They know that Salute is a solo player down below. Pio saw the shots coming through. They're calling the bluff. They're seeing this plate. They want this combo for themselves. Vehicle over the top of the head from one, but Salute does fall. So nice call on the bluff on that one, reading the split as effectively as they did. And the Northeast hard shift made that send even more valuable because wow. everyone else is going to have to try and get into that West Severity field. And it's going to be Sonics with good positioning. Navi on the move. STK, at least in the 1-1 one, one split could try and catch uh, some heads here, some scalps and Twisted Mind sending it into Luminosity. Kickstart is knocked and finished very, very early on once again. What a tough shift for so many teams opting to play the hillsides. For the ones that didn't have their vehicles around, it's taken them much, much longer to get down here. For once, so it got here early. As you can see, Twisted Minds pulling up, finding Kickstart early. Huge for them to make landfall in and around the shooting range area. It's a big open field. A center trying to take it, but everyone else is probably just going to be fighting over shooting range. There are a few small little pockets of cover you can take. 17 seem to be eyeing up this ridge on the east side, on the east wall, and 4 a.m. Summer tumbling into position <laughs> with this shack. It's in the zone, so and it has high ground. Yeah. So this actually could be a good position to play from, but it all depends on where Danawa exactly. wants to continue to respond. There is Loki there just above them exactly. with the potential to grief that spot. It's going to be dangerous if they don't catch him. In the meantime, 17 splitting out as best as they can, where Sushu and Xiaopei is currently sad. We know that to be like the nade spam. Yeah, brave, essentially. People that sit there tend to lose their entire teams in those positions, so I love the fact that 17 aren't fully committing to the same spot, but spreading out because they know the threat of nades is real when you sit down there. Ghibli, Tianba, last two teams try and get into this zone. 4 a.m. Somehow Dude. spotting Loki in the grass. That's a kill for them, and that's another member of Danawa taken out. So the last two members of that team and Onyx and uh, Soul, I believe, are going to have to try and, and center up and stay alive, but Ghibli, eyes on this shack. Eyes on Alo. 
Grenades coming in that direction. This should be it. It's cooked just a bit too long, and the fire yeah. is not spreading into Alo's feet. Surprised that he cooked it at all, considering they already had Molly there. Yeah. Even if he ran out, they could just shoot him. But uh, okay, they tried. Didn't work. Now, Anonix, first one to fall as. The downfall of Danawa continues. Sprex go trying to help out a little bit, but I think even with that, not a whole lot Soul could do to try and recover. And now Tiamba eyes onto 4 a.m. They want that high ground, and they know that 4 a.m. are at least a little wounded. But they're going to be sending it on to Summer, who is alone in this shack. Is he able to get the first knock and defend his position? And the rest of the team firing on all cylinders from the high ground on the west. Shots coming in, long turn down very, very low. A good Ooh. grenade as well. Nice lob on over as 4AM trying to push further forward. This is only a knock still on Summer. Could potentially get all four back up. 7-7 seven, seven now. Solo player left here trying to keep the dreams and hopes of Tiampa here in game number one of Miramar alive. A couple of flashes as well as even more frag grenades coming on in. And they're going to take that ground and they're going to try and push back in. They know it's only one. They're just going to go for a double peek and play for the trade. But the trade is not even needed. Five kills for 4AM and they can get the revive onto Summer, not losing a single soul. And huge for Xiao Lu that he comes in here fragging in game number two. Circle has swung north. So even though they win the position, 4AM will have to move again. But again, Xiao Lu hasn't played this tournament at all yet. So for him to come onto the server, get a couple of kills in there early on, get a good feel of it. We know how dangerous it is. Is. We'll see if he tips to perform here as well. Look at this spot by Ascend. It's a split. Two in the center, two in hard cover mm. on the, the soft edge that is uncontested. Just give that covering fire. Everyone else is going to have to just go through the meat grinder that is the shooting range yeah. lines. Yeah, it's not going to be easy at all for all these teams currently sat far south. STK has Penta sat close towards the hillside, but no one else is really there so far. Sonix has trapped hard north again. Sonix has been quiet pretty much this entire match. Zero kills so far, but keeping all four up. Good position to approach the circle from and now. Up close here is Twisted Minds sneaking their way up towards Cerberus. Three pitted below Cerberus, but two in a vehicle. Could be playing this as a bit of a uh, of a bait, of a distraction. The vehicle comes sending by, and the rest of Twisted Minds are there uh, to pounce. Ben 4AM also in their own vehicles. So the last one remaining of Danawa. They know, they should know where he is, but he's going to continue to play this as a solo. But back on this side, Cerberus Ooh. know that Twisted Minds are here. The grenades are coming out. First one connects perfectly onto Perfectix. But Tool is now trying to send one in return, but so much damage coming through from them first, taking them down in seconds. Ludo's fine one in return, but the damage has already been done to him as up close sprinting forward doesn't connect onto Spiral the second time around, but just like that, solo player left alive. Navi flexing out. Luminosity wanted to do the same thing, and Gipley looking down south up from the north side compound as well. Smoke's coming out for Spyro to get the revival to Tulin, but Lou and Perfectix, they're just playing for information at this point. The revives are unlikely to come out. More frag grenades coming in. Spyro has to pull away, run into the smoke, and get his own heal on. But Tulin has been confirmed in 4 a.m. now. So we can actually pass Danawa on to 17, but Shao DD with a grenade. And the hole with Xiao Bay. They are not going down in this pit just maybe, yet. Maybe that's the kryptonite from this position. You die by nades, but if you just spam enough out, you might actually get to survive as well. Just like that, Cerberus falls too as the battle in the open fields continues. Navi flexing out, trying to take control, regardless of having lost one early and Alia now being down too. Now 4AM are also eliminated on the east side, which means that Sol, as a solo player from Nanawa, can continue to try and snake some final points out. Alia has been knocked. Example with the revive under the cover of smoke, but that is a cover of smoke So if anyone just wants to fire a whole magazine in or even drop a grenade I think Ghibli have eyes on that they could get the confirm yeah. there and not to mention Spyro also solo twisted minds out in the blue Yeah, they took out Alo, which has allowed for Ghibli to push further down towards the southern side Let's see new circle pups. How brutal are you gonna be because anything north of the road here is open <sighs> Shifts down towards the south luminosity still gonna be in in the shooting range area. Luminosity 17, looking pretty good in this, and Navi, if we're able to hold the line against Ghibli, could also be a strong position here, yeah. but that's so many strong teams in one limited piece of territory. Sure, this ain't gonna be easy to make your way in from here, or in two here, from anywhere, really. Nate's lopped on forward, Ooh. would be a bit short, I'd imagine. Actually, oh, no, as a matter of fact, right on the money, example falls, should be an easy rest though, depending on whether or not Gipley ups to aggress off of it. Mel holding the line, gets a little bit of damage out, but the follow-up grenades force Navi to get the revive indoors, and that means that Gibley could try and retake that space. There is still Penta, the last member of STK to try and uh, maybe backstab and steal a kill or two, but Gibley need to get on the move. Sonic's now with the high ground as well on the north side, just trying to start to get involved. 
see now. Smoke's deployed. They want to suppress them as best as they can and wrap on forward. They know they have to do so before Luminosity peaks, before anyone takes the hillside. They're out in the middle of the open, but they have to continue pushing forward. Now they've gone for it. Now they have to commit to it. Smoke's coming out. Bakuman is still on the push, and here comes the buggy. Holding heaven. Charging forward on a chariot, but he's also going to go down. Navi, Meld has been dropped. All they are very, very low. Example holding point while those heals happen, and Spyro is still out in the blue, and it's going to be Sonics as well to third party this push. I love the idea of this play from Gibney, but the timing was awful. They came in essentially one after one after one, allowing for Navi to pick them up one after another. Now Luminosity out on the side finds one. Melman example finding the last from Gibney as well as they fall in night. Uh, Alia unable to get revived. Couple little tags there. Uh, that's going to be the bleed out for the final kill going towards Ghibli. Example, as you say, the sole survivor of Na'vi. Luminosity making sure that no one got out of that one mm. in a particularly healthy position. Why Flu DD himself is holding <laughs> off uh, 17's push because yeah. they know that that's a big threat of 17 trying to take m a better holdable, defensible position here in the actual shooting range territory, the borders itself. Yep. Flu DD on one side, Wu DD over on the other. We'll see which DD comes out victorious. He's playing a solo flank right now against the entirety of 17 Gaming. Not exactly the easiest position to be in, but he has utility. You can see here Rello trying to peek over his shoulder as well. If they push, even if they come running this way, maybe Rello could be a good thing to just bait some attention. Say, oh, come this way, we're all in the compound. And then for Flood, could peek out and get one or two. Problem for Luminosity is that they're trying to hold a couple of different points, and it's mm. necessary. They don't want to get backfilled on either the east or the west. Exactly. So it's going to have to be a big distraction by Rello if they want Flood to have a good chance of uh, really striking in a hard way. Also, not wanting to do a whole lot before they see the next circle pop. Do yes. not commit to a fight until you absolutely know that you have to make a play. Don't adjust to things. They ain't happened yet. Let's see where does this next one take us. Sonics have a small little rock to play with, and their ridge has just been... Uh, it's gotten smaller and smaller <laughs> by the zone, and it seems to be, I think, fully eliminated. There's also... Barely a wall in play for um, the shooting range itself. It's mm. really just Kill Yakai, who's, I don't even think is in a shack, just croning out in the he's, open. He's, he's got, got a rich he, line the US. He's got a car, I guess yeah, that's yeah. something, right? But yeah, there's nothing to play for in this final, well, not yeah. final, phase seven. There's still another whole phase to go, but there's really nothing here for cover. I mean, this shot right here of the uh, the Observer feed, you can see it. I mean, if you say Kill Yakai just as a car, believe me, half these teams would love to just have a car to hide behind, because there really ain't anything. A couple of trees for you guys to fight around. Everything else is fighting in the open. I would be surprised if not all the... Like, there's only going to be one team alive on the southern side of this circle by the end of this shift. Despite there being five right now. Unsure if Example would know about Spyro. Example is just peeking in towards Sonics because he's got to leave yeah. this, uh, this shelter entrance soon. And Spyro is there to pick up that kill. Kiljakai should still be outside in 8 range in the meantime now. Yep, Spyro peeks on over, finds example. Easy peasy, more placement points to be confirmed. If he can make his way further forward, now Snaker swings out, finds one on Sonics as they have to make their way further forward as well. Ah, uh, man. I wonder how many smokes they have. We see two on um, one of those members of the Sonics, so they're going to have to use a lot of them to try and get into the zone. But even then, where are they? can they even play? Oh, like I don't, I don't know. I think it's just no. going to be everyone running out in the open, and then the small little smidgen of shooting range in play for uh, Luminosity if, and Seventeen. If Sonics and Genji ends up, oh, sorry, if Ascendant and Genji ends up fighting here, Sonics has to make the wrap on East. If the fight battles on the South, they have to make the play on South. And now you can see they're still not fully committed to any decisions just yet, as Nox come through on both sides. Kill your Kai down. Another kill for Seventeen Six already in the pocket for them. And they look like they have grenades. Are ready for Luminosity? Flood with a counter frag out. They should know his position. Sneakers yeah. have has approached as well to stay pitted. They're just waiting for the first knock. Rello's going to be feeding all the information. Yep. Okay. okay. In the meantime, Chris finds a double. We know him to be the M249 player. Finds the double. Gets the flushes onto Sonic's players as well. And they're in trouble trying to make their way off the hill. And now in the meantime, over towards the other NA team trying to fend off against the entirety of 17. Ascendio get eliminated. We're looking at our top four right now. But it's looking like it's going to be only a matter of time before we see three. Because Luminosity did 17. Yeah. Oh, they just have blood in their eye. 17 now out of frag grenades. Only throwing flashes. Rello forced to rush forward because of the smoke. And then Logos with the angle. Can't quite get the knock. Suju was able to get the first. But then Xiaobei swinging over the top side. Only one member of Luminosity remaining. And all of the commotion happening here. 17 is forced to go for the rest. Genji in the meantime wrapping up towards the hillside as they hear Sonic's leave. This could be Genji setting themselves up for a very good win here. Now you see the push came through from Sonic's. They have to frap that down. Nice plays coming through from Genji.
They're put, they're setting themselves in position to punish the rotation and then punish the survivor. 17 come out on top here, still three alive. But Genji are rushing forward. They yeah, want to take out H when the last member of the Sonics, and he is bleeding out. He is burning. DG98 does get caught in the cross of the road. And 17 Gaming, they only have a small level of this wall to work with, but it is a piece of cover. That's why Genji are just trying to throw everyone to pit below it. This is the polar opposite of the Miramar win we saw from Genji just before. We might be looking at a grand finals back to back to kick things off if they can come up victorious here. Genji took it into their own hands to split out, to flex out behind. And luckily for DG98, the battle kind of ended just a second and a half before he would have wanted it to between the teams inside the compound. And now Taemin, Foxy, solo players left here trying to fend off against 17, but 17 will have to leave oh, the barricades. Oh, good shots. Forces Little goes back. But Foxy can't not die. And off of that damage, Damon's gonna strike, but the timing doesn't work Ooh. out. He's gonna get the kill. And he wait, he gets a second. The follow-up now. It's a two versus one. Genji might just go for the back-to-back. Pushing forward, no vest to work with whatsoever, no utility, the downslow HP taken out instantly, Foxy, he knows exactly where he has him, does Xiao Bei go for the rest now knowing that Foxy has to make a run? Foxy's closer toward the center, he could hold on to that, but he does not want the res to happen as you Nate. say, frag grenade at the ready, this one could be the game winning throw, but I don't think it's far enough. It bounces in the air, down to 60 HP as he has to make the play on forward, 1v1, there's no way you're allowed to go for this res, Foxy, no way. Xiao Bei is expecting the peak, and Foxy's gonna be sticking the res. The smokes are fading, smoke is gone, but he has enough of a rich line to sit behind. One up, two up, now they're hitting the footsteps. Here comes the flashes on forward. Xiao Bei is holding the cross, trying to sit and wait for it. They crawl in for info, but to get hit by it, not gonna happen. Gen G, back to back to kick off the grand finals. They look terrible in groups, but something changed in them in losers, and now they win two games in a row. Where has this Gen G been this entire time? You know what? Ignore that question. It doesn't matter because they're here now. Absolutely phenomenal performance from them. Ever since they come up on the ridge line, they make the full speed sent down to salute, recognizing the split from Danaba, wrapping around the north side, claiming the win for themselves. What a way to start off the grand finals for Gen G. Oh, man, form is one thing, experience is another, and Genji show us just how important that can be. Let's go to a break as we set up for game number three. The G's may be face to face, but the W's are back to back as Gen G puts two chicken dinners in the hopper to start off the grand final. And not only do they get the wins, they're earning those wins. They were hard fought from start to finish. Yeah, and Pew died early, right? Yep. There, this, this is fantastic. And honestly, I gotta say, that double spray down from Taemin, double oh. headshots. Oh my oh, god, my that's god. literally what won them the game. Fantastic play by him. And they're able to close that one out. And, and back to back here, it's honestly. A little bit of a surprise after yeah. what we saw in the group stage, but here, in, of course, going in from the loser's bracket, they've been uh, they've been stepping it up. They're one of those teams. They remind me of like that that sort of Navi vibe. But when they start strong, they right, get strong. Because right. that fight, that hubris was the definition of that. The aggressiveness with which they push, the res inside of the pit to get two back up in that final play. Like Gen G, really did play. Like they they don't care. They just know they're better right, and right. they are acting that way, and it's nice to see. And also, Sonic sent two players to the Sense Shack oh. that then opened up the push from Gen G. 
questionable send, by the way. Yeah. I was kind of hoping to see Sonics hold on to that northwestern side, that ridge for a long time. They're a fall guy strong. Yeah. They could have pushed into the uh, the fence kind of later if they wanted to, but yeah, it, it got shut down early and then they were down to just two players. And it was frustrating because I watched them. They played Sep Triangle for a while right, right. because they wanted to get back on the ridge. Exactly. They held off Ridge Compound, then they worked Ridge that entire time and then made that push. I think maybe they thought they might get into a third party. They kind of saw that battle going on with Luminosity and 17 and wanted to take over the spot. Uh, that said, 17 came out on the on the win for that battle and that LG's Luminosity, or sorry, yeah, 17 Luminosity battle was right. also one of those game changers because it opened up the door for everybody to kind of come in, open that space up, and everyone was limping after that fight. Yeah, and they were like, they're they're throwing all the utility at them. They're kind of yeah. trying to get the opening and. Once all the utility was thrown, everyone waited because everyone was blind. And yeah. then 17 got a really good opening on Earth Pulse here. Twisted Minds and Spire X managed to get some points out of that one too. They got a good amount of kills. And this one, this send here, I was like, wow, what are they trying to accomplish here? Obviously, they wanted to get back. There wasn't even a shack, it was the car that was burning. And that opened up yeah. everything for Gen G. And of course, 17 Gaming, I was impressed with their push. They managed to take down Luminosity quite well. And Shao Wu, of course, opening that up. But then Gen G sent it over. And Taman with that double yeah. headshot knock here from this angle here. Perfect timing from him. You know, I honestly don't know if they knew Ascend was there in the first place. You saw him trying to pivot and drive maybe away. Not, maybe not. Tire got shot out, and that's the end of that one. But that here's one. the play oh by Taman. My, my goodness. And then they get this res. You saw Foxy come over. He gets up DG98. They put out that flash. And once the flash is out, it's just an easy stand up and double spray for them to take home that winner's dinner. Let's check it out. This is the team stats. Foxy, four kills and almost 600 damage. But Taman with 700. Who's your man of the match here? Uh, I gotta say that double knock from Taman there. That's it's very likely gonna go to Foxy though. But I, it's it's take the double knock from Taman with M4. There are some insane spray down. Yeah. Especially in the longer range. The PO though, if you have PO on your fantasy team, <laughs> and he's been out for both of the wins here, right. that's that's gonna be rough. But of course, happy for Gen G. There's a lot of Korean fans out there that's gonna be cheering them on at the moment. All right, your man of the match Taman is Taman. That extra knockout and the damage got him the man of the match, and I think deservedly so. When we watched that replay, the first burn down, it was close right, range. Right. I was sure, okay, he saw it first, but the fact that he just let off the gas for a quarter of a second, transferred that spray and got that knock, opened the door for Gen G. Because 17 looked like they had a really good position. The circle they was did. sort of working for them. Oh, yeah. That Without that knock, I think it's a different story about how the end game. And also, Gen G, they were out in the opening, right? Yeah. there. They, they, they had nothing to kind of... The timing that they had to push and Taman being there on that angle, anchor, it was just perfect. 19 total points here for yep. Gen G on top of the 14 that they just had in the game one there. That's fantastic. But 17 on, mm -hmm. on 15 and a lot of teams here in double digits to Sonic and yeah. Twisted Minds. Actually, Twisted Minds getting eight kills, definitely noteworthy. Yeah. They got four, but they put a good amount of points on the board. And then all the way over to 4 a.m., uh, Cerberus, Tiamba, teams that sort of got pushed out positionally right, were right. able to salvage those points, and that's what you want to see. There's, this is a long 18-game series. Right, right. Get those five points whenever you can. Here we are on the overall leaderboard right now. Gen G is at 33 already, which is absolutely wild. Not what, not what I expected when I showed up here today in the first two games, but... It's only two games out of 18. Yeah, it's a scary team to have snowball effect though, right? True. And if Pio haven't really gotten started as we have seen him do so far in the loser's bracket too. So if they continue doing this, the rest of the three-man roster and Pio also gets started, that's yeah. going to be scary stuff for the rest of the lobby. That's not a team you want to let everything run away with, of course. Still, this is the team that also got second last in the group stage, right, Tuffy? So, yeah. Them being able to turn it around, having a fantastic loser's bracket, and then coming into this year, that's uh, that's a moral boost for them for sure. Yep. On the other side of the coin, I think some teams that we are seeing maybe not have the start they right, wanted to, right. Donawa in particular, they've, too. they've taken some good fights. Luminosity is not working right now. I think that we have a short break. Hopefully those teams can sort of get together with their coaches. I think they're in the rooms right now talking to them. So we'll give them just a few minutes, and then when we come back, it'll be time for game number three of the finals. Now we can be in the game to play PUBG ourselves. We have in the dreams of the skin. Finally, we can see our skin in the game. If I encountered a player wearing our skins in the game, I would feel like, um, proud to, be, to like, uh, see that. 
PUBG e스포츠가 오랫동안 고민해왔던 지점 중에 하나가 팀들에게 실질적인 혜택과 더불어서 동반 성장하는 모델을 만들고자 하는 것이었습니다. 그러한 맥락에서 글로벌 파트너 팀 프로젝트를 시작하게 되었습니다. 그 시작으로 GPT 스킨을 제작을 하게 되었습니다. 이번 스킨은 팀에서 원화를 직접 제작을 해주셨는데요. 그 퀄리티가 정말 예상보다 훨씬 좋아서 깜짝 놀랐습니다. 팬분들께도 응원하는 팀에서 직접 제작을 해주셨기 때문에 더욱더 의미가 클 것이라 생각이 되는데요. 자신이 응원하는 팀에 대해서 오랫동안 응원해온 보람이 있구나. 느끼실 수 있는 계기가 될수 있을 것 같습니다. I have imagined what it would feel like to have skins representing our team. It would be like we are actually in the battlegrounds ourselves in the game. Now we can be in the game to play PUBG ourselves. We designed the skins in the way we've always imagined, wanted, and thought that would be cool. I hope our fans really love the skins. I think they look really cool, so I think the fans will enjoy them as well. Well, the big challenge is to create something that represents the brand and it has to look cool so the fan has the desire for it. So you need to find the right elements and colors with meaning. I'm thrilled uh, that uh, GPT skins will help our fans uh, be united with our team. It's always exciting because you only create these things in the digital world and it's a great joy to see our fans who will win in our skin. 希望这些皮肤能代表我们十七战队，并向大家展示我们战队的文化和精神含义，这样才能确保皮肤能够被广大玩家喜爱和接受。对我来说挺激动的，能在 PUBG 里看到代表我们十七战队的皮肤饰品，这个过程。让我想要拿出更好、更有说服力的表现，来更好的在电竞领域定位我自己和队伍。就对于选手来说，在游戏里就拥有自己的那种专属道具啊，或者皮肤，就是非常有意义的一件事。然后希望以后这种合作也能够越来越多吧。I believe there will be more opportunities communicating with our fans, expanding the global partner team program. 안녕하세요. 저는 PCC 캐릭터 팀의 이준호입니다. 캐릭터가 있는 의상, 총기 그리고 탈 것들을 제작하고 있습니다. 팀별로 그런 색깔이나 특성이 있는 디자인이라고 생각했고 일반 옷으로 생각해도 굉장히 멋스러운 디자인이라고 생각했습니다. 팬들이 모았을 때 가장 중요하다고 생각되는 부분들 그런 부분에 중점을 더 작업을 했고요. 팬분들이나 이제 유저분들이 보았을 때 우리 팀의 이 유니폼을 입고 실제로 경기를 할수 있겠구나 하면서 약간 그런 것들에 대한 만족을 위해서 생각을 하면서 작업을 했습니다. And I want to thank every fan for your support. It like means a lot for us. I cannot imagine the world without fans. 期待一下我们这款皮肤吧。所以说，你们的支持对于我们非常重要，也希望大家多多支持十七战队。谢谢大家。Xavier's position in, in particular is really tr Ooh. tricky for Ghibli. Ooh. Oh! Bing is once again landing a sick headshot! How is he getting away with this? Two more bullets in this AWM. Can Vegas make it? Oh! Yes, he can! Stop! That's Please! Unbelievable! Vegas! <laughs> Desperate to eat the points. They're set in 15th. They're screaming with the first instantly. The flush to follow. As now Sinan tries to oh, find another one, Cuban again, and oh, oh, oh. the third as well! It's on, it's now, it's on now, it's on this maneuver for these two yep. to go out with a bang and not go out with the whip with the sense coming on in. Oldis with the grenade at the ready, it looks oh. good! Oldis takes down two of New Happy! Flush for Akkad, still at her, holding the line, gets another. All of a sudden, this push for third party, or excuse me, for third eye, looked good, and now it doesn't. If they're losing players themselves, it's not going to be a free grab. It's not going to be an uh, easy continuation of this game despite being a center spot. And it looks like Sun Sister also want to take part in this. Petrico Road actually backed away. They realized that. Oh, I say that. It's actually going to be third eye eliminated. Old list swinging around the corner. I mean, you, like you said, FaZe needs points. And now they're walking right Ooh. to the guns of Gen.G. Taming is making a pay, getting three headshots with the SLR.
And we are back here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for PGS1. Two games in, and it's two games for Gen G. Paper Thin and Cammy D coming at you. And I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling pretty good, Cammy. I'm having a good time back there. Yeah, uh, who would have seen this coming? Who could have <laughs> seen this coming? It, like, literally, in no stretch of the imagination, just looking at Gen G's form coming in. Yeah, PWS, yeah, sure, fine. But then, like, in group stage, and then, and then losers. It, it Okay. They were underdogs that were looking good that I thought might have been big threats. Gen G was not necessarily the top of that list. Yep. No, it was it was sloppy. I mean, I called them out. I, I, what they were doing in some of those earlier stages of the event yeah. were not good. It, it was fr fr frankly just baffling yeah. at times. Here, this is a completely different team. It looks like they're starting to figure out some of their yeah. teamwork, some of their communication, uh, and it is certainly not PO and friends because that time it was the friends who were getting the job done there, DG, Foxy, and Taming. What I think is important, though, is that they're allowing PO to be that far like roaming player to get a lot of information to try and find some crossfires but that he is not their win condition because yes that might have been the case in 2019 but it was very hard to replicate that after 2019 for like global domination there so instead it's Pio getting information and it's Taman as like the central core player of this team who's really getting it done once Pio is able to find those openings yeah I mean that that second knock he had on who 17 gaming was absolutely yeah. filthy with the M4. So this is, you know, this is Gen G at their best. These are players who have gotten it done on the biggest stages before most of them. Foxy excluded in that list, but taming DGPO are absolute monsters. If you've been yeah. watching for any period of time, they have been phenomenal. But guys, we are ready for game number three on the day. It is Miramar once again here at PGS1. Let's fire it up. Let's get over to the Dusty Dunes. And I want to see. Oh, yeah, go ahead. And I want to say that it's going to be another um, not slow early game, but a pretty inactive early game. But I because there were no hot drops, but we saw what happened in round number one. Sure, that was a northern circle with a southern plane path to perhaps lead into that. But then when you just look at Arangel as well, I think these teams, because this is the grand finals, they're willing to fight in the early game if it's you know if it's a good fight and if it's for something important certainly yeah i know uh, i think you're you're spot on uh, from what i've seen it's it's been when fights are taken they're pretty necessary or important for the most part or they're accidental which is part of the game of pubg sometimes sure. you just have to play i don't know off uh, you know on on your on the toes of your feet so to speak playing path pretty far west once again similar to the air one that we had just seen i don't think it's really going to make anyone's drop Bad. There's a little bit of stuff happening around Cruz de Valle, so those parachutes are going to have to be in the air quite um, a bit. I think uh, Ghibli and Cerberus are the two big ones for that. Perhaps Luminosity, though I think they should be okay. Oops. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about this, Cammy. I see Cerberus out, but it has to be some kind of different type of drop, potentially. It looks yeah. like it's going to be more that western water treatment area. I've seen them occasionally mm. uh, in that vicinity when the plane path isn't favorable. Yeah, I mean, Ghibli are on an alt drop spot. Cerberus, Luminosity both seem to be going to alt drop spots, and your Day Trader, no, Day Trader are dropping where they, they usually drop. So yeah, it's just the three. Everyone else is pretty standard, and so far on the map, I don't see any fighting over vehicles, so I think everyone's going to get to their destination A-OK. -okay. Yeah, I think the only area that might have any potential early scuffles is like the Navi Howl, but I don't, even that, I think that's very unlikely. Well, Circle is going to go that way though. Yeah. So now, you know, now I think it's even less likely since they're both dead center. You don't want to get involved in some of those early scrapes. Perhaps, but that also means that say if Navi or Howl, one of the two get a knock on the, on the opposite end, they're big chance that they could really force that into a full fight because it would be for a central position. Yeah, or they have like similar ideas about which compound's best in the circle early game. Yeah, and Rodney yeah. at the same time, just unfortunate timing would lead into something. But no, it looks like so far Howl and Navi, they're not going for an early fight. But again, like eyes on Howl here, here in this first phase, because they're essentially looting up the center of this zone with good ridges, good high ground around them. So it really is going to be on them unless, well, I was about to say, unless we see a hard shift that removes that position from play, but remember, this is PGS hard shift, so that is likely to happen. <laughs> We're changing it to PGHS. Yes. Pub the PUBG Global hard shifts. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. All right, Cerberus, of course, as we mentioned, has a slightly different drop location. Uh, the normal uh, LG is already kind of taking their space as much as they can up on the north by La Cobradia, and then uh, they have a long rotation, but 
uh, you know, again, the, the, the cool part is, I think, for LG is most likely they should have pretty good access to the northeastern part of the circle. Yes. Not a lot of teams up there due to the plane path, those kind of things. Yeah, I loop in all the way on the northeast side through El Azahar and, and, and such. So it depends on how early they can get there because at this point, they're, they drop out of the plane last. They still have to rotate to get to their spot. Teams are dropping out first. Even Ghibli, if they want to do a wide rotation on the eastern uh, highway, could get up to there first. So they're still going to need to approach it quite tentatively. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, those roads are very popular uh, with good reason around the outer edges of Miramar. Yeah. Uh, they, they make for Ooh. powerful transition. Mime this? and Shrimzy are going to be saying hi to Vegas potentially here. A Vegas with an AK, though. And the real question is, is how aware of Vegas's position is Sonic? Here comes the rest of SDK. They're going to reinforce mm -hmm. this. I think Sonic should just get out of Dodge. They really honest. should. I was worried because it looked like another uh, possible Vegas isolation, which seems to be a really bad habit of this team. And But timing of the rest of SDK grouping on up and the rest of Sonic's still a bit far south. Sonic's realized this is not a fight that they really feel comfortable taking, not worthwhile in the first phase. So they're going to concede that. At the very least, it does force SDK to group up into one singular position. And they it looked at the start that they were trying to favor a split. So that, you know, spoiled that plan. But they could still readjust back to it now that Sonic's have left the area. No, I the Sonic's, yeah. Really making the right the right move. The only thing I'm concerned about now for the Sonics looking at the map is that when H win is way out there compared to the rest, and there's like Tiamba players in between them. So if he avoids that, I think Sonic should be a okay. Uh, you know, of course, this 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 particular first circle has La Bendito written all over it yeah. uh, for various reasons, and Howell is fanning around the outside of it. Here is that H win rotation, but it looks like the train isn't really going to give Tiamba much of a line of sight onto this. The H win is. Skewing a bit far to the right. Longscrew might have an angle, but I think the timing is going to favor the Sonics player. And so, I don't know if he knows just how close to death he might have gotten, but uh, Sonics should not uh, be worrying too much now. Should be able to group up, despite not having their first spot available. There's a lot of easy uh, open areas on that east side that they can go into. But now Na'Vi, wrapping around La, um, La Bendita, find two little separate angles under that. Yeah, so Na'Vi trying to see if they can control the north edge of La Bendita with this 2-2 split as best as they can. And maybe they can work work that magic around the crater edge. Seen many teams many times do it. Uh, let's listen to Uba from Navi. Theory, in fact, let's see what he has to say. Because they're like winning, so they don't have like much problems. Everyone is like happy and like keep working on, on the our goal to win the tournament. I think if we play our game, we will have like really high chances of winning the world event. They always say play our game, which usually is. Kind of, I feel, a lame answer, but for Navi's case, it makes perfect sense because it's the same thing we saw at BGC. They were winning every single phase that they were in. They've been really strong here despite having some regional struggles, it, it seemed. And so, yeah, for them, seriously, just keep doing what's been working out. There have been zero holes or really any sort of exploitable flaws in them so far. Certainly. Yeah, they've been, you know, just as, as expected uh, so far this tournament in terms of their success and their firepower and all those things. And... Yeah, I mean, it's a team that, you know, we, we were all talking before this that, like, if they catch fire early, yeah, then all of a sudden, that's a really, really scary team to win this event, like, right off the rip. So, yeah, it's been a somewhat slow start. I wouldn't say super slow, but right in the middle. Let's take a replay here from the previous match. Mm. Oh, this was nuts. Yeah, this was when Twisted Minds just deleted Howl from the map. First strike with the shots, second with the grenades. This was the exact uh, grenade magnet that Toby was warning us about with that Howl position. Yeah, that one right by that shack is really tough. Those dips yeah. up there on that, on that hillside. Yeah. I, you see it so many times. The, the nades uh, just love to be funneled in there. Twisted Minds, so far, uh, I don't want to call it a slow start, but seven, you know, in seven, 13 points, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. Everyone has a slow start if they're not Gen G. Right. Because look, look, just look at the leaderboard on the left side, right? Gen.G in first place with 33 points. Second place is 18. And then it is just a slow, slow drop off from there. There's no real gap after that point. But just first to second, that's that that's a big gap. It's only two games. Things are very, very likely to change. But that, that means that it's really hard to judge the rest of the lobby on how you know fast or slow they're being. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think... The only team that you could call having a slow start is Howell right here sure. with zero points across two games. That's, yeah. that's got to change pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, they're in a great position to make that change now with a nice little 2-1-1 spread just to the south of La Bendita. 
Uh, no real risk of getting isolated push right now just because it is the center and they were here first and other teams coming inside. You don't really want to send it because you know that Howl are likely to be one of those spots. There's good covering fire from those angles. It'd just be a really big gamble even if you knew one of those uh, like Ruin or the Mad were alone. Absolutely. It's going to be third eye with a 3-1 split. Oldless going to be on the Church of Los outside of Chumacera up there just watching the rotations but there is still a send sitting behind them. Luminosity now, like we are talking about, had some space here on the eastern edge. But Cerberus cut just a little bit ahead of them. Kickstart trying to make a pay. Spray doesn't find much. No, but it still is going to push Cerberus away. Tycon now looping back up. They might be trying to post it, but actually holding Luminosity out. We still have a minute and a half for phase two. So, but this is just all about posturing and really having those positions for the, the lines of rotation wherever the next zone might go. Yeah, precisely. It's really important, especially on Miramar, to control those pathing routes. Yeah. So, so crucial. And you can see that there is some distance separating Twisted Minds and Donawa here, more towards the center of the circle, uh, just to the southwest of the Labandita Crater. You see Los Leones in the distance, and uh, both teams just, you know, scouting and those kind of things. The SKS, they're not Soul's preferred gut, so he would probably be looking to upgrade at some point. Continuing with this very mild affair between LG and Cerberus. This is really risky. Uh, Luminosity have spread on out to try and find different angles of crossfire, but Relo is still playing point in that front position. And if he gets knocked, very difficult to get revived because of Cerberus's own angles. Duckmai was in a strong position to try and do just that, but I think shots from Navi pulled them away. While Batulin Twisted Minds, of course he's on a high ground position, uh, gets the first kill of the round onto DG98. So Gen G, it's not going to be impossible for them to get three in a row, but now down to three themselves, more difficult. Hey, it's just a, a day that ends in Y with Batulin's getting kills from up on top of, of these course. mountains. Just every time. The guy's just a mastermind at doing that. He, the best in the business when it comes to controlling those power grid San Martin mountains. Yeah. I mean, if it, his region is very familiar with it. I think sometimes the global teams need to remember. But up, uh, yep, what did I say? What did I say? Hardship, hardship towards the east. This is good for Luminosity and even Sonics uh, and teams around the east side like Giamba and Ghibli, but everyone else driving through those Labandita fields, it's gonna be another, another harsh rotation because this isn't even one that you can particularly wrap to. Exactly. This is a tough one for most teams. There might be some space on the north by the junkyard, but everything else is... But how do you get there? Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, exactly. It's it's going to take a while is the real is the real answer there. Howell, though, of course, probably pretty disappointed with this circle. Navi rotating ahead of them. You can see a lot of teams in parallel rotations because of this hard shift. Uh, and because there's so many fields in this circle, there's going to be a lot of scrambling for position. Yeah, it's not just parallel rotations. This parallel rotation is going to push them through teams that are already in the fields and... Attempted sends towards Impala, which is on the far east side. 17 Shabai is getting crashed by Danawa. They might actually want to commit to it now. So Luke's trying to go for the drive-by. Almost takes Shabai out, but Shabai survives with 14. Yeah, just barely not able to get Shabai. You can see the rest of 17 uh, driving at a compound not too far away. The real question here for Danawa is can they get rid of Shaobei and keep Sulu alive? No, here come the reinforcements, Suju and Chao DD. Soul trying to do something about it, but Soul there lost his balance for a second, and Onyx gonna be good for one. Shaobei with the sawed off gets Loki, and now it is one up here for Danawa. Just an Onyx, and he goes down. 17 gaming come in and wipe out Danawa. You can't really blame them too much. They had a lot of hard choices in front of them, but Danawa, yes, they do go out first. Third Eye were looking at that engagement, uh, wondering if they wanted to third party it, but instead, once it was so over and 17 really weren't that wounded. They just decided to take a, a more immediate path in, but now they're running in to Ascend, who have been coming in low and slow as they usually do here on the south side. Old list, Richie B, a little out in the open here. Mika might have the angle. Kiliakai as well, bearing down on top of Adam. Adam out in the open there and with a little bit of cover from that tree. Kiliakai going to hold tight. Of course, with that Mark 12 and you're prone, very easy to make that gun connect shots quickly and you can see third eye is just trying to rotate in towards Adam kill you guy now an open fire, finds a great timing that's one knock yeah a bit of damage onto that next third eye player as well waiting for the rest of them ascent to strike and day trade also in a bit of an engagement this is dead center of the zone this is where Cerberus and Luminosity was sort of posted up against each other in phase number one Sonic's also getting involved with the angles that they have towards the North Tickleton just waiting to deal more damage towards Norens and company yeah, Sonic's here in control of a a large compound right now. This is a tough one with even a four-man. 
uh, to really lock down. So if they can, though, a, a very powerful compound to work in and out of. So see if they can get it done. Tickleton going to find a little bit of damage into Nerns as he tries to get back behind the safety of that Bronco. And seems like for now, he's okay. Sonics, that compound, yes, easy to crash. They're protected by teams like Cerberus on the on the north. And so I think them dealing damage to day trade is sort of a, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. We're just going to stay alive together here because if Cerberus get removed from that position, then yeah, their, their compound is a bit more vulnerable. 17 rotating on the southwest. Got the revives pulling away. Uh, just finding a little bit of space to try and hold on to on the, the edge of La Bendita, but it's the edge of phase number two. They're likely, probably, most assuredly getting ready to continue to rotate as Third Eye are also having to wrap out in the blue because of that pressure from Ascent. It's actually not a hard shift. It's a, a central position, but that just makes Sonic's compound that much more valuable. Well, this gets this gets weird because the next circle has to remove as much land ratio terrain as it can, and the mountain by the Sonics is, I think, land ratio. If I remember right, I think like, it is. I think it could get weird here as now Third Eye sitting underneath Ascend, Twisted Minds coming in towards Howl. Ruin trying to back up Schofield, takes a headshot. Twisted Minds trying to breach through the defenses of Howl here. Ruin just scrambling to get upstairs, it looks like. Spyro with a great shot, going for another. Gets some damage, doesn't get the re-knock. Playing on the outside, but it's really good damage coming here from Howl. Lou is trying to break it onto the indoors and was able to make it work. And Navi also have an angle onto this, so no one's really coming out of this one alive. We see another fight down in the pit as well. Ascented Third Eye still can't get away from each other. Yeah, Perfectix and Spyro still alive for Twisted Minds, but Howl here up on the high ground in the second story. And that is gonna be third eye taken down by Ascend. Back over to this fight. Howell with Apocalypse on the cross here. He can kind of keep Twisted Minds pinned on this first floor as best as he can. And that could potentially give Howell a really good uh, set up for the situation. I mean, both teams ended up in this position because of that lane rusher under the Sonic's compound means that this is likely to be in the center of the next uh, circle. And But the fact that they're fighting each other means that no one's really going to be able to hold that well. And it's all just like Navi just third partying into that position. Grenade coming out. Apocalypse is going to go down. He was prone, but still not enough. Yeah, that's huge for Twisted Minds, for Perfectix. That's a free point as well. There's nothing Owl can do about that from the windows up in the top of this house. Ruin there with all that smoke in the way. Can't see any of the Twisted Minds players. Spyro here catches him right in the back. It's a backstab onto Ruin, and he is down. And now it is just Schofield trying to do something to recover. It looked like such a good fight for Howell, but now he's the only one alive. Dropping a smoke, he has the salt off for a push up to the high ground. And it is still only two members of Twisted Minds here, which means that unlikely to get pushed. They might just stay here as very, very unhappy neighbors, but Shrimzy with another knock on to Perfectix. Spyro going for the revive and Schofield recognizes this. Schofield has an opportunity, but only two shotgun bullets left and Spyro's just faster. Expecting the push, probably heard the footsteps and is going to take Schofield down. So Twisted Minds, what looked like a dire, dicey fight, turns out in their favor. And even though that compound is likely to remain really strong in this circle, Navi and Sonics aren't pushing it because they know that it's gonna be torn apart by each other with the cross over the open field. But Gen G, they don't have the same worries. They're coming in from an angle that they know is relatively free, so they're gonna be crashing onto this. The revive is gonna be coming through, but Perfectix, no time to go for the med kit just yet. Spiral gonna throw a grenade at the feet of Pio, and it catches him going up the stairs. Perfectly placed, might have even bounced up the stairs a bit. Pio still taking damage. Now another knock at Shao DD on to Taemin. Just Foxy alive for Gen G. They tried to time this crash, but they were a bit too late before Twisted Minds was able to recover and get utility back in hand. And there's nowhere Foxy can go right now. Everybody is watching these houses. I don't really blame Gen G because where else can they play on that north side? But they do get punished by all the other more healthy teams at range, but that hard shift to the northwest, Genji might have wished they stayed up in that air direction because look at Cerberus's immediate spread. Duckmai is actually taking that compound, but Navi, focus on this building. They're trying to follow up onto Twisted Minds into Genji. There we go, Perfectix with the Saiga, gets Example down, Example trying to scramble to safety. Should have that door covered, he's got another. Mel is down as well. Now Navi trying to be opportunistic, maybe paying the price. Taming still alive there for Gen G. They do lose Pio in the process. Spiral now trying to come through the door, opens the door, but Ali is ready with a pump of his own. This time around, it's not going so great. Perfectix is storming the barricades, and he's going to be shot down. It's going to be Uba alive. Here comes Foxy trying to finish the job. Oh! He can't do it. The drop shot, but fortunately, Taming is there. Oh boy, Uba almost pulling a rabbit out of that. Oh, still did a lot of damage, but no one else is going to be crashing that compound just yet. And here's going to be a fight of people trying to X 
Exit Impala. It's two teams, and Ascend might be trying to gatekeep. Ghibli under pressure from a couple different angles. Ascend and Tianba stuck in between them. It's Chris is going to flank out now as the circle did drift. Hard shifted up to the northwest. You expected it was going to go one way or another. This is the most popular compound in the circle by far. SDK, it's their turn to try to crack it. So far, it's been changing hands. Now Gen G's Foxy up top gets, it's Taman actually who gets that first knock. They're gonna immediately rush downstairs. Trying to see if they can catch SDK off guard. They're gonna get one, it's only Foxy alive. Vegas trying to outdo him, cannot. It's actually a, a Tiggleton who gets involved, but it's gonna be just barely SDK winning. SDK survive, I don't know how many of those revives are gonna be able to get because of the Sonic's angles that just dealt so much damage to them, but here Tiapa versus Ghibli. Forcing themselves in, Glass is down, Heaven taken very, very low, almost drops 77, but it's going to be Chris again, Ascend, just vulturing around this spot for the kills. Love the way Ascend is playing this. This is so smart right now, yeah. knowing that they have the better position on the edge of the circle. Gumin here for Ghibli, as good as Heaven was at salvaging points for Ghibli in game number one. Gumin can't really find any safety and gets taken down by Brexco. But now Tiamba knows is the last, at least one member of Ascent remaining, but they're just gonna take, get in their vehicles and send it on in. The two members of Ascent who are already at that rock face, not in a position to really contend that, and that's okay. I think they just wanna go for a little bit of safety now as we have 25 seconds left, but can these last two members of Ascent make their way through? Brex not even stopping for the final teammate because it is that dangerous, that much fire from Luminosity on the north. And at least the backside of this hill is still in, and you, if you can keep Tianba away from this, force them into the Sonics potentially, uh, but I don't know if Tiamba can even make that rotation, if they can change directions like that. I don't know if they'd want to, because if they try and push the Sonics, again, that's the, the high uh, north side teams of Cerberus and Luminosity with potential angles. Here, they're at least able to try and find some isolated angles. Longskirt just trying to go for a grenade, but Mika, Brexco, it's Chris, ready for it. Flashes come out. Yeah, there was a good knock there from Longskirt, but he's already pretty beat up. 55 health left. On the backside, 7-7, seven, seven, I believe might be in the blue. Indeed he is. And Pow Pow trying to see what he can do to break the lines here. It is going to be Kiliukai taken down by Longsker. Still, though, Ascend has a favorable position. They are in a firefight, though, with Luminosity yeah. way out on the other side of this. Luminosity can't stay here for long. That shift was a medium hard shift towards the north. Luminosity are going to have to contend against Cerberus at some point, but right now they can just try and pick up damage and pick up kills. They have no points on this round. Well, outside of the one placement from being at least seventh place. Long screen 77 actually pulling away from that angle because of that covering fire and instead might just have to look at the Sonic's compound, which is still in play, but maybe, maybe they can catch H-Wins building off guard and to get an initial uh, position inside. And now Longsker doesn't feel like he has any other choice than to try to get to the Sonics, and they're having none of it. Win gonna be good for that quick one. And Longskirt just uh, out in the open. Tianba there just left Pow Pow to die, sending 7-7 out to try and rotate through the fields, but I don't know where he's gonna find much success in this. Well, Brex going the opposite angle, actually gonna try and swoop on in front of the Sonics. Not taking the compound, just trying to go for center, but same question, where is there to play? There's that one little shack if Brex can get there. 77 trying to race, but a tire pops, forces a spin out. That's gonna be the final kill for STK. Chiambo are out, six teams remaining. 17 has a firing line on the western edge, and they are punishing any team that tries to go into those fields, and rightly so. It's everybody on the edges right now, since this is a field dead center. Rex is going to go down to Shao Bay. It's Chris and Mika trying to see what they can do to rock, lock down this rock up on the northeastern edge. But right behind them is Luminosity Gaming. This is going to be really, really tough for Ascend. Yeah, Ascend just didn't want to go for that shack. Or, I mean, it was only Brex and got taken out. And now they don't even have that other higher ground shack. It's Chris going to make that run up there while Luminosity are getting their vehicles because the blue is closing in. They lost their window opportunity here on the high ground and they instead of crashing Cerberus, might just be trying to crash onto where Ascend are. This is a nice dip, but they want to stay here. They, yeah, this is interesting. High Saki and Cerberus still have a bit of overview on this position because of that high ground. Mika as well, getting involved with that SKS. Emas trying to do what he can to put some more damage oh down through the smokes, and everybody is shooting into LG right now. What? Mime gets another knock. Why is Mime out there? I'm really playing like B.O. right now. I mean, it's a good angle. It's a good opportunity. Can't blame Luminosity for trying to take this spot, but they're just getting peppered by so many different angles. It was really their only safe play, but even then, it's just falling apart. Imaz just fishing, seeing if anything will reveal itself through that smoke. But so far, Luminosity 
able to somewhat stabilize. Love the love the play here from mine. Absolutely love this. Yeah. They, now Sonics can lock this down with fewer players. They can afford to go out for these points. Yeah, and now with this circle shift, hardship towards the east, Mime needs to play his life. Cannot go down because he's going to be the anchor that the rest of Sonics going to be playing around. Cerberus, SDK, 17. They're now going to have to leave their positions and make their way through the field. Grenade, not going to make its way towards Luminosity. And Mime back in the vehicle to push just a little bit forward again to just solidify that swing position, but no, he's actually going to group back up with the team. In fact, you know what? This compound's still in play. No need to give it up. Let's let everyone else fight it out first. Yeah, it's it's really good measured play here from the Sonics. Go for the points if they're there. Okay, they don't present themselves. Yeah, get back in and let's let's play as a team here. As there are some knocks onto SDK, they're going to have to make a move, and 17 is being patient and trying to harass the exits of SDK. SDK opting to go for the earlier uh, sort of land grab, whereas 17 is going to just try to work this edge for as long as they can. Uh, Vegas now going to be following on up. No time to revive Penta. And now Server is pushing on in. It's Chris at the ready, potentially with an angle to sort of follow up the Sonic's damage. It is kickstart with the first knock, so that just shows that Cerberus are now, they had the strong position. Now they are ducklings in this field. Oh, it's Chris just got a big double. And now Cerberus with high sack, he's so beaten up on that field, can't really help out. It is just on the boys at the bottom and they're done. They are in a lot of trouble right now as Cerberus just has high sack. He left Tycon is basically dead to rights. What a hold there. It's Chris completely unnoted in that shack by Cerberus, it feels like. And it was just a dry run to get up there, if you remember. In fact, it's even Mika on the opposite shack on the opposite angle. So Ascent just still playing this aggressive as if they were a full four-man squad. They're not giving up any room, any space to the stronger teams in terms of manpower. And this is huge for Luminosity because now there's a little bit of extra space for them. They don't have to worry about Cerberus kind of yeah. jockeying for these positions. It is going to be Xiaobei going down here as 17 eventually just opted to try to play edge, play for kills, uh, and see what they could get out of that. And look at SCK. They've actually been able to stabilize as well with the revives. They lose Penta, but with all the high ground being eliminated... Not so much covering fire over them. Same thing with Luminosity, but it is Sonics in the compound. They haven't had to do a lot of work, but they have six kills and they have four members up. So with the podium in front of us, they are the team to throw this away. And again, it's Mime expanding out first. Here we go. Mime going to make his way over to the back of the tractor. Alo just peeking in that direction, just seeing if there's any movement. May, you know, th this is good awareness here from SDK that that's a, a weaker angle because they can see the other side so well. Mime is actually going to grab Ooh. that Groza too. And that's that's, good. that gun has been so good for so many players, of course, throughout the entirety of PUBG's. And that's great for his position as well, trying to entry against SDK. But this circle shift is, uh, is not. It's another pretty hard shift towards the north. It's good for Mika and good for Chris, though. Chris is going to have to leave that high ground at some point. But hopefully he can do a little bit of damage onto those last teams beforehand. <laughs> and whoo, Chris just barely inside the circle as it is. Yeah, just, just enough room to squeeze on in there. And Chris... You know, obviously, I think LG knows he's in there, and they are going to be waiting with open arms for when he comes out, most likely. SDK going to try to wrap to the north, going to try to take one of these few pieces of real estate that's left Ooh. in there, but it's going to get some help from the Sonics. They do, H win just takes Mika out. Yeah, Mika wanted to deal uh, some damage to SDK, trying to defend that position, which would have been the right play, but unfortunately, revealing himself with only two up ascend, needed to perhaps try and unfortunately played a bit more conservative, which sucks though, because it means that they were likely to get surrounded anyway, but as it stands, it's only Chris up to s try and salvage one or two points while Luminosity, Sonics, and SDK are going to be fighting each other for the win. Well, it's Chris was able to get out of the shack, so step one complete. Now he's got to get into the circle somehow. The Sonic's trying to move. It's Chris. Takes a ton of damage when he tries to peek up over that rock. Sonic's going to fan out towards that hillside. H win on the backside going to be watching uh, from the anchor position just to make sure it's as safe as they can. And out the Sonics want to wipe LG out. Tons of damage to Relo. Flood so, so low. Diggleton finds the spray, gets the knock. Relo literally at about one HP here. Those grenades very likely to finish the job. Oh. The oh, they're still good enough. Nice throws. The double up is what did it. And now the three teams remaining. Sonics taking that position. Now H win now. Following up with the vehicle, he was playing on the long Overwatch spot, but it is no longer necessary because they have a wide hillside to fan out across. And with Chris eliminated, four versus three. SDK have been trying to fan out themselves, but the Sonics are just faster and they have better terrain to play with. And better weaponry, better armor right now. But Vegas Ooh. finds the opener onto H when you still have that level three gear, two pieces of it for the Sonics to play here. 
Shrimzy with that Mark 14. Trying to see if he can get any damage done to the Sonics. But now it's going to be another Groza. So we've got two Grozas floating around between these two teams. This should be potentially a banger finish. It should, but they're not really going to get close to each other without taking a lot of damage. Just look how open that center is. So at the moment, the DMRs are still going to be reigning across uh, this zone. Phase 8 is going to favor STK. So they're down a man, but they're up in positioning. Yeah, so now you've got some interesting choices to make here at Sonics. You have that rock up on the northern side. You try to flank around, use those trees and those whatever they are, those those weird looking... I call them pimento trees, but I don't think that's what they actually but, uh, are. You're yeah, the wrong guy. <laughs> Somebody told me once and now I can't remember. As, uh, the Sonics still have some vehicles to work with as well, so SDK trying to play defense. Tickleton taking a little bit of damage. Gonna have to rethink this. Let's see what they want to do. Yeah, it looks like Mime's gonna go for the rock. And he gets there. Oh! Just barely misses it, stalls a bit short, takes a lot of damage, and he's gonna have to prone behind a vehicle. That's a potential knock for STK, Ooh. but Shrimzy on to Vegas. That's the opener that Sonics needs. That's huge now, the Sonics. It's only a 2v4 at this point. H-Win gonna lead the charge, taking some damage. Purdy Curdy trying to do what he can to keep the Sonics at bay, but this gives him the opportunity to get to the hillside to get within grenade range, but Pert Kurt is really, really good at grenades himself, but he's been knocked to just a low left here. He's still got a Groza, still dangerous in his hands. a -Lo just gonna be watching up and over. The Sonics trying to wrap around, trying to close in. Groza sings, but it's a one versus four. He's gonna go through some big knocks here. Still can't quite, th quite find the first as Shrimsy tries to entry. Alo just prones down, but the utility is too much for Alo to bear, and it is going to be the Sonics taking game number three with a 13 kill chicken dinner. They got some good shifts in their favor in that compound. That is not, you cannot uh, lie about that, but they made it work. 13 kills, they won the game that they were supposed to win, so a really good response to Genji's back to backs. It's probably the most. One of the most effective holds of that compound I've ever seen. Uh, usually teams crash it, but we are going to crash into some highlights and then we'll go back to the desk. So stay tuned, everybody. Game four coming up soon. It's a Sonic boom as the Sonics use guile and positioning to take home a chicken dinner in game number three. And they did it with a ton of kills. You know, honestly, they got a compound. The circles definitely made life a little easier for a while, but then they got tested in those late phases. I gotta say the, the fun thing is that they tried to pull up the compound that mm -hmm. Vegas had in the very beginning. Yeah. The shoot to kill kind of played out for. So because it wasn't free and shoot to kill kind of reinforced that yeah. position, they ended up being in this one, right? And it's it's, uh, it's obviously a strong compound, as Paper pointed out as well. It's often a compound that gets crashed because yeah. it's very crashable. You have all these walls. It's it's pretty easy to, to get into a position where you can actually run uh, on it, but they managed to defend it. Yeah. And they did it with four guys live all the way through then, and that ended up being a huge kill game for them. Absolutely, it really was. So Sonics got pushed off that compound. STK, though, held the compound. Oh, yeah. They got out. Sonics maybe paid them back a little bit road. by covering a send or taking a send out yeah, as yeah. STK survived. but. They got to that final two. It was a very interesting sort of face-off at the end. Yeah. Uh, and it really, for me, it was you saw STK hunkered behind a shack trying to figure out how to use cover, and the Sonics were just driving in circles, almost like circling up the wagons, getting ready to make their move, and, and boy, did they do it. The amount of confidence you have when you have a Groza and an MK14 That's in the team, it is disgusting. So, yeah, and, and three gear to Budaville as well, of course. But well played. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Luna and City, they were in a, in a rougher spot. They, yeah. uh, they got into a situation where they had Cerberus still putting in so much damage yeah. into their cars, into the smokes, and they got multiple knocks. 
if there were three, four guys alive from from that position, they could have been different. But yeah, they got uh, they got pulled up on, and uh, yeah, Mime did some work on them too. I will give a shout out to somebody who is my personal man of the match. Though I know he's not going to win man of the match. It was it's Chris. Oh in yeah, that one. Not only did he ch cheekily hide from the blue in the most delightful yep, way, yep. but he was just raining death and destruction down on every team that tried to find a position in this untenable circle. So a big honorable mention, I guess, shout out to It's Chris as they end up with with third place. And a lot of that damage is going to go to him. Yeah, and the kills too. I think he ended on five or six yeah. kills for, for It's Chris. So that was well played by him. He managed to sneak out a few nades there too. Good amount of utility. 28 smokes on shoot to kill. Yeah. That is crazy. 1,300 damage only, but... Well played here by Sonics. 13 kills, that's 23 points in total from this game alone here, Tough. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. When that circle, when, when I think it was phase two pop, I look at Toby in the green when I said, this is an NA circle. <laughs> and it really ended up that way, but that's because all those teams drop sort of in that area, right, know right. how to play that area very well. And as you see the overhead here, it came down to that in the final four. Let's see them line up for that last fight. You see LG and Ascender on there, but they're not really in the mix. They both look like they were just surviving. Yeah, exactly, especially here. Like, even when the circle went north, Sonics can just move into such a strong position on this southern ridge here and just take them out completely here. Flood, obviously not able to do too much here from this situation. And yeah, just got to run away, but the points still went Sonics way and they're able to take down the Melody game completely from that angle there. They did really well, I gotta say, yeah, when you get into a... Uh, Get into top four and get some points that way, then it's pretty easy. But yeah, shoot to kill, taken down two, and 20, 23 points Ooh. for Sonics. Shrimsy gets oh four. Oh my god, that, almost two guys in a thousand, too. I know, it's insane. And a lot of that, too, came off the back of uh, that last push. When they squared off 4v4, right, right. Shrimsy had the MK14. He held off a really good angle on the right side of that shack. And that opening knock let the rest of his team sort of surge forward and run over STK. But that is awesome. I love seeing those numbers spread out across the entire team. Right, Everybody right. was active. Everybody was doing work. When Mime found himself isolated, Win rotated to support him. When he needed to come back, they did it together. It was very clean. But the man of the match goes to Shrimsy. Four kills, three knockouts, and a whopping 871 damage. I'll have to see my boy Shrimsy up here. He, because, like, when there's a situation where he's like, all right, I'm going to put in some damage. And yeah. with an MK14, that man is unstoppable. Also, yeah. you're happy. Your fantasy team yeah. is <laughs> reaping the rewards Absolutely. of this Sonics win here. I also love Shrizzy because he, he, if you meet him in person, he's a nice, wonderful guy. But he's often, I think, when he talk about big hitters in North America, in the shadow of Tiggleton on that team. It doesn't right, get right. as much be flowers as he deserves. So seeing him get that man of the match, seeing him play so well at this event For sure. has been great. Total kills, 22 to the Sonics. Total damage and the highest average survival time. The story up till now is Gen but Sonic seems to be trying to change that narrative. Almost four minutes, or well, three and a half minutes, more than three and a half minutes more average survival time. Of course, it's only three games. Three games. Man, see the ball here. A lot of teams, of course, reaping up in the top. We have three teams on eight points. Here. Cerberus, 17, and Twisted Minds. A lot of the names are going again here. Twisted Minds, 17 is done pretty well so far, too. They've mm -hmm. been able to get some. And now for this one, Gen G, only two. They're able to slow down a little bit. Halfway through the day, though, Tuffix. Yeah, halfway through the day. I like to see Twisted Minds has been... We haven't talked about them a lot because right, they're not right. in the top four as much, but they have been putting up some decent, consistent numbers. Let's look at the overall leaderboard and see exactly where everyone stands. Sonics takes over the lead off Ooh. the back of that win with 40 total points. Genji does slide to second, but it's not as far ahead as it used to be. 17 and Tiamba at 25 and 23. And as Cameron said before the last game, after that, it gets awfully close because it's right, only right. three, but we are playing 18. For those of you at home, we've added a full day of games to the grand final. So a good day one is nice, but it's not the stamp of approval that it was for the earlier stages. Uh, especially when we have these three days here. Like you need to have two good days yes. to be able to, to stick into the top four here. And your third day has to be above mediocre to win the whole thing. And it's uh, looking pretty rough for some of these teams, obviously, for, uh, for a rough start. But again, you can have a few bad games and you'll be fine. And you know, it goes back and forth. You saw Luminosity, they had a tough start to the day. They've been right, kind of grinding right. back up. Day Trade had a wonderful start to the day and a bit of a slide off in the last. So they, it really goes back and forth. You got to stay on top of it. And it becomes a grind, an endurance challenge for some of these teams when we're doing six a day. Another team does have a rough start. Mm -hmm. Navi, they yes. had an insane winner's bracket. But now 13 points after three games. That's a low average even for them. Absolutely. Another team that's struggling right now, Howl. I don't know what happens. Maybe their stealth generators ran out of of, of gas, <laughs> but they're not point. getting points. The rotations haven't worked. They worked well in groups. Right. They're not really working here. Twisted Minds, we saw Botulin at the start of the day today, asked if he was excited, if he's looking forward to it. He said, I'm going to wreck them all. Yeah, and honestly, that's, uh, that's the 
That's the spirit I want from him. He, yeah. he, like, he's going to go up in the high grounds and he's going to wreak havoc. Absolutely. Well, it's time for everyone to get up into the high ground, see if they can get the win. We're heading to the lush lands of Erangel next with the beautiful voices of the Cami D and Paper Thin. Thank you very much from the Argonauts of Analysis over there, Toffee and Avenger. And uh, as we go into Erangel, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this starts to shape out. I mean, Gen G with two wins, you yeah. think coming into match four, they should be in the lead, but no. The Sonics have just been overall the more consistent team today. Yeah, I mean, guys, if you remember, even Gen G had one of their wins with only four kills. Right. So definitely not the strongest points grab there, even though obviously put themselves in, in still a good spot, not to take away from them, but that is just a, such a, a good match in terms of points for Sonics, as well as performance. But like, as far as we're concerned, the points to put themselves in first place. Absolutely. An exciting Ooh, look battle. At that, look at DG98. Ooh, I oh, like boy. it. Oh, he Run. dabbed it on the competition. That's right. He should be. I mean, that's a hell of a day so far. As Genji is going to be going to the southern part of the military base. Plane is, of course, just straight, almost straight down the middle. Pretty close with a little bit of a lean to it. But yeah. Ascend going to be heading over in the Novo direction. Sonic's, of course, going to be going to the Ferry Pier for this, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, uh, no one should be going to all drops. This is not like the best playing path for everyone, but it's pretty close. I suppose Chiamba might be the only team that goes somewhere else, but uh, they seem to be going towards South Georgia as well. So yeah, everything is gravy. Yeah, should be a relatively stable part of the early game here. We'll see though, you never know. Sometimes teams run into each other and do weird stuff. It's like every time I say that, then something, something crazy happens. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, this looks fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I have my eyes focused so much on where these parachutes are dropping, waiting for a vehicle kill. 17 aren't spreading out to ruins to steal a vehicle from Tristan Mines, but what a phase one. It was a normal plane path, normal drop locations. Of course, the circle has to, to throw its chaos into the mix. Yeah, well, I guess it wouldn't be a, a PGS circle without uh, the potential of getting one of those insane 50-50s across the channel Yeah, uh, that sits between Sosnovka Island and the mainland of Erangel. LG is going to be drifting in the direction of Milta Power and uh, should be okay to get there. As far as I can see, there should be no problems, assuming they don't goof up with this U.S. Yeah, I mean, oh, it, is, cut it, short. it is four deep, but they're good. No one's in okay, front of them. Okay. They're just going to the road. Yeah, the only risk was like tumbling down that hill, but they made it to the road, so it should be good for them. Third Eye as well, going to Lepovka. Yeah, no issues at all. No one's going to get caught out in rotation. I think, though, with the circle like this, people are going to be trying to find opportunities to do just that. And actually, this is an early, early bridge camp. This isn't even the East Bridge, which is the most likely bridge to stay in a Phase 2 50-50. It's the West Bridge waiting for Sonics, waiting for Day Trade. This is really interesting from Gen.G. Think about the scoreboard right now. Think about the teams that are there, the positions. Gen.G yeah. wants to reclaim the first place position, so they're going to bridge camp. This early in the event, this certainly may catch the Sonics off guard. I don't think you'd expect Gen G to do this. They're not a team. Yeah. That they, they pull these moves out every once in a while or they do, do these kind of kind of things, but it's often at an unexpected moment. Yeah, and unless you're prepared for it, unless you know that they've done it in the past, Gen G as a team who try and avoid early combat, you wouldn't expect it at all. In fact, Sonics are just sending it across. I'm sure they're looking for the potential, but it's not going to be with the same level of scrutiny. Here we go. Boxy with the pre-grenade, the spray on the Shrimji, that's one. Can he get the follow-up? The grenade doesn't hit the car with two. And now the crossfire comes down. taming has got two more. Mime here trying to do what he can. He has to get out of dodge. There is no hope for him except to escape at this point. Trying to get back to his teammates. Oh. Trying to see what he can do. Shrimzy. There's going to be Tiggleton now. He was picked up and let's see if they can do anything about this. Foxy putting some shots in, but this is pretty much mission accomplished here for Gen G. Frag grenade out the ready, just to try and catch Taman off guard, but h win should be communicate. Okay, he's actually just flushing his own, his own teammate, I think. I don't know if there was a communication there or not, but there was an up, a potential window for the revive. I think that was just a bit of a mistake uh, in terms of just the distance. Like, yeah. But you, th at that point, like, Tickleton has to win this fight bef with Gen G before he can finish off h win and maybe it was like an expected attempt at a flush. 
from Gen G as well. Like you might be able to catch them coming around the, you know, yeah, the angles. Yeah, I assume that's what the attempt was. Heyman was in the vehicle, but then you turned around, backed away. I thought maybe there was an opening there. Gen G did the damage, but they didn't want to ruin the rest of their game. In fact, Foxy is already on the move, grouping up with uh, D DG98, who's already holding center of the zone. So yeah, this isn't even a full commit onto the bridge camp. They dealt the damage, then they're leaving. Yeah, think about the message that sends. Yes. To Sonics and to the rest of the lobby. Yeah, this is. Big Gen G energy, for sure. And now 17 are coming to the exact same bridge where Sonics are still trying to stabilize here. So for the team that has just been waiting for to take a fight with the Sonics, this might be the opportunity to finish them off for at least this round. Let's see if they can do that. Howell, this is the Eastern Bridge. The Western Bridge, I can see 17 potentially thinking about crossing. The other thing this does is it forces the Sonics into a really uncomfortable spot where now they have to maybe fight other teams that come across the bridge. And sure, they might be able to get points out of it, but with only two players, and kind of scrambling to figure themselves out. This could be tricky, but it looks like they're just gonna hide. They're not gonna try to involve themselves in any engagements. It depends on if 17 try and go to the hilltop that Tickleton is holding on to. It looks like they're going in a similar direction. Tickleton back in a way, and 17 are not pushing it. Shout out to D with a little bit of a trip, a little trip on the rock, but stumbles, but is still able to drive on through, and 17 making their way past I'm sure that they were looking for a lone Sonics player, but they're not going to go sending out the full search party. Yeah, you, you can't write, write just now. Yeah. Kili Kai, this is a San who again, went towards the Nova direction. So, I mean, there's a great way out in the water, Kili Kai. You want to go for it? It's approximately 600 meters out there. So, yeah, you know, good luck with that. If you want to go, I'm just... <laughs> that's why I th that's the only thing I can, like, think of, like, what he's... No, I mean, obviously he's looting, but... Yeah. I thought, well, maybe he's thinking about it. If there's a boat, you know. There's a boat. You know, it just takes a couple minutes to get out there and back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what's the rest of the game? You got a Groza. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. If you get a Groza on Mark 14, it's so worth. Yeah. Boatation. Imagine if Tommy guns were still in crates. Oh, God. That was the worst. That really was the worst. Like, you wouldn't even know if you were, you weren't even guaranteed anything good from a crate if you tried to send towards it. I mean, at least now, like, most of the guns in the crates are pretty decent. Yeah, they're all good. I'm trying to imagine one that's not. I can't think of one. Sometimes players don't like the AUG. I, I assume this is the ferry. Yeah, okay. I assume it's, yeah, okay. Here we are. Just, I was... <laughs> just, needed to, just needed to, you know, warp into a... This, Chris Angel! Into this version of reality. <laughs> the mind freak. Mind freak. <laughs> Your mind got freak. <laughs> it works so well because they're twisted minds. Yeah, too. see, oh, exactly. Dude. Oh, I Your love that. Your mind gets twisted. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Plus five Cami D points today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Did I get a gold star yet? Well, you're close. Okay. You're doing pretty good. You had the, the flu DD earlier. All right. And now I, okay, I want to give credit where it's due. That was a Toby invention in the green room. Ah, okay, okay. Then the Toby gets half a we'll gold split. Star. I'll split it with him. All right. Tiamba is going to be the latest, one of the latest rotating teams. So SDK is still chilling north of Yaz, but... Typical of South yeah. George teams that they, they take their time. And Severny teams, the, the, the further north you are, it's not even, I mean, again, we talk about this all the time, but the further away you are, that almost exponentially increases the amount of time that you spend looting in, until you come into the zone, because you're going to be late. Might as well have with as much gear as possible. Mel is going to see this boat, and he's going to see cars and players Shh, going for those tires. It's tricky. That, that boat chugs. That ferry cruises. Yeah. Very fast, unable to find even, I'm sure he landed one or two shots, but wasn't able to pop a tire just yet. So Tissa Mine still able to use vehicles once they get on inside. Day trade as well, also arriving on the south end. And Sonics are here, at least what remains of the Sonics, but they're on two separate positions. I don't think they'd be really looking for a fight at the moment. No, I, I would assume that the Sonics are now just going to hide at the edge of the map and, and wait this out as long as they can. More teams are going to start seeing Twisted Minds. Now, these shots, I'm not sure if they're close enough for LG, who is waiting in Novo currently, to hear mm. that there's something going on. Now, even if they could, you have to assume it's people trying to cross the bridge, not at the ferry. So I'm going to be really curious to see what happens in Novo. They should know that the ferry is arriving and always uh, aware of the potential of someone crossing through. Like, SDK use the ferry all the time in the North American region, so um, definitely should be on the back of their mind. Cerberus now crossing on through. Tiamba rotating inside they are coming in through quarry and there is still dano on the north side of that west bridge so there might be a fight there and oh tickleton no i like tickleton wants to get some points finds an opportunistic drop and with the frag grenade should be a kill confirmed what does daytray do to respond yeah belmont there just able to scooch far enough away from that frag 
Tickled it out in the open, does finally connect, gets the flush, but he's gonna pay the price. It's gonna be Nerns and Puchils combining to get the knock and the finish. And I even see a VSS floating out there for Flash. I don't know what's going on. Day trades loot, just not ideal for sure. Probably opted to rotate early. Donawa yeah. is pulling away from this Tiamba fight you talked about a second ago. Pushing on in, don't want, uh, or they actually just could be getting in front of the bridge to commit to this fight. Lin Chu's gonna stop a little bit short. Get eyes on that rotation. Soul is already on the bridge itself, but I, I, this might just be a double down onto the camp. It all depends on where the next circle is because we have 10 seconds for phase number two. Ump VSS. That is a that is a combo for sure for Flash. Maybe you can find an upgrade. Tycon watching the bridge here. Loki on the motorcycle. Not the easiest of targets necessarily. Loki might have just gotten away, but the problem for Donawa is in Nonix, tripped and fell. And it's not a hard shift, but it is a bridge circle. So it's still a pretty rough shift on phase number two here. Cerberus likely going to be backing away from this one. Danawa just going to slide on through. Chiamba could stay on the north side and try and go to the east bridge, but that's already contested with the, th with the three teams who have yet to cross. Howell now trying to find a central position on this hillside, leaving the bridge. They don't want to get caught up in all of that because this is likely to remain on Military Island, but going a bit too far could be getting into trouble with Ghibli there. I feel like I need to come up with like a new type of syndrome for these ty for the way these circles have been going. Like now I'm just like used to these like really bad shifts. Where I'm just like, oh yeah, that's just what circles do, yeah. right? Like I think I'm gonna call it PGS syndrome. Yeah, it's just like this is how circles operate. It's just hard shifts everywhere. PUBG Global syndrome. <laughs> it's PGS. It's already we love the acronyms here. That's right. We'll double down on it. We'll confuse you by you not knowing which one we're talking about. It's it's literally like we're in the military or something. It's just acronyms everywhere. All right, mime is gonna be flirting with Ghibli, but seems like he is not interested to commit just yet. Oh, 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 what a shot from Glass! Oh! Right as that vehicle is trying to stabilize, Glass with the car 98 finds the head of Mime. You love to see that. Can't even get mad, Mime. There was all chat, you just you type again, NS. Nice so next, I mean, they were just gonna try and salvage whatever they could. Tokushin got one point, but that bridge camp was too much, too hot to handle. Ascend and Twisted Minds here. They've been sort of toying around with each other, as we've seen. Uh, Luminosity not far from this as well, but it really just depends. I, I ooh, The way that everyone's prone down, I imagine both teams know that they're amongst each other. Matulans can get up and go grab a cup of coffee while he waits in that little <laughs> cove yeah. that he's found for himself. Only, only Batulans. Ooh, the knock from Brex, though. He found the, the shot onto Perfectix from up on top. The rest of Ascend coming in now. Perfectix. In trouble. The rest of but Twisted Mind springs to life. Batulins gets the kill on Namika. Kill your Kai down as well. So Perfectix knock was just a bait. It was all a ruse. And Twisted Minds is gonna find a couple points. Lou back in away, gonna be smoking off because oh man, what Spyro actually knocks his own teammate. That's gonna give Rex an opportunity with the kill, or at least the knock on to Lou. That means Twisted Minds only has one up. Oh, this looked so good momentarily for Twisted Minds. This fight seesaws back and forth. Brex takes a bunch of damage, trying to lob a grenade in. If That's it's good. on point, it's really good for Brex. Bounces off the car and back into Twisted Minds. They lost a few members, but Ascend hold on to this high ground. Luminosity has been third partying this. Ghibli also, I think, looking at the angles with the few small tight angles that they have, and then Day Trade rotating in from the south side. I don't know if Day Trade will have been reading that kill feed knowing exactly what was happening at that position. But if they continue to push forward, they could steal a sense spot from them. I like that. I, I, I really would like to see day trade start trying to contest the top of that mountain like you're talking about. Would love to see it. Donawa finds the C block. They were able to recover and Onyx did not lose Loki. So, so far uh, flirting with a little bit of disaster was Donawa, but they are able to duck underneath. Now SDK banned out by LG. Third Eye, chilling on the bridge, assuming that this is going to go that way. I mean, if it's PGS, right? It should go north, yeah. right? Right? Ah. Da, boo, boring. Boo. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Boo. Hey, this is good for a center. They're able to stabilize despite only having two. They still have a good high ground for information. Unless, of course, they get pushed by Day Trade. But Ghibli with the crossroads. Really strong position. 4 a.m. strong position. Luminosity versus STK. That's going to be a fight that could contend for another uh, strong spot here. But everyone else on the west side, it's quite populated. So no real attempts at control. Uh, or very reasonable there, but Danawa sending in to Cerberus. Little ghost on the backside. This is dangerous. Donawa now going to just cut to the right, trying to avoid Cerberus, and they have done so, but it could be 
out of one bad situation and into another. They have the hillside, yes, but Howell has control over the compound, and they may have to just settle for underneath to take a moment to heal. Soul was one shot away from being knocked, and the rest of Donovan now going to circle the wagons and see if they can figure something out. Ooh, Glass, I think, is just missing an angle there. Can't quite tag Loki. Seeing if we can't send one just through that window. But yeah, they're they're waiting to waiting and ready to pounce on Danawa if they continue to push forward. Danawa right now, they might just be sitting here in, in this low ground. Because if they push up in either direction, they're going to Cerberus, Howell, or Ghibli. I'd be actually super curious if Glaz could maybe arc a bullet to take a tire out. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but it would be kind of kind of curious because because at the end of the car 98's range it does start to drop pretty yeah. quick, uh, so I don't know. Uh, but it's just something that kind of just came across my PUBG science brain. So I was thinking Tiamba has tons of space again. They've been eating blue for some time, but again, but that's I see every South Georgia team play yeah. military circles like this. Well, not every, but most. Yeah, I mean it's such a it's such a strong position and free if you get there if you drop on the spot. Tiamba finally into the zone from the blue. They've had to play so slow because they were coming in last. But Third Eye, they're the team that still needs to cross over. I don't know if they were hoping for a shift to the north, or they weren't playing for it, but they're certainly hoping for it. But now they're going to have to go through 4 a.m. who know that they're soul driving out in the open. Tried to make a break from that low ground weak position, but instead just going to give their life up. It's going to be Mel with the steal. He gave his car back, though. Yeah, hey. <laughs> 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 Salute's like trying to run to it. That's kind of dangerous with Glass with that bolt. And Oblis now uh, with 4 a.m. Might be uh, having, a, having a scrape over this Ooh. bridge. See, if Third Eye are re can read this properly, they can just go on foot. And 4 a.m. won't have the um, prior information of the sound cues to run out on the bridge to just like kneecap them. And they could just clear those um, catwalks. Uh, for free, perhaps try and find a, an early knock and kill on, on to 4 a.m. But we'll see what happens there. They're not going to push the matter just yet because we still have phase four. Third Eye are in on that bridge. Everyone is just staying put for now. Trying to use old list to get information for Third Eye. Of course, it's phase four, so it has to remove as much water as possible. Yep. And it will head down towards the south. Centered right on top of Howell and Donawa there. So Donawa is in a tricky spot because a lot of teams are going to be contesting this territory. It, Sooner rather than later. We're we waiting for Third Eye. They, they know that they're there. They haven't heard the vehicles. They got to be crossing somehow. But 17, west side, a nice little fan out. They got the breakthrough Cerberus, who have been all col um, collecting into a singular point. And then, of course, there's Gen G still fan out on the south side. Hey, 4 a.m. Third Eye. They finally spot each other. Yeah, you can see trying to shoot through the grates. Shao Lu able to find a little bit, but Oldest, as they did OWM, looking for the timing. Can't quite get it, and Shaolu is going to back him off at least for now. 4 a.m. now trying to find some more angles over towards Navi and Ghibli. Navi pushing in, finding some good cover, backfilling Ghibli, giving up space, and condensing their own control of the northeast side now. It's Chris with still just shooting from the high ground, drop salute. The revive, I'm sure, is, is there for Danawa, but again, it just shows how vulnerable of a position the Korean team is in. Yeah, that, it's an extremely difficult position to play for Donawa. The grenade is close to Shao Hai. Takes 42 damage, able to back off enough. The grenade to buy a little bit of space. Ooh. The push from the other side. So far, I'm liking this from Third Eye. A 2-2 split here. Trying to just pinch 4 a.m. inside. A headshot onto Summer. Takes him down super low. The grenade to follow. Will it get the knock? No, those aren't frags. Those are some smokes and other things that are coming in there. So, so far, 4 a.m. hasn't been taken down. It was a lot of good damage to perhaps tr uh, uh, force the opening for Third Eye on the push, but just not taking the window, and it would have been a risky push either way, so that's not necessarily a criticism of Third Eye, but the heals have gone through. 4 a.m. are back up to full, and a great grenade from Zhao Hai is finally going to get a knock while it's Richie B there on the top side. Oof. Another good grenade. That's two down for Third Eye, so the patience and the better placement of utility for 4 a.m. is profiting is allowing them to profit from this fight. Shao Hai is going to come up and confirm the flushes. Shao Lun out trying to find Adam, you know, third eye here, just trying to get any player across to safety yeah. that they can. Yeah, uh, with the blue coming in, and 4AM are aware of it. They've also started to spread themselves uh, below the bridge even before Adam's send, but Lou's going to find the angle. Good spray. Gets that headshot. But Luminosity versus Chiamba, this is happening on the east side as they're approaching on in. Yeah, it's a couple kills already on a Tianba. Longsker and 7-7 seven, seven 
down and out, so it's up to Pow Pow and Linshu. Try to figure out something. Now LG a little bit further up the hill than the Twisted Minds graveyard. Over to 17 and Zerberus. This is a full on fight here. You have got the heavy forces, but already one down for 17. And they are trying to back off of this. Grenades are starting to ring. Shao Didi out in the blue, done and dusted. Little Ghost, Suju, and others trying to just get out of here. Circle continues to center on up. Good for Howl, and it's survivable for Dano at the moment. Everyone is still fighting it through the field. Server is still dealing damage to 17. Little Ghost goes down, but Suju with a really nice frag grenade onto Genji, who's on the opposite side of things. They're fighting through thick and thin, and it seems to be Server is that's surviving the best for now. Genji trying to third party this, trying to get some more points. I like the aggression. I like the timing here from Genji. Just couldn't quite execute. DG likely going to be raised here as uh, you have Taemin is the, the lone isolated player for Genji this go around for this fight. Opting to try to bring Pio in. See if he can do some damage for him. Going to be swinging west towards Cerberus. They know the fight's active and everyone's wounded, some more than others. But now the third eye are gone, they gotta get into the zone. They're not gonna full commit to this fight, they instead they're gonna try and just swing in front of it, but Zhao Hai going down to Na'Vi. Means that their angles of approach aren't that great, but Na'Vi, they're opening up on the entirety of this hillside. Yeah, they can see the back end of this. Tycon able to get Xiao Bei, the kill feed lighting up with various players. Now Tycon down, he must with a sliver of health left. And he is going to get taken out by Tycon's grenade, actually. Tycon had a grenade in hand. So now 4 a.m. versus 17. 4 a.m. knows they have 17 beat up. Summer trying to see if he can finish the job. But Xiao Bei going down to the blue little ghost. Quick to follow. 4 a.m. is six kills, but only Summer alive. Yeah, not even going to go for the revive, perhaps. Yeah, no, he's going to send it on. And then the blue is coming in. Going to be dealing way too much damage. And Na'Vi are on the prowl. Summer's going to have to try and survive this some way, somehow. But Na'Vi are not going to be giving up this position. It's a free hold. It's a free spread out. Ghibli have yet to really try and backfill that spot. Though it is happening for now. 4AM does go out. 10 teams remaining. STK now trying to push on in. Dealing more damage to Luminosity that Tiamba just couldn't. Got a grenade. Great angle for these grenades. Relo even taking a headshot and then the knock from Vegas. SDK, good openers in this fight. Has LG completely on the back foot. And they are going to make their way down this road. But this road gets exposed once you turn a corner. Trees and some vehicles for cover. Kickstart momentarily stopping to try to find some safety. Gen G in the meanwhile is under pressure here from Donawa. Man, Luminosity to go out. They just weren't able to solidify their position because of the STK push. Good timing on that for STK. But now Danawa defending against Gen G. PO is down. It's still the rest of Gen G up to try and push off of the back of it. But how long until Na'Vi really flex over that high ground and, and get even more angles onto this valley? And Tami knows that Day Trade is back here. He just spotted one. Nuren's going to take. A splash of damage from Taming there. Flash still sitting on an ump. I don't know what is going on with Flash uh, in this particular game that he still hasn't been able to upgrade off that ump, but maybe he just feels like it's a good gun yeah. for, for this day. I'm not sure. Don't count the SMGs out. They're good in the right hands if you know how to use it. Example, knock on to Heaven. Chris gets a knock on to Kurt. So if SDK wasn't aware of a sense position on the high ground of that Mountain, they do now, and Kurt's out in the blue, so that's not going to be a revive. The circle is going to swing down to the south. Howl haven't really been activated too much so far, but now that they are controlling a big, wide plateau, whether they can defend it is, I guess, up for debate, but they're certainly going to be defenders of the castle. Uh, you just mentioned it. It's tough, and Lin Shu's knock may Ooh. make it even tougher. Now, yeah. Donawa has a tough... A tough Road ahead of them, quite literally, as Ghibli and Navi are out there. A great grenade from Flash lands right on top of Taming. He is knocked. The rest of Gen G now starting to turn their attention to the south. Flash gonna line up with another one. Can he find it? Just 27 damage from that on to Pio. Some stuns, another thing out. Foxy trying to get an angle down on top of Day Trade, making his way through. He's gonna see Nurins. The spray isn't good. He doesn't have a red dot. It's just the iron sights there. DG trying to come in and reinforce. His taming did get flushed by the Molly. Flash gonna use the UMP, dealing more damage up close range. The fire ran on that thing is. Pretty good, pretty good. And Genji, they're still making sure that no one can uh, spot them from the top side, waiting for Na'Vi, but it's actually gonna be Day Trade that are backing away from this one. The blue is pushing in. And so they know that they just need to wait for the terrain to be advantageous for them. Nurin's just kind of trying to keep Genji off of their backs, doing a decent job of it. Now they've got to try to get into Howl territory. 
is what it's looking like they're going to do. Ghibli is not going to head towards Donawa. Genji is rotating back into this direction. Not sure what the the grenade situation is like for them. Ooh, Navi also finding themselves across the road. A good angle for them. It's actually going to be uh, pressure on the north side of Donawa. I was going to say Gen.G might not be aware of Donawa's approach making their way this close, but I mean, they're shooting shots at each other, so they certainly know now. But Navi on the north side, Donawa need to push down onto the south. But look at DG98. He's got to win this fight against Loki. This one's tough for both teams. Whoever wins this top fight, certainly going to have an advantage. Loki there. Not able to connect with his barrel, but there's an instant trade for Anonix and Foxy. Salute now, trying to back up Anonix. Loki up and over the top, gonna be bearing down onto Genji's position. Navi's hot to trot. They wanna get on the back side of this, and they are starting to tear Donawa apart. It's only Loki on the north side, on the high ground. Catches Pio off. Genji are eliminated in ninth place, but Loki, how many more points can he get? It's not even Navi, it's Day Trade that are capitalizing on the wounded Korean teams, but Norens gets knocked by Schofield, gets confirmed as well. So now Flash, only angle he can go is into Navi. Yeah, Flash with an ump versus Navi. I don't think that's going to go good. Yeah, it did not. This example is going to get the kill with the Groza here, and now Navi with eight kills, having their best game of the day. Can they make it even better? Can they go for the win right now? It is still Howell holding uh, that command center and ascend on the high ground, picking up a bunch of kills, getting down from this position, especially with this shift, will not be easy. There is an angle for Brex, but they're just going to get Pepper on the way down from Ghibli and maybe even Howell. It's Chris. He's going to deal with Lin Shu, so just pow pow alive as Lin Shu is easily flushed from that angle. Ghibli still four up in this, still a role to play. Howell, Navi as well at full strength. So a lot of teams uh, could come out of this very, very well if they can find a good fight. It's going to be tough here though, Cammy. Like this part of the circle is pretty weird. There yeah. is a decent amount of like open space in it. A few uh, structures here and there, a few trees, uh, but it's actually pretty flat ground. Yeah, if they have smokes, Ghibli and Navi especially, they can get into the hard cover that is held by Howell but they're going to need to have the smokes and just hope they don't get shot on that run. And then with a circle like this going towards the east, that's not even valuable. So it's actually Ghibli's position that I'm starting to favor. It's not... They don't have a long area of control, but they have some good angles. Ascend <laughs> with the vehicle send. They got out, thought that they could just land on the lip, but they're going to go down. Look at the top four. Listen, they had to get down somehow. Might as well make a show of it. And hey, Brex doesn't give the point over to anybody. He, he just... He, he, he just died himself. All right, Ghibli has to turn their attention over toward, towards Navi. They can't push forward because of that flat ground. They have to try to find safety in some other manner. Grenades are going to splash out, but Navi is nowhere near those lines. But that's going to alert Navi to Ghibli's push. The second round of grenades still coming up short here. So Ghibli completely misjudging oh. until then. Oh, that, Navi's position. That one's not short. It forces Mel away. And now Glad's going to take that opportunity to push forward with the vehicle. It has a little bit of a tree. It's all about blocking the angles from half. Owl, but they haven't yet been punished for it. Yeah, let's see if Ghibli can put the pressure on Tanavi. Now it's Howell as well, the mad out front, putting the pressure on to Ghibli. So this is what's tough about this fight for Ghibli. That Molly just a bit too far for Navi, but now the stuns are out, the grenades are coming, here comes the full force of Navi, the first grenade is good, on to Glass, he has been knocked by Alia, Uba on the flank, trying to push around, Apocalypse getting involved, Gumen down, just two up for Ghibli right now, and now Schofield getting in here, helping out Ghibli a little bit, Heaven getting the knock on to Uba, Example trying to do something, Alia gonna get a knock here, but Heaven able to find two, Tosi the last one alive. One versus two, popping a flash out to go for the peak, and Melo's nowhere near here. Howell isn't allowing this to be a clean 2v1 push. Tosi gets another knock, but down to 2 HP. Oh, the grenade from Ruin is going to finish off Mel. Navi is gone. Ghibli's Tosi still alive. Apocalypse hunting for him with the DBS. Hasn't seen him just yet. And this game, it is going to have to be a miracle for Ghibli. See if they've got any of that magic inside him. Any of that Ghibli magic. Apocalypse around the side. The first on the ruin can't find the knock here. And now from the backside, the DBS at range is going to finally find its mark. And Howell is going to get a seven kill chicken dinner. Playing with the food a little bit, using the shotgun, the, the DBS at that range. But four versus one, it was only a matter of time. Just playing for the peaks, playing for the angles, playing for the trades. And Howell, seven kills. It's pretty low. 
But with that position that they had, there really wasn't too many opportunities for them uh, to get involved earlier on. And hey, they got the win now. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right, guys. We are going to look at some highlights, and then it'll be the deaths. Can don't go anywhere. Congratulations to Howl as they wolf down a pack of points and get themselves a chicken dinner. Now, we talked about them at the end of the last game and said, hey, they're not really doing great. They had one point to their name going into game four, but boy, did that change. Yeah, for sure. We were joking around, how can they maybe do and pop in a little bit more yeah. kills, you know, get uh, something like four or five out of this one, but they managed to clutch it out. And it was basically because Ghibli and Navi, they assured mutual destruction upon each other. Yeah. That was a really rough one, but Heaven opened up. And again, Heaven's day has been insane. But yeah, I was really looking at the the, the, the rough push that they had each other. It, yeah. There was nobody that had a benefit. They just had to send it in. And that's why we saw, uh, yeah, it happened like it did, where it was only Tozy and in the end. I mean, the spot was tough. It was so it was. tough that Ascend had to resort to descending in a car and <laughs> hoping it would work. It didn't. But, you know, what else can you do at that point? And Hal just really had a good control over the whole plateau. They waited till those other teams fought. For sure. And they were able to close that down and get themselves some points. Now, I worry this is a once in a full moon sort of scenario for Howell. And uh, maybe we'll have trouble doing it again because that was just a really, really convenient circle. They played it well, but you can't count on that every single time. No, for sure. And, of course, you have to take these home turf circles or, like, take these circles that comes to you and you have to get the most out of it. They did. They got more kills than yeah. I kind of expected. They were... You have to be passive in this kind. You want to you make sure you get four guys live out to the end game. But I don't think they expect it to be one guy left and they can just push out easily with a DPS or Saiga or anything like that. But yeah, it, end, it ended up quite easily. Speaking of unexpected, something I didn't expect was Gen G. They made that quick oh, yeah. move to the bridge and they set up a high ground trap for the Sonics. And right behind them, the 17, all of our top three teams were lumping themselves across that bridge. Yeah. What'd you think of that Gen G trap? I gotta say that I love traps like that. Okay. You know, it's, it's smart in a way, but it didn't get much more points out oh. of it. And that's the one, like, if you wanna, you want to take on somebody one-to-one -one like yeah. that and, and a team, you want to single them out, it's because you're they're the only one right. um, they're the only one chasing you. If you're like, let's say you're one and two and you're like 30 or 40 points ahead, but this, they're just making sure that none yeah. of them are getting too many points, right? Uh, so interesting game. It's always military games like this that's going to be it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, Navi's play, how they're kind of sweeping the Northwestern edge where we're quite on the Kind of nice to see. Give them minutes to sort of survive for way longer than I expected them to. But then this northern push here, they had Ooh. like two meters, three meters of yep. bridges to Burr. play. And then, of course, the send, sending it down, full send, uh, straight down to the top five. But they got some points from up on the high ground. Oh, yeah, that's sure. what those, you take that risk reward position. If it had shifted the other way, they would have been absolutely dominant. Here we get Heaven. He has oh been playing God. absolutely wild. Uba and him sort of went head to head. And I feel like Heaven's been coming up spades in those fights versus Navi. Yeah, really impressive here. Tosi can't do too much. You have to for basically just four guys sending it towards you. Seven kills, so I gotta say 17 yeah. points total. They were on one before this one here. So it's obviously a huge setup for them. They're able to <laughs> jump into our mid pack, that ever growing mid pack. Mad really didn't even show up during that match. That's the, like so few not kills. Even, not even for right. the pictures on media day show. Exactly, up. but I will give a shout out to Apocalypse. He's gonna get the man of the match. And now this is a the coach. The coach. 10,000 if you play fantasy. Dirt oh, yeah. cheap, great to bolster out the roster. But I like that. He played strong. He played. He, he had a smart move to make the push onto Navi right. in that fight uh, and got in there first to get those kills. 423 damage and some good knocks. And a uh, shout out to Laza home. Hopefully you recover well from your yeah. surgery, of course. And everything goes well with you, my friend. I did, cannot say that better myself.
Uh, but if you are going to have someone stand in, this is a great chance to oh, do yeah, it. Oh, yeah, for sure. You Super know, and, experienced. Played in PCSs last year like this guy. Mm -hmm. If you're able to get a coach like that, you, you have to take it every single time. And honestly, one of the things I love about them is their attitude. How came to this event, they've been super friendly getting to know oh, yeah. everybody handing out turkish delights to almost every team to yep. i thought they were just bribing us but it turns out every team was given chocolates yeah, yeah. and delicious foods and uh i just make getting making a great name and a good community contribution yeah, yeah. great to have them getting here. turkish delights for for most of the teams and us here is fantastic such a they're so nice it's so good to meet them finally now let's take a look at the match leaderboard you're going to see 17 total points howell increases their score by, I'm not great at math, but there was that 1,700%. <laughs> yes, yeah, like that. Pretty good. Next up, Navi gets 15. They are starting to turn on. They started a little bit slow, but we're seeing some good signs of life out of Navi Ascend. That 13 before this, so this is more yep. than double points for them, too. They needed that. They did. Uh, being able to hear. We have two two more games to go, of course, today, and if they were ending on, you know, sub 20, that's going to be a rough one to go into day two and three. It's going to be hard I, to catch. I also got to say, Luminosity killing me inside. Uh, <laughs> but I, you pointed out, Gen G got one extra point over right, Sonic right. after that trap, but both of them will still be in the top of the leaderboard. For sure, and on top of that, no matter what here, even Danawa, you're in eight points right now. If you have a double-digit kill win game, you're straight yeah. into the top six, top seven still. So it's still pretty open. The top is looking good, but again, Gen.G assuring mutual destruction here for Sonics means yep. that they're not running away with anything right now, and, and that's the scary thing, right? Because if you're if you're in the lead, if you're Gen.G, yeah. you want to continue adding that's on top of the point. points that you want to make sure you're ahead of the, the kind of mid-pack, top pack. In a lot of ways, Gen.G did a massive favor for the entire lobby by sort of sure. causing, causing both of them to have to limp out the rest of that match. It's still anybody's game. We've played four, we've got two more today, and then two more days of matches afterwards, which means it is a long way from over. So if your favorites are struggling right now, there's plenty of time to come back. And we're going to be back in just a few minutes with game number five from PGS1, co-hosted by Crafton and BSPO.
Xavier's position in, in particular is really tr Ooh. tricky for Ghibli. Ooh. Oh! Vegas once again landing a sick headshot! How is he getting away with this? Two more bullets in this AWM. Can Vegas make it? Oh! Yes, he can! Stop! That's Please! Unbelievable! Vegas! <laughs> Desperate to eat the points, they're set in 15th. They're screaming with the first instantly. The flush to follow. As now Sinan tries to find oh, another one. Human again. Oh, 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 oh. The third as well. It's on. It's now. It's on now. It's on this maneuver for these two yep. to go out with a bang and not go out with the whip for the sense coming on in. Oldis with the grenade at the ready. Oh, oh. Oldis takes down two of New Happy. For Akkad, still at her, holding the line, gets another. All of a sudden, this push for third party, or excuse me, for third eye, looked good, and now it doesn't. But they're losing players themselves. It's not going to be a free grab. It's not going to be uh, an easy continuation of this game, despite being a center spot. And it looks like Sun Sister also want to take part in this. But Road actually backed away. They realized that, oh, I say that, it's actually going to be third eye eliminated. Old list swinging around the corner. This. I mean, you, like you said, FaZe needs points, and now they're walking right to the guns of Gen.G. Taming is making a pay, getting three headshots with the SLR. Some heroics from Howell have them right back in the mix of things here at PGS1 as we roll on to our last two games of the day. It's Paper Thin along with Toby now as we are going to guide you through these last couple of games. Of course, uh, this is just the first day of three for these grand finals, yeah. but 
Uh, the last couple games, you know, a couple teams able to lock down some compounds and get some much needed points. It's always nifty when the circles keep going your direction of how that was exactly. We saw other teams like Day Trade who were out there fighting with UMPs in phase seven. That's something you normally see, but goes to show that teams were committing to compounds right from the get go. Yeah, I mean, Flash at one point had a, a VSS and an, and an ump, but I'm like, there you mm, go. Uh, this is my kind of combo right here. But yeah, so far there is, of course, the codes, guys. We've got some codes going on for you. Make sure you get these. This one's for Petrichor Road. Uh, uh, so get that in there and see if you can get yourself some of the, the team skins. And of course, uh, you can always uh, do all of us a favor and uh, pick those up because they are yeah. sick skins. They're still nice. available in the store. Very nice. They're really nice. They're actually yeah, really, all, really, really good. That's all I have to say. Yeah, that's, that's all you need to say, Toby. You know, they're if, nice. If, if something is nice enough, you don't have to oversell it. Just, they're nice. Go get them. Yeah, it's simple. They speak for themselves. It's the, uh, the old keep it simple, stupid. Exactly. We head on over to uh, Miramar for the last time of the day. And so far, well, I mean, Gen.G came off to a really, really good start on the first Miramar game. And uh, then we went out east. I'm a little worried that all these games are just going to go east, 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 east. Because I talked to Trevor from Luminosity, the coach, and he said, you know why we're looting, I mean, Junkyard? Because all the circles go there anyway. It's like guaranteed early shifts. And so far, it kind of has been. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Eastern Circles on Miramar, but let's find out if this game will continue the trend. It's game number five here on the day here at PGS1. Again, I had to do some quick math. I'm like, how many games have been here? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get into it. It's time for Miramar as we load up into the plane, find out exactly where we are going to end up. And if you can see the plane path from your... Uh, your other monitor, your other screen, your other tab, what have you. Of course, you should have the map screen open as we always, always highly recommend. Exclamation mark map. Exclamation mark map. In the chat. Go. Go. Yes. Always have it open because uh, as nice as it is to see people loot, there's a lot of info to keep track of. And having that map feed there nearby, even if you don't have a second monitor available, put it up on your phone next to your computer, whatever you might have available. Have it up there too, because it is a great for info. Southern Plane Path this time around, if you're a hard committed Oasis looting team, not that I know why it would be, but then it's a, a bit of a stretch to how, get to your loot spot. How dare you? Oasis is the best drop spot. You almost had your Oasis circle last time. Now, yeah, we were really close. Yeah, we were close. Uh, Genji is going to be out the plane very early, heading towards the southern fields of Los Leones, and 17, of course, uncontested so far at Pachinki Picado. Yeah. Uh, Twisted Minds is right above them because of the, the plane path and the, you know, obviously the drop location. Imagine just Twisted Minds of all teams. You know what? It's been a while since we hot dropped last. Let's just go, let's go Picado, see what happens. I would just love to that. mess with people. They aren't far enough ahead in this tournament so far to, uh, to play that that ruthlessly. They will go back up to Power Grid because now, finally, they have it themselves. I did have a, a quick chat with Kobo, the, the coach of Ascend in between here, and overall he's very happy with how his team is playing today, but he was like, how in the world did Batulans get up on <laughs> that cove on the yeah, side of that mountain? Yeah, yeah. Only Batulans knows how to do these things. Every time the camera goes on him when he's rotating, he's just going, no, go away. I'm not going to move my bike any further until the camera shifts off. And well, we said they could potentially go east, paper thin. I'm seeing this plane, and I'm seeing this circle, and I'm thinking, LG, if you're going east because you want circles, well, here's another one. Certainly. That is going to be... Uh where we find ourselves once again, but we'll, maybe we'll get ourselves in a different part, potentially. Ooh, that, can, variety. that can be what we hope for. Sonics, of course, for their Impala drop for these grand finals so far. Uh, we'll have access to that compound that they won with uh, in our previous Miramar, or per perhaps a different one. Yeah, Hopefully, yeah. Day Trade can find better loot this time. That would be quite convenient. While on a wrangle and up close, UMPs and VSSs can get you a long way. I think if you're playing like open stretches on Miramar, ain't really worth the same. No, yeah, precisely. Uh, it just isn't quite as powerful as much as I enjoy tooling around with those two guns every once in a while in my my public games, uh, they are not the ideal combo at the professional <laughs> level. <laughs> I don't know, but I've always wanted, I, I don't know if you've ever tried this, and I, I don't like to talk about like what but I But now do. you're doing it, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so whatever. Like all VSSs is super fun. Just if you're at home yeah. and you want to do something goofy, all VSS is hilarious because that is one of the quietest guns in the game. You can't hear it from nope. like anywhere. Yeah, very annoying to be up against. One thing that I will say though is if we take this conversation back a half year, We'd be saying the same, exact same, oh, no one uses it in professional. Oh, it's just us memeing around about the shotguns. And oh, look, yeah, look right. what happened since then. I mean, everyone is either playing a sawn off on Miramar all the time as a third weapon, or as soon as they get into a compound that they're planning on sticking around in for a while, 
they will do what they can to yeah. find a uh, shotgun to swap their main rifle with. So uh, who knows? Maybe UMPs and VSSs just haven't been picked up by the right team to showcase their worth. You never know. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, every gun that sometimes is kind of poo-pooed on uh, is actually not bad. And uh, so, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about the, the VSS, but the UMP, I can see some some cases where it's not awful. I mean, the first kill of the Grand Finals was with a Victor. So yeah. Pretty lethal. Gun's nuts. Yep. At close range, that gun is nuts. Yep, sure is. In the meantime, speaking of nuts, here we have Navi making their way over towards Luminosity. Another nuts team who is uh, just exactly managing to escape. Always smart to have your fire escape nearby, and they did, so they get out of there scot-free. You know who I do blame for the shotgun meta, though? I think we all know who we all blame. It's, uh, it's a guy with a red beard. But hey, wait, wait, wait. There's a replay. Let's watch the replay, and then we'll, bla we'll play the blame game. Oh, this shot! I just mm, I'm so gonna, sexy. I'm gonna steal it from the, from Martin because he said it while we we're watching the game. But uh, I love that he instantly called him Glass Cannon because he had a bold action and a little one helmet. Ooh! And his name is Glass. Oh, that's so good. Good uh, job, and, Martin. Uh, is pretty fast on those sometimes. Man, yeah. I wish I had gotten that. Yeah. Ah, Martin, yeah. curse you. Yeah. But anyway, Fuzz Face is to blame for the shotgun. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it in there. Love you, Fuzz. Hope you're doing well. Uh, SDK on the move towards the center of the circle. And this time, they are gunning uh, for some of these high-value mm. center circle locations. I mean, they got lasered because they didn't get this compound last time around, so might as well claim it from uh, Sonics before they get a chance to wrap down towards that west side themselves. Absolutely. Uh, Danawa coming in late, sort of, to the circle. What do you call it? Super late? Call it just a... Medium late? Maybe like five minutes, ten minutes late, you know, for the meeting, you know. Not, nobody's going to be super angry at you for it. Just say you got caught up in traffic or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the meantime, hasn't they will be super late, but uh, for them, I just I don't think they really mind too much. I mean, honestly, they, um, they 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 should be all right. If you sometimes see that there are 16 teams alive, but you can only count 15, it's probably a cent. You can't see them on your map feed always because they tend to be pretty slow to the party. But when they do get there, they do tend to uh, wreak havoc. Yes. On whatever they get up to. They're so nasty, like just to deal with, because you never know where they're gonna pop up. You know, th it's like. It's, they're like prairie dogs. Like, they all of a sudden just pop up and they're like, whoop, 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 what's yeah. going on? And then you're just like, half your team's dead. You're like, what the heck? But Ooh. prairie dogs with M249s. Yes, that's that's <laughs> much more terrifying for sure. It's a terrifying thought. Exactly. I think Donawa should grab this crate. I think they're you circling think around so. it. You would think so. Just want to make sure there's no one else who has seen it who wants to come claim it. And here we go back to the half German, half Austrian squad of Ascent, making their way up towards the north and then further over towards the circle alongside third eye who I'm looking at the map now I'm not expecting to see them run into each other but they did run into each other in the very first game of grand finals uh, Branks went down early so who knows maybe another set of paths will overlap yeah absolutely you never know it, things just kind of snowball it's the butterfly effect of PUBG 4am sitting pretty up on the north for now uh, there is Ghibli on their rear but they're on the other side of El Azahar so nothing too threatening just yet Cerberus on the far eastern side as this is Kind of like a, a nice little home for them that they mm. can find themselves in as they, off of that plane path, they're able to drop a little bit closer to this area of the map. It is pretty wild that Luminosity has managed to take control of both Junkyard and the Saloon on the southeastern side. Usually we'd see at least one team try and kind of contest that early on. Of course it is still only phase one, but considering how many of these circles have gone to the same few areas of the map for late game, Having control of both that this early on for Luminosity is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good. I'm curious to see how long they're trying to maintain control of it, though, if the circles go in their direction. Yep. So Sonic's with a, a different compound right now, and as SDK, as you talked about earlier, able to sneak ahead of them. Uh, so this one can be pretty good as well, but Definitely. a little bit more difficult uh, in some ways. It's pretty crashable. Yes, and you have no control over what's happening north of you. Yes. It's, it's one of those, we'll just sit here on the bottom of the hill. If it comes down to us, we're golden. If we have to go north, at least we are going to be the last team to leave because they'll probably be the ones to sit there the longest, wait to make sure that their entire south side is clear, then make the play uphill. Right. But phase two is going to be interesting. Uh, it a is. Lot of, a lot of land ratio terrain in this circle, so it's going to be kind of interesting to see where it goes. Phase 2 should tell us a lot more about where this game is going to end. I would like to ask the game to not go junkyard, though. Just for the sake of variety. I mean, we have islands in play. They're pretty. 
Uh, we have LSH in play. That's pretty fun. Even east of LSH, down towards where both Cerberus and Ghibli are currently. That's a pretty fun place to end the game. You have a massive hillside. You have open fields down towards the east of it. It's pretty... Uh, Pretty different. I think we're doing for a hard south shift, and I think where yeah. like Tianba and south Genji east, are set up, I think yeah, south or well, <laughs> southeast. Is, I have yet to see an island finish. I've only seen a couple, obviously, because they don't happen very much. But mm. unless like the first circle is half water, yeah, that's about the only way that is possible. If it happens, it pretty much happens in phase one. Y you have like a fifty-fifty coin flip on phase exactly, one. exactly. Like, well, well. That is you did get your island. I did. It was a very uh, a blessing. It was in the uh, last stage of the qualifiers for PEC. Finally, about 5,000 Miramas later, they came through. You're a little bit unlucky on that ratio. It, it takes... I mean, it happens. It it quality over quantity, thousand. you know? It's usually around a couple thousand that it happens. Quality over quantity. That's right, my yep, friend. Yep, yep, yep. sitting by the ramps at the half pipe. It's going to be setting up shop at these rocks. That's kind of an interesting spot here for Genji. I think just... We're going to get some info and stay safe from the compounds of teams like Donawa and those kind of things. Just keep the road ahead of you open as best as you can. Figure out how to maneuver forward. It is interesting to see GNG. Obviously, the circle kind of favored them. Easy rotation path from the southeast. But it's interesting to see them, and I say this far into the circle, because it really ain't far. But for GNG standards, it's pretty close to the center of a phase one. So we'll see if the circles go towards them, how they're opting to play a center-heavy game, where usually they'd always be like literally alongside Ascent, the last team to creep in from the edge. Yeah, and even though Genji's been kind of an up and down team uh, throughout this event, to be to yeah, put it nicely, yeah. uh, I do appreciate that they have adjusted their style to previous iterations of Definitely. Genji, where it was like yes. circle three or something. They just like send it to the center and try to play a dip and try to make it work. That was not working out. So I, I do appreciate this new edge heavy style that they're bringing. It's a uh, edge heavy style that not a whole lot of other teams play, that's for sure. Let's see, circle shifts, where are we going? Oh look, it's Junkyard again. Let's hop on up towards the north and see what happens as all the teams on the west and southwest side now have to figure how the hell do we make our way over this ridge line where Navi currently is because we have had no chance of scouting anything up there up until now. Uh, I kind of wish GEX was in this lobby just so I could <laughs> see a, a boat rotation. They're one of the few teams who might, who might throw themselves into a boat and try to make it work. But everybody, like you're talking about, has to figure out a way to get into this next circle. So it's Donawa 17 crossing paths and howl out in front. And this overview is a perfect example of how brutal this circle can be, especially when you have so many teams down towards that south side. Because as you can see here, everyone into the vehicles instantly. You can see nothing up that hillside early on. You have to push up there take control and scout on the go. And that's why teams are hot committing to early rotates. Even the teams that would normally play edge have to go early. Howl, one of them. Oh, a little bit of damage done. A grenade to keep Howl at bay, but it comes up short of getting over the hill. So the Mad and the others hear that grenade and they're like, mm, this is not so safe. Mm -hmm. Let's try another end. 17 and Donawa in the meantime, we're settling up on the edge of the circle, sort of, but now Donawa moving towards Minas Generales. And Howl still just trying to see if there's anything that's Somewhat playable left. I mean, if they... Oh, no. Oh, that's no, no, no. Down as well. Oh, no, Not no, optimal. No. When you go 2-1-1 one, one, and that's the vehicle with two in it, you know you're in for a bad time. First one falls at Schofield out. Oh, no. He's done -zo. Well, Howell there. Now trying to recover from a disastrous early start after winning the previous game. It seems to be the, 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 the MO of PUBG that you win a game and then the next one doesn't go so good. I mean, in all fairness... Yes, they get there in the end, and we now know they could have gotten there without casualties had they not flipped the vehicle. But given where they were and what compound they got, taking one casualty, that's like, a, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll take those odds because there could have been a whole team elimination off of it. No, I agree. I, that could have been a lot worse. No, I, I'm right there with you. That mm -hmm. is, of all things considered for Howell. It's not the worst. Yeah, and since these circles seem to be gravitating in that direction anyway, well, why not? Exactly. Exactly. So uh, even though we know off of what we saw, that it could have been avoided. Still, only losing one there, I think, is pretty all right. Ascent trying to find their entry point coming in from the hard north side, and Danawa up there alongside them. Now, coming into game one, I briefly mentioned how Ascent and Danawa plays very similar edge styles. Danawa tends to push towards the center earlier than Ascent does, but uh, this is part of the reason why we now see them again. Mika jumped out of the vehicle to scout forward. You can see the car down there driving away from him. He is in the open, and I think Salute has just seen him. I mean, Donawa should have Mika potentially dead to rights. I mean, with this angle they have on top of him, He's you can see Ascend has to come back. They yep. have to start returning towards Mika if they're going to save him. Exactly. Over on the other side of things, Pio doing 
peel things. That's Let's right. Flip a coin and see if he's victorious or making things look like, why are you there? This is my favorite brand of PUBG. <laughs> peel things. Peel things. When are we getting an official t shirt? I should doing make one. Things. Yeah, I should yeah, make one. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how Pio would feel about it, but <laughs> he probably wants a percentage or something. Well, that's sales. fine. We can we can work on it. We can work out a deal. I'm a flexible <laughs> kind of guy. There you go. Third eye, going to be traversing the road up and do this edge compound. It looks like they're going to stop. No, they aren't. I thought they might stop there. I think they considered it, but maybe they see enough open space they could try something. But with 17 there, it's going to be tricky. They're going to have to continue. Mika now in the meantime, kill your guy tried to come for the. Like the, the, the safe pick up, but all of Dano has now set up shop on the other side. And for third eye, they have to continue forward. Circle does go up towards the junkyard area further east of it as well. So third eye, smart and not stopping because they need to scout. They need to find something to call their own on the other side of this hill. SDK fan out in Vegas with a great spray. Finds Old List and takes him down. Really nice to see Vegas continuing where he left off in the loser's bracket. Hitting some phenomenal shots. Now... Out of the frying pan, into the fire, and it is yep. Navi. Not a team I'd want to be dusting up with. Nope, same thing here. Uber does find one that's actually Vegas over on the other side. And now, obviously, Third Eye, well aware they have opponents up close. Throwing some smokes, throwing some nades to make some more space for themselves. But we have all of Luminosity now in the saloon on the other side. They might just want to peek on over here as well. In the meantime, you can see in the, the picture in picture at the bottom of your screen that Donawa and Twisted Minds are dusting it up. Loki, though. Yeah, I don't think there's any way Donawa's getting back to him. They're trying to put some pressure on a Twisted Mind. Soul trying to watch the hillside, trying to keep them off the Loki. Oh, God, that grenade just came up short, though. Batulin's under pressure from Anonix, driving in here and sends Batulin's backing. Yeah, Spirit already down as well. This style of play plays very much into the play style of Twisted Minds. Allow teams to come through when there's commotion on the edge. We stick around, and then we get to backstab teams. Issue is their position on the map right now is not very good. You can see Soul, and the remaining down players are the ones with the high ground. So just vehicles and a single rock for cover for Twisted Minds. And if Soul can place one good nade there, that is two Twisted Minds players down instantly. Yeah, Soul is trying to push this angle. He gets a headshot even, but he has no frags to speak of. So can't capitalize in the way that he would like, I'm sure. Still trying to keep Loki alive, still considering the res. Now there is a send, still with a role exactly. to play in this fight, potentially. Yeah, I mean, they're starting to slowly make their way up in this direction now with vehicles as well. So I think Dano will have heard cars coming through. But then again, shots fired, vehicles coming through the middle of it as well. But Tulis trying to see what he can find. I don't think they have any clue now that Ascend is slowly creeping up from the other side. Soul's going to have to go absolutely nuts. He's Ooh. got two. What a great spray. But then he gets plowed over by Batulins, who's immediately knocked by Salute with the Groza. And all of a sudden, this fight has gotten very, very scrappy. Ascend yeah. looking to maybe vulture a few points. You'd have to imagine that that's what they're going to go for. Twisted Minds will fall as High claims one from afar. And for Ascent, just not close enough again. I mean, I get that they're playing passive. I get that they're more of a late game percentage team, but this was, I mean, I feel like this was a chance for them to rag up, as you were just saying, a ton of points, and they just never pounced on it. I would have at least tried to go for a couple grenades. Yeah. But uh, on that smoke, especially once that smoke is out, I'm like, Okay, there's somebody in there. Exactly, and no one was in a position from where they could really contain. They were all fully committed to the fight because you had multiple knocks on both sides. In a tournament where 18 games, I mean, again, any free point you can get early, any player you can shoot in the back who has not even, like, has any idea you're there, those are points you have to try and go for because you don't get a lot of chances like those. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you. Pretty Gertie has the M249 doing his It's Chris impersonation here <laughs> out in the front. Oh, no, he's not in the back, so he's on the front. Ooh, a, a hard shift down to the south. Variety. Hey, yeah. this is going to look different for sure. Sure is Genji eating the circle, but I'm not sure how much of a blessing it's going to be considering how open of a terrain they're in. So once all the teams come down from that north side, they should be out in the open. We'll see how they opt to play this one. And obviously with SDK seeing the shift as well, now starting to think better of it. Do we take the fight out here? Nah, let's try and see if we can get somewhere close up towards the circle too. For for a team in Gen G's position, you gotta hope that the teams on the edges cannibalize each other. Yes. That's that's your best hope for getting through this with decent forces remaining. Crazy gonna be spinning a little bit. Foxy with that M24. Gonna look for the shot just I think in between the two seats in that car. Got a haircut. No doubt about it. Blew <laughs> straight past his ear. Pio finds Melman as Navi tries to flex out again. I mean, Gen G, they cannot play passive anymore. They have to play aggressive in their position now. 17, Sonics, while it's not inside Picado, they will still find one another. Yeah, it's going to be a dust up here between these two squads. Tickleton on point for the Sonics. The rest trying to make their way in to see if they can assist him. Lil Ghost has gotten underneath. So 1v1 in this building, as far as we can tell. And now the other three members 
of the Sonic still can't really find any space. This is happening in the distance, but you see Alo up on the hillside actually flanking down towards this position. Now, I would love to see SDK come down and try and fortify a third party position. Now, Alo finds one as well, knows that they're fighting inside the compound. SDK should come down here because if you could control to the south here, you're going to be in such a good position. Yeah, Alo there now has great oversight into this really small house. The blue house is very dangerous. There's not a lot of open space to work with inside of it. And Alo, so far, just harassing 17. Enough smokes to kind of cover the Sonics so far. Uh, but right now, it is still... St oh, wait, this is going to be stalemated much longer. Whoever sees each other first <laughs> is going to get this done. Tickleton here lets Luther with another smoke. Low Ghost has to hear that, but I don't think he has any idea where Tickleton nope. is. Can't see each other. Not for those. It's simply too thick of a smoke lying around. And Tickleton actually able to jump out again, able to regroup with his teammates. And now all of 17, all the three of the four, Set inside that one story on the other side. Not an easy position to play from SDK. Did not fortify south. Instead, they take the fight to Howl. Uh, day trades caught up in this mix as well. So three teams involved on this western edge fight. SDK not really able to commit to much. So now they're going to have to play defense here. Rune trying to get the best of Purdy. But no, Purdy gets one. Immediately, Apocalypse follows up. Going to go for the flush. Vegas and Penta down below. Trying to hold the line here. But still, day trade is fanning out around this fight. Yep, they're trying to see how much they can get off it for themselves. And this fight continues on the south. Outside too, it's taken some reps around one, finds one, finds two. Almost gets the third around the corner, take fully blinded. Has to back off, and now Shao Wu over the side finds one in return. Yeah, uh, Lil Ghost is there for the quick flush. Shrimzy, the last one alive for the Sonics, trying to salvage this fight. He's got two more members of 17, maybe three if they can get this res onto Shao Bay. But for now, we take a brief pause here as 17 goes for the res. Timeout, timeout. Let the reses come through. And then we continue on to second half of the fight. Navi, in the meantime, obviously hearing all the commotion down south, well aware that there's going to be no one from there peeking this way. Actually, as a matter of fact, Melman is down there playing contain as well. So Navi, full control out towards the west. Shrimzy going to get one here. Xiao Bei now trying to push in. Shrimzy very beat up. One bullet's going to get it. Yeah, he found it. The help from Mime not coming just yet. Two members left here at 417, and Mime is just really trying to hold the angles, trying yeah. to protect the outside of the building, but it doesn't matter. Mel there is going to find the angle and find the kill. Exactly. Trying to wrap down, try to see what he can get, and he found exactly what he wanted. And now all of Navi, all of a sudden, as they realized they couldn't really make a play onto Luminosity in the saloon, onto Day Trade on the other side, starting to eye down 17. They know they have to make a play out of the compound, and right now, Navi have the perfect position to contain them. Yeah, I, th I think Navi unless there's still some really good vehicles there for 17. Should be able to do a pretty good job of making life miserable. Flash, though, and probably waiting for an opportunity yeah. to strike. Ooh, great shots from Alia. Get the knock on to Xiaobei, as there is one Murado left. So the final two members of 17 are going to load up. And yet still, they're getting headshotted from this range. Alia, absolutely nuts with the Mark 12. Can he find the final? Just not quite. No, just on the other side, you have 7-7 seven, seven from Tiamba there. Ready and waiting, able to take out little ghost Xiaobei. Out to blue, it's just Xiaowu left alive. And now... Good thing for Navi, able to get the kills before anything came through because now Day Trade has wrapped on over towards him. Yeah, Day Trade not afraid of trying to pick on Navi there on the edge. Tianba going to be scrambling around on their side, but they have enough of the circle that they are A-OK, -okay, at least for now. Mm. Grenades here splashing in front of Ghibli. Some damage done, uh, but no critical damage to Tosi and Gumin just yet. Nope, Navi. Trying to regroup out towards the west as we see. I mean, the edges have been burning for a while and they're going to continue to do so for at least a little while longer. Navi, still four up. They trade down to just two. They have the high ground though. And you can see Navi not too eager to make the play on up. And they also cannot forget about Xiao Wu down towards the south who's currently running in their direction. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're going to try to make a push off that damage but can't really find what they want. So for now, Navi sort of poking and prodding. Xiao Didi may still have a role to play in this fight. Ghibli has been eliminated on the back side of things. Example, with that barrel, trying to work with his teammates to get up front. They're going to make the push. The call is on. The push is here. Navi up and over the hill trying to get through, but Day Trade Flash trying to play some defense. The grenades are singing and ringing. The stuns are so good. Flash is Flash, but somehow, some way, gets some damage, but eventually Navi is going to claim Day Trade. When you cover the entire area in flashbangs, that's when you know there's, even if they're there, they cannot see a thing. So let's just run on up, take him out, and continue forward. Circle over towards the east. We go once more as Danuav takes out Ascent. Salute. Doing work with the Groza. 
And that's what you want to see out of that mm -hmm. early great gun they were able to pick up in rotation. DG quickly taken down by Lin Chu. Diamba and Gen G dusting it up, taming out in the open, but some damage able to be done here as 7-7 seven, seven and Pow Pow trying to retreat back towards the other side. Gen G trying to get the flank angle onto them, and they're not, and they are so good at it. 7-7 seven, seven trying to hold it down with this barrel. Pio gonna let loose with the grenade, but it's too far. Pio around the corner, and he's gonna win that fight with 7-7. Seven, seven. Tiamba just long skirt alive. Yeah, multiple fights happening here at the same time as we saw Danawa eliminated up towards the north against 4AM. Somehow Gen G has been able to stay alive for all of this. Look at this, Xiao Wu. Just in the midst of this Navi rotation. Yeah, Mel should have P.O. done and dusted. Yeah, there you go. indeed. Easy spray for him. And Genji gets cannibalized on the edge. Navi and Cerberus, four strong, but right now not engaging. Yeah, that was the issue for Genji in that position, right? We said they have to maintain control. They have to spread out. They have to really force people away. But when you have teams coming in from literally all directions and you're in an open area yourself, there is just only so much you can do. Yeah, they, they made a decent amount of that position, I'd oh, say. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's not too bad at all. I mean, it's, all. like we talked about earlier, you have to hope that every other team around yes. you just beats each other up. Which they did, but it, not enough. Not enough, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Luminosity has managed to leave the Salon, and uh, I think Alia caught eye on that. So curious to see if you can see Navi already now trying to position themselves for it. But again, Xiaowu still prone behind Alia. He is going to get backstabbed to the full extension unless if they somehow catch eye on him. He has done a great job here to salvage some points for 17. Alia is just a marksman today. That he is. Mark 12 is absolutely disgusting in his hands. Flood has been knocked. Now Relo is actually just trying to run away from this. LG doesn't like this fight at all. Oh, a shot from Stakers though. It's all a bait. They want to just drag him into the AWM across the side. And now Navi has to rethink this. Xiao Wu DDD belt dealt with on the backside. Yep, exactly. Mailman able to wrap around. Actually, I think he saw him in the midst of transitioning to help Uber back up. He ran back to rest and was like, oh, wait, there's someone running out of direction. Good one for Mailman. That is able to take him out. That is going to be 17 out in fifth. Three teams with four players. LG maybe three, depending if they can get this res to stick on a kick. Looks like it should be good, though, but 4 a.m., you know, they are they are keen for points. They want to try to get through. I mean, we advocated looking at the map, and I know that it's late game, so technically you shouldn't have too much, but look at the map and how much space is in the middle. No one is able to claim that center circle. That was where we saw Gen G earlier, and it's simply unplayable because you still have the ridge on the west end. You still have the compounds out east. You cannot utilize that at all. So this next shift, regardless of who it favors, could very much dictate the winner of game number five. The good news is there's still some hills and things. This just Favors no center way. circles up. Yeah, Could yeah. be more fair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is this is what you want uh, from this circle, from this game. And uh, there's still, again, some dips and dives to play within the center of this. Yeah. And 4 a.m. trying to lock LG out of these next couple circles. Yeah. I mean, even the win percentage is great. 30, 27, 28. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to call this one. It's about who makes landfall first and who gets to stand their ground. I think it's only Cerberus at this point who probably has vehicles that they can utilize for the circle because they're that close to the compound. Foyer might have a couple as well, example, able to find Relo, but again, for now, he should be able to just prone on down and get the rest as issuers. If Navi gets within eight range of uh, Luminosity, they are in trouble. That one bounces, bounces, fun! That is going to be the elimination of Luminosity. Full send on that nade as Navi reaches kill number 10. Uh, huge stuff there for Navi, and now, it is a straight up 4v4v4. High Saki up and over. Going to take some damage, though, from 4AM in return. Had a brief moment where maybe if he could get ahead or two, he might have been able to find a knock, but not going to happen. Navi now going to be wrapping into the back lines of Cerberus. Yeah, Navi hearing those shots coming in now, realizing they're fighting. They are joyed with this opportunity. Wrapping in now, taking full circle control. Probably not going to push the fight too hard at all. Actually, just set up, take their part of the circle, probably half, and just wait for this one to unfold. Yeah. So there still is one Bronco at least kicking for 4 a.m. on the other side of the road. So they're going to set up and try to keep these vehicles healthy, probably for phase eight, see if they can make a move off the backs of this. Cerberus trying to claim some territory, trying to claim some space. They're going to leave Saki out on his own on the other side of the street to kind of try to corral 4 a.m. I love Alia's flank position down towards the southern side. This is going to be a big OG thing, but Alia has been doing this, like been the flank player of any team he ever was on. Ever since the good old Swarm days in PEL Contenders 19, he has been such a good flank player, and that is why 
the Navi team picked him up initially because they saw his potential in being a sick flank player and here he is once more finding Himmes. Yeah, a little bit of bait there from Uba to get a Cerberus player out in the open, trying to see if they can finish the job, but the grenade bounces a little too high to get any more distance. Shao Lu takes some damage. Gonna have to prone to get some heals. 4 a.m. just has enough of the, the dip on the other side of the road that they can chill for now. So even though Navi took some space so far, you know, nobody's really oh, claimed oh. a full control over this. One thing that is to say, to say I, I don't see how Navi doesn't end up getting the third party opportunity in this one. For 4 a.m., there's no way they rabbi west on this. Like, there's no way they, they cross all the way over. They have to take the fight straight to Cerberus. Cerberus is going to get pinned in. And unless if 4AM finds Nox on Na'Vi to force them to stay back and rest, there's, like, there's no way Cerberus don't get the worst end of this. Yeah, it, this looks like it's going to be Na'Vi's game, potentially. But let's see how clean this fight is between 4AM and Cerberus. Crazy looking like he might go watch the backside. Now, some shots ringing out across both. No Nox found. On either end. I'm a little worried. 4AM just lopped. I think I counted 11 smokes there. Didn't make a play off of any of it. They still set back now. The vehicles are coming in, but the smokes are starting to fade. Yeah, well, they need that grenade, and they find it. Summer right underneath the vehicle gets duck my. Some return fire from Cerberus. They're trying to do something, but that gives the beachhead that 4AM needs. Hi, yep. Jackie taking a bunch of damage in the back from Uba. Navi's going to get involved. Such an easy flank around for Navi. Essentially just pinning them in, allowing them over. It's all they wanted just so they could shoot them in the backs. Huge stuff here from 4AM and Navi. Really well handled. Poor Cerberus just getting torn apart. <laughs> here come the flashes. This is deja vu from earlier in the match, and that's quick from Shao Hai. Has the kill as well. Cerberus down to their last player. It is a 4v4 on the other end. Navi cleaned up the southwest. 4AM cleaned up the northeast. And now, as you say, 4v4. Melman, though, able to find one. Shao Hai instantly finding one in return. Huge stuff from him. Example now trying to swing around to the flanks of 4AM, seeing if he can get any damage. Alia out there as well. And Shao Lu making a wide wrap. Crazy gets the knock on to Uba. Now it's down to Alia and Example for Navi. Huge knock coming through. Uba such a big threat up close, but can't forget about Example. Shao Lu falls. And now, just to lift the live, Shao Hai crazy out towards the east. Damage done towards Shao Hai, so they have caught the rotation. Alia able to find just enough in an angle to do some damage with that 3x spray. Shao Lu looking to be flushed, but it's some fire into Shao Hai as well. Crazy trying to back him up. Example gets crazy. Example's got the flush. Now you've got a 2v1. Shao Hai, very weak, very damaged. If that's a frag, he's done. It's not. It's something else. Example even thinking about the pan maybe there for a second, just wishing they had one frag to finish the job. Shao Hai going to reposition behind the, the rock. Still some time to work with. Yep, I think I saw him on the rock there. Now the Molly coming through is definitely going to give the info across 15 kills for Na'Vi, and they've all gone on the board. Solid game for Na'Vi, regardless how this one pans out. Same could be said for 4 a.m. But Shao Hai, one rock to work with. I don't think Example had a vest, and we know how much the barrels just melt through the flesh of the opponent. So we'll see if he somehow can make this happen. I'm not seeing any utility thrown yet, which should be, to me, should be indicated that they don't have a lot. As I say that, Flashes lopped on up. They should be Navi pushing. Yeah, here they come. If they can play for the trade, they should be good to go. The heads are going to show themselves. Shao Hai tries to repeat, but Navi found a great angle to get on top of him. Ooh. The spray for one, but they're good for the other. It is going to be Navi. They are inevitable. 16 kills and a chicken dinner. What a huge game for the boys in yellow. Again, fought their way all the way in from the west side. It was the initial play in from Millman to take control of the fight down south that allowed for them to just sweep through team after team the team until they claim the win in the end. Uh, this is scary for everybody else in this lobby, no doubt about it, but we've got some highlights, then the desk, and then the final game of the day. Don't go anywhere.
Now victory for Navi as they get themselves a chicken dinner and they do it in style. We said they were starting a little slow. They were showing up later and later and later, but they are officially activated. Navi comes out and just destroys the lobby. Yeah, that was a fantastic game for them. Honestly, the way they moved through it. It's a little bit of an interesting one with yep. 4AM in the end. Xiao Hai made a huge impact there in the end. But they were able to close it down 2v1. Yep. It's super, super hard to clutch that. Even though he had a rock, they had the utility to counter it. Yeah, and while the shout out will go to Navi for that incredible performance, we do want to give some credit to 4AM. They also were a team that I think needed to step up and put in some points as yeah. the day comes to a close. And they're going to do that. And I think that's the key here on day one of the Grand Finals. You want to set yourself up. There's two more days of play. If you started slow, just get one good game or put some points on the board so that you can go home and have a plan moving into tomorrow and don't feel like you're playing some crazy catch-up. Yeah, especially because Genji, they slowed down themselves yep. and Sonics in that previous game. So it's still very open there. We're not having a, you know, 75 point day one right. kind of Navi day for them. So it's actually, <laughs> uh, it's looking good. But Navi here in this case, Having some good games here back to back, and they're really uh, going to be putting themselves into yeah. the top three at this moment. I'll say, you said it's not a 75 point Navi game, but we got one more to go. And I'd learn not to write these guys off <laughs> once they get hot. So we will see as we head to our last game in just a few minutes if Navi can go all the way at the end of the day. And I mean, that's not far fetched. Now, regarding the end of that game, we also saw Cerberus put in some good points. They came in and they kind of tried to hold that ground against 4 a.m. But I like that 4 a.m. push, the fact that they were able to use those flashes and really cross the road that I didn't think they'd be able to cross. Yeah, especially the southern circle yep. there when 4AM, they had to move. They were like, okay, there, it's their play. Like, yep. all the teams are sitting in, in a fantastic spot. They're going to wait for it. But yeah, they took down Cerberus quite easily. Even though Cerberus only got three kills, they still managed to get top three. That's some decent amount of points. But 13 kills for 4AM and 16 for Na'Vi. Woo! That is huge. The rest of the gaming, they've been sneaking inside the top four again and again here, but not too many kills, only one for them this time around. 64 players dropped, 29 of them dropped to Na'Vi and 4AM at the start at that match. So that, that is a impressive. ton of points just going to the top. Those two on the board. LG does make it to fourth, which is some signs of life. But again, it's just one kill. They did a lot of damage. I think that speaks to how their game is going right, right now. Right. They're putting in some fights, but they're not really closing the deal as we jump into the highlights with the final five teams in that match. Yeah, 4AM only 12 points so far before this fifth yep. game here. They're able to get this many got more than that justin kills you have to see the northern circle here and then they had to push over they're impressed with cerberus how they've been playing they announced that they have been sick all of them they had to replace a sick player with a less sick player so it's pretty impressive they're able to come in here and play this well a bit sad that dogma got taken down there but there as you say the stun grenade's coming in and you just see xiao hai just coming in taking tycon down with a fantastic spray with the barrel straight to the head straight to the dome I was rooting, of course, for uh, Navi and Huba, my fantasy player, to stay yeah. alive there, and you were too. But yeah, in this case, none of ours stayed alive all the way through the end there. But 16, 26. That was incredible. Point. Let's take a look at the numbers as they've go to broken down by the player. Mel comes in on top with six kills. Looking very good, but the damage goes to Alia. He seemed to be everywhere at once. He didn't right, close right. any of those kills, but every time someone tried to peek, Alia's got the number. Yeah, I love it. I'm seeing almost 1,000 club there. Uh, honestly, and on top of that also, when you only have 109 damage taken, yep. that's efficient damage. You're that taking is. durability, you're taking helmets, taking everything off everybody else there. So good to see here for the boys. And Melman, of course, the six, expecting him with the six kills there. No, it's going to be Alia. Okay, impressive. Yeah, efficiency comes in high. Absolutely, and that's exactly what it was. Great efficiency by him. The team worked together very well in that endgame, and I liked how they took an aggressive stance. The second that 4AM started to fight Cerberus, Na'Vi didn't wait. We saw a little bit in the earlier game when Hal was in a similar position. They kind of waited to see how the fight was going to go. How the fight were going? Na'Vi, exactly. Na'Vi did not wait. They got in there immediately and started mixing it up. Wow. And just like that, they will jump to the team summary tops on every single category. <laughs> off the back of that game. That's crazy, yeah. and 11 hit kills ahead of 4AM. That's super, super impressive. Talks to how it, you know, we've had, you know, the teams have had one really good game, yep. one decent game, and then a few bad ones, right? So it's evening out quite nicely here. 26 Ooh. total here for an hour. Of course, they had 28 points total before yep. going into this. So this is a massive game for them. It is a massive game. 4AM takes 19, and both of those two take almost all of the points really available in the lobby. Shout out to Day Trade getting aggressive and Donawa putting up points based on just kills. Again, when you know you can't get the circle, you got to go out and you got to get those frags. And that's what they did. 
five points for Donawa, six for Daytrade. Everyone else felt kind of like they were just watching the match unfold because <laughs> they could not close some of those deals down. We have had so many Northeastern circles, mm -hmm. though, for three. Miramar. Yes. So it has to be kind of the same teams and again and again here. But 12 points ahead of Gen G wow. and Sonics now, not nah, with this game here. Not so many placement points as Gen G, but still super consistent and high amount of kills here. 36 for them. That's uh, that's kind of crazy. And we're saying it, you know, 75 points yeah. they want for winners bracket here. You don't need that much to actually uh, get on par with that. You don't. It feels a little bit like that Gen G bridge camp kind of cracked the door open for Navi because the those two games since that moment has gone downhill for everyone else. Navi on the uphill climb. Ascend and fourth, though, also pretty impressive. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to point that out. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I got to say, that's super impressive. Yeah. It's Chris have been carrying a lot of that. They've had some sneaky plays from him. He's been squeezing out the points where they're needed. Absolutely. Now, take a look, guys. It's time for you, fittingly so, to get your hands on a Navi skin. They just took the victory, and now you can take that code and get yourself a skid in-game to celebrate their success. So go, go, go. Uh, supplies are limited. So the faster you type it, the lucky you are going to get. Now, as said, I think that they are really impressing me with their play. We kind of talked about them throughout the group stages as like a team that can hang around, right? Get some points, collect when right, they right. can. They're not playing that way. They're actually getting out there and taking some pretty amazing fights. They're getting in some good spots for sure. And also they're surviving longer and longer than you're in cases where you have one or two players right. in life, but the players are not you know, hiding. They're trying to get kills. They're trying to squeeze out. And that's what really impresses me here. Yeah, they were the last spot to get in from the loose bracket, but now they're showing that they belong in the top eight. Checking in with our players. We get ready for our last game of the day. Howell Esports getting the headsets on and getting set. They'd like to get a recap of the last match. Who are you excited? Last game going in. Who are you watching as we go into the last game of the day? I gotta say, I'm looking for Gen.G and Sonics if they can kind of turn it up and catch up to Navi again here. Gen.G and Sonics would nice to see them turn back up and make something happen. Well, it's time for us to see what they can make happen as we head to the lush lands of Erangel with the concophonous call of our casters. It's Toby and Paper Thin. Well, we're ready to turn it up. Thank you very much, Desk, as we get over into Erangel for our last game of the day. I am super excited. It's been a really great day. Navi comes out, reasserts their dominance, and now we go into the final game with everyone looking up at them. Everyone just looked at them in the group stage and was like, where, 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 where are the PGC champions? Then we came into it and was like, oh. Oh, there, 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 there they are. And they've brought that into Grand Finals too. A little worrying for the teams that want to claim first place. For Na'Vi and for Na'Vi fans right now, and for anyone who just got their Na'Vi skin, it's a pretty good day. No doubt, no doubt. Congratulations if you've been picking up those skins. They are a treat for sure. And now this plane path, Toby, we, we were just commenting, we don't see this one very I, much. I don't think it can be more north. Honestly, I've, I've looked at like the lines in the past where they show you exactly how far a plane path can be like south to north. I think it can be just south of Yasnaya at like the most northern straight across point. So uh, yeah, it's a uh, as north as it gets. Well, no, no military base is what we know off of this for sure. True. Basically impossible. <gasps> Sucky ending. Sorry, that's what I'm hoping for. I, I see the plane drifting in that direction. The only and one left on my bucket list. It's, it's my, it's, I've had one really close. Uh, Same. I've been in the forest around, I've been around, but the proper peninsula Saki ending. I've never got up into the peninsula during a nope, match. Same, same, same. Simply unlikely slash impossible to have happened with the uh, the way the settings are set up. I do want to go back while we uh, have a bit of a looting phase with <clears throat> just double checking, no hot drops. Um, I want to briefly touch on both the current success of Ascent and also the current not so success of both Third Eye and Danawa. Now there is there is something throwing south to. Yes. This is what sure. this is what we like to refer to as the fever drop, where you're not. Yeah. It tend, it's not meant to be hot, but it is anyway. It becomes accidentally hot, and Mika now. Well, he got straight into the car. Is he going to try and run people over? Nope, because they're going to the yellows. They'll just continue going down south. They go down from Mosk. Everything is going to be good. Okay. Depending on what Belmoth gets there, he can he could maybe take kill your Kai out. No, no, no hope now. No, 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 no. He's yeah. looking for. Oh, are there anyone else? <laughs> any other bats? Swap, but no, not gonna happen. Kilikai did land in the shack, though. That is, uh, he needs to get picked up. You think Kilikai can win with the Tommy gun from that range? <laughs> I would like to see him not attempt <laughs> to do anything other than running away, which is what he does, and that may allows me to go back to my point. No, we talked about coming into the first game of the day, especially on Miramar, but also on Erangel. To, um, Ascent 
Danawa, alongside Third Eye, very similar playstyles. Some better at executing them than others. But when you have a lobby of 16 where three teams wrap the same directions, tends to come in from the same side of the circle and at the same time, you cannot, you rarely ever, if ever at all, see all those three teams have success in those lobbies. So that's why when Danawa were playing their A game, where they were fragging out, Ascent bottom scrape barely even made winner's bracket, right? Oh, made, made, made into the finals. And yeah. now that it's turned around, now that Ascent who has kind of got things going their way, Danawa are the ones that stumble to make their way forward. And then Third Eye has kind of been on the receiving end of the herd in both those scenarios, but still managed to claw their way through. But it's just to say, when you have so many teams that in each their respective region, because they all come from three different ones, can play their styles alone, they're great. You put them on a global stage where they try to do the exact same thing against the exact same teams every game, all three of them, like it's simply not going to happen. All those three teams will not succeed doing the same thing at the same time. And that's why you don't see both of them at the top at the same time. Yeah, it is really, really tough when everybody has very similar ideas about how to approach every circle and sometimes even your drop spots can be close to each other exactly. to kind of make matters worse. I mean, we've had it in tournaments before where teams have literally gone out and said, the reason we do this is because we saw them do it in their region. Now we have to rethink it because we can't utilize it when they're in the lobby too. We've seen te teams try and play off of what Twisted Minds did to have success in the previous years. We've seen teams do it to, uh, for what Gen G did way back, in this, like, way back in their successful years of like 2019, 2020. Everyone were going, okay, how can we do this Gen G rotation? Wait, now Gen G is here, so now we can't do it. Exactly. Like, yeah, so you're pretty much your your what got you the success has been taken away from you and that's why I see some teams sometimes look a little uh, not clueless but seem like they're really out in like the last play of the playbook because the ones they would usually go with are taken by the team they learned it from. Yeah, and you know, it's as they say great minds think alike, but yeah. in this case at PUBG it kind of makes things uh, <laughs> fall apart. Uh, great minds get each other killed. That's right. Yep. All right. Well, Pow Pow trying to sneak underneath duck my I, I have a suspicion Pow Pow knows he's up here. I have a suspicion Duck is going to hear those footsteps real soon, even though he, even if Pow Pow tries to go sneaky. The issue is every time Pow takes his steps, like, Pow, Pow, Pow. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's going to be heard. That's why his name is. Actually, I found out what his name means. Oh, It's, okay, so this is cool. We'll see if he gets a kill here. He, he's going to see other members of Cerberus. Here comes the reinforcements. I think the rest of Tiama trying to bait here for Pow Pow. But anyway, Pow Pow it means bubbles. Like, it's like, what? Bubble, bubble? It's like a, kind of like a slang way to say bubbles. Like, like especially like the little ones that little kids make with like those toys yeah, you yeah. blow in the... So one Pow is one bubble, and this is Pow Pow. I think Pow Pow is just bubbles. Okay. Yep. Okay. There you go. There you go. Today you learned. You're welcome. The more you know. Yeah. The more you know. All right. It doesn't sound as kind of aggressive. I always thought of it as like punches. Pow, pow. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Now it's just bubbles. It's... Yeah, it just means bubbles. Yeah. It's, it's... Today I learned. Yeah. Imparting my my I don't my immense wisdom. Yeah, he's he doesn't sound as intimidating anymore. But then again, if someone really good at the game just came at you and was called Bubbles, they'd be like, "Why does his name sound so kind? And why is he so evil?" Now I'm even worried. I'm like, even more worried. Isn't that the character from Trailer Park Boys? Like I don't know. Or the girl from Powerpuff Girls. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a good one too. Yeah. All right. Well, there's that northern rotation we come to expect from Donawa. Now, the real curious one about this particular circle is that because of Genji's Stalber drop. Will they butt heads? SDK hasn't really moved from their position outside of North George as well to kind of block the bridges. So kind of curious to see what Donna was going to do. But now Pow Pow out in the open and Pow Pow. Tycon and Zerberus are going to find him knocked. I don't know what Tiamba's plan here is, Toby, because Longskirt you know. still sat in that one building with the M24 and the other two went into the South George crates. They had vehicles up close to pick him up, but maybe... Bubbles felt like he was due for a knock on the hillside eventually issue as the entire team saw him when the team left. I think they see the cars leave and then they scope in, but then the peripheral vision also kicks in and go, wait, we see the cars, but there's also a guy running in the middle of the open and that kind of gives up the idea of him flanking around the south side of the, uh, the, the mountain altogether. Feels like maybe a bit of miscommunication with Tiamba, but yeah. you know what? They've had a pretty solid day. They're in fifth true, place right true, now. True. So you can't complain too much. You know, everybody can't have perfect games all the time. Uh, now here is Donawa slamming Ooh. into STK. Penta and others trying to do some damage. Penta had a great angle momentarily. Purdy has to put the fire on the stairs. And Loki had already pushed through. Some great timing there on that molly. 
The perfect utility use continues here from Birdie as he takes Loki down. And outside of shotguns, what better gun to be able to sit and hold the staircase with? You're gonna be able to shoot that one for a while. And now the remaining players of SDK are coming up to fortify. I like the idea of Danoa in the sense that they did read the split right. There's only two people here, but it hasn't worked out for them. And Onyx now caught with nade in hand. Ain't gonna work his way. Birdie almost ran himself to death. But uh, able to slip that one through. Salute finds one more as he's trying to stay safe up on the hillside. But they've already taken, I think, too many casualties to make this worthwhile. Well, the dynamic duo of Donoa is saving their round. Soul did find Vegas. So it's wonderfully smart and just amazing as that play was from Kurt. He can't do enough to save the rest of his team. Now he's going to try to push down towards Salute. Salute was ready. Salute can't repeat that. That clip is massive. On the M249, Soul trying to get the flush and will do so. Now it's just down to Purdy Curdy. See if he can do this one on his own. Looking at how the day has gone for Danova so far, it shouldn't be written off the books that he could pull this one off 1v2. But as I say, that Soul with the scar in hand finds him through the smoke, and that is going to be him down. And even with those kills coming through for Danova, 17 points on the day. That's just been a, uh, a night and day in terms of how they played into the winners. Yeah, it was a struggle of a start here today, and I guess I was a little bit concerned coming into today because Soul was telling me that he had a pretty bad headache, and uh, whatever medication he took to try to alleviate it wasn't really helping. So mm. I definitely had concerns for Donawa coming into today, but still, that doesn't really, you know, that doesn't really mean that was the oh, whole no. story there oh. at all. But we'll see. Maybe they've got a little bit of something, something left in the tank. And we, again, as you're saying, there are two days left to play, and we know Dana would be a team that, while they might not come up incredibly hot right from the get-go, give them literally these six games to go back and rewatch, to take notes on, to come into tomorrow, prep for, maybe, with less of a headache, too, as you add to it. Uh, don't write them out. They're set in 15th right now. Do not write Dana out. We've already, in this tournament, seen what they can do. We've crowned them, or at least some talents, crowned them as the best Korea has ever been. We'll see if they can live up to that name as we, they make our way into tomorrow's games. Yeah, they're certainly a phenomenal team, uh, but definitely... Uh, some things to look at and go back in and try to fix for tomorrow. Tenji, though, has fanned out along the northern edge. They are just behind them. Ascend trying to get into space. Ooh. And Cerberus says, no, go back down. <laughs> Double hit shot. Get out of here. Just, it's nasty. It just, I mean, and, and that's the level of play we're up in here. And I, you know what? I love it. I've always thought about it in other FPS titles where if you miss your first shot, you can be sure that the, like the shot in return is going to take you out. Like you only get that one chance. There was a little while where the level of individual mechanical play maybe wasn't the same, but now I think some of these guys, some of these fraggers could go out and battle against some of the best in other FPS titles and come out victorious. But another thing that oh. tends to happen as the entire arena goes, oh, is this a hard shift? Who would have thought, Paper? Never, Who would have thought? Never. At least it went west instead of east this time. <laughs> uh, this is wild. Now, Donawa here, I think... If they it, it, look, if Donawa just holds the, the the gas pedal down, they actually could maybe get to like that coastal peninsula yeah. Yeah. before anybody else. Everybody else is trying, probably thinking like hospital, South George, and that's where a lot of the teams are going. There were very few teams inside of this circle, so there is going to be a lot of chaotic action here. As yep. Bay even trying to find some onto Twisted Minds. Twisted Mind spins out momentarily. Ooh, not going to take any damage though. Dangerous place to sit on a buggy. No. Uh, speed at all either. <laughs> Always nice for Xiaobei that he at least has a driver so he doesn't have to concern himself with stopping the vehicle. Xiaobei able to get him back to safety as they claim the warehouses. And as you were saying, there were pretty much no one here by the time this circle popped. And already now, just 40 seconds later, completely occupied. Here comes Navi right into the Sonics. The Sonics here have set up for this position. Can they get any kills? Can they get any knocks? There's one. Trimsy H win with another. The Sonics are doing a ton of damage, and yeah, Mel got mime, but H-Win trying to finish the job, and he will. The Sonics put Na'Vi right back out of the lobby. That is exactly how they want to start this one off. Started in second place in this one, now take out first place. Looking good. If they want to try and see if they can claim first place by the end of day one. It's just it's just like how in the last game, it's like, you win one, oh, you're out early. Navi wins one, a huge game. Oop, you're out early. It's all Martin's fault. He said that he wants to see Sonics and Genji do well, not Navi. Oh, oh yeah, oh go. yeah, it is Avengers fault. Well, go. that's like most things, you know, it's Avengers fault. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who to blame. Martin is right over there. <laughs> all right, well, 4 a.m. has the eastern edge of the Georgia Pole Mountain. Western edge still controlled by Cerberus. LLG trying to maneuver their way up the western road. 
uh, in a pretty wide split. Yeah, and that's the issue for those teams that didn't up to aggress up towards the city early on. Those kind of uh, patrols, butts or gatekeep, and we can call them toll booths, have already been set up and you're paying with your life in these tolls. So not really the areas you want to run through. All right, exactly. It's it, it, The good teams are so smart about setting mm. up those kind of traps and you see it so many times without Gen G against the Sonics, now the Sonics yeah. do it to Na'Vi. Yeah. All these kind of maneuvers that these teams are making and what a great one for the Sonics. What a gift there. The team that's above them in first place. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, as wild as you thought this circle was, everyone out there in the chat, keep in mind that the next one can include Wanda too. And there's plenty of water in this one. So we might not be all done with the wonky shifts for the day. In the meantime, though, let's see who will be the real victors of this King of the Hill showdown between Cerberus and Foy. And yeah, Summer there out in the open. Brahimas finally Ooh. able to get the spray under control. Shaloop taken down by Tycon as well. Himas trying to keep crazy 1-1-2 at bay. Lou and Summer here, it, it, they are in dire straits. They are yeah. unresable. Get away. You tried. You did not achieve what you wanted. Concede it and fall back. I think it's the better play for them. It would be great for uh, Xiaohe. Actually, as I say, that they're still up here. Not really looking to want to leave just yet. Of course, there is still a bit of distance between the two. But uh, I was expecting to see them try and get off the hillside instantly. And actually, as I say that, Gen G are coming up the mountainside now too. Yeah, Gen G now has been pretty keen to take some third parties and those other things. Circle is going to continue west, Toby, but next one uh, will leave the water as much as it can. So yep. probably near the hospital I mean, is where we're going to finish. If you're day trade now, swap those ARs for shotguns because there will be people coming down towards your compound. Same thing here now happening for Tianba as Howl make their way up close. Yeah, Howl there able to avoid any damage. The grenades from Tianba landed on the roof. The Madden now can use that opportunity to get in through the already open window. Long skirt trying to play some defense. Do they know that Mad got in? And do Tia, do Howl know that Tiampa is actually caught in the 2-2 split? If Tiampa could, they would probably want to leave here. Issue is the vehicles are downstairs, and Howl already has full control of at least parts of the downstairs in this building, so they can't get out of here alive. They have teammates in hospital. Yeah, and Ruin here has the Groza, so he's got a great gun in this situation, potentially. 7-7 Seven -seven Long Skirt just trying to hide up. Schofield now. Trying to come in from the back. I saw a tire get popped in the mix of all of this. Longsker with the molly in hand. It lands right on the mat. Here comes Ooh. Ruin, though, with that grows. He finds one, but Longsker able to deal with him for now. That's two down. Longsker doing a ton of damage here, but Tianba is falling in the mix. Mad. He's still alive, Schofield with barely any health. And that's the thing, even if they take casualties, they only had to take down two. The other side, they needed a whole lot more, so they're able to come out victorious. All right, well, Cerberus still defending this, but now Xiao Hai finds an Akimas is just gonna go for it, and he's gonna finish the job. Good job by Cerberus, but they've only got one left, and well, forget it. They get wiped out on the backside. Well, okay, Timas is still alive. Okay, yeah, I thought, he, I thought he was done. I was like, he's got to be gone. Third eye with a great timing on this third party. Yeah, really smart engagement on their side. It's always difficult to try third party uphill because they will, if you're in vehicles, definitely hear you and see you coming. So smart timing on their part. Now they get to fall back down. They still got a minute to go until the new circle is going to reveal itself. And uh, since they're on the, 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 the land side of things, it should be all right. Issue is, pretty much regardless of where they want to go from here, it's going to be occupied. Yep, all right. Twisted Minds, once again, driving by 17. This time a little bit of damage done, but I think they're okay. Oh, I said I spoke too soon. Am I got to do Spiro like that. got to do Spiro like that. Wow. I thought he was good, but wow. I, I done jinxed him. Wow. I have that power. <laughs> Sometimes we all do it. It's, it, right. feels, it feels great and terrible when we're able to do things like that. Mostly great. It's, mostly, it's great. mostly great, yeah. There's only like 2% of me that Just feels bad. Just press the button, die. Die. And uh, it happens. It's the DF. Now let's see 25 seconds until the new circle pops. At this point, with the exception of third eye, pretty much everyone is in a spot from where they go. <sighs> You're feeling pretty good, Kevin Circles. Please just go to us, because we don't want to have to move. That's why you probably won't see another knock until the new circle has popped and teams once again start rotating. Even if a knock does come through within the next seven seconds, it's uh, probably going to be a knock that's going to get rest. Let's see now, though. Babes, where does the next circle take us? Certainly. And it's going to just, Whoa. yeah, towards the hospital. Surprise. <laughs> Left the water, and now we're just kind of plopped right down on top of day trade. So everybody in South George except Donawa has to vacate. And this makes it even worse if you're a Tiamba player, right? We said it. I mean, I said day trade should be ready for pull-ups. How uh, the, Tiamba should have been as well. They had hospital. They had a solid two-way split. Didn't regroup fast enough, and now they paid the price. Yeah. I am scr left scratching my head a bit uh, as well. Reminds me a bit of some of the plays in 
Gen G's book uh, on day one of the loser's bracket, uh, where they have an opportunity to, you know, not fight and get their full force in a central mm -hmm. location, and they still can't. Sometimes you just don't park those vehicles where they need to be in order for you to get back to your teammates. And because of that, now Lin Shu is set with the entire hospital to himself. Hooray! I have a hospital. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be. Making I mean, a lot it's of a money. whole hospital. Imagine like all that equipment in there and all that. Like you, could, you could have streaming rooms. You yeah. Could have, like different gaming rooms. Yeah, there's so much space for activities. A ton of bathrooms in there. Like yeah. they're all over the place. Reference to a really good movie, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Seventeen have yet to. I'll say to make landfall and circle. They are kind of here, but I hope for Lin Shu that he can somehow sound like a four-man team because if seventeen gets any. Like indicator that there's just a solo set in here, you can be pretty convinced that they are indeed gonna push on it. And obviously, Linshu can only peek in so many directions at the same time. So Sushu might just wanna slowly creep down towards the hospital. Yeah, I, I think eventually Seventeen is going to be uh, wanting to get in there. It's mm. just a matter of like, will it be at the same time as Twisted Minds? Is yeah. there gonna be kind of some weirdness with that? Genji is fanned all the heck out. One three. Uh, there's a crate dropping right by them. Oh, LG slamming into Ghibli. Ghibli there, Tosi taking a bunch of damage. Glass trying to put a grenade out the window. Kickstart got the knock. Actually, it's Flood who got the knock, but Glass and Tosi have two down. It's a two for one so far. It's a couple of times today we've seen Kickstart be the first one to fall on these engagements. He's been such a high impact player in previous uh, rounds, yesterday and the day before. And I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing LG in a, a bit of a different area of the leaderboard than we've been used to seeing them over the course of this tournament so far. Glass throwing some smokes to buy time for this res. Gumin as well coming in. Grenades are out, but LG is already pushing through. Gumin just watching this player in front of him. That info is going to be relayed over. Finally, he's going to deal with kickstart. Flood now trying to watch for Gumin angle. This is huge because if Dano catches wind of this, they might just want to peek down and see what they can get. Again, remember, they're only two players left alive, but this fight has been taken to the roof. There's a gas can up there as well that could potentially light on fire and take someone down with it. Glass has to prone down. Donawa has situated themselves where they can kind of watch this fight a yeah. little bit, maybe have something to say about it. But with Relo up on that roof, LG has sort of gained control of the high ground a bit. I mean, with Heaven's position, they're pretty equal, I suppose. Grenade now. Going to be cooked by Heaven right in the window. Is it going to get in that room? It does. It gets Snakers, but no knock. That is a really nice angle for that need to be locked on through a second. One might actually get a casualty as well. And here comes Soul and Dano. We said they were set up. Try and see if they can find something. And indeed, they did first one to fall as DG. Now, Tame and Force out of the vehicle. Salute with a double headshot to follow. Takes down number two. And again, remember, <laughs> Dano, we're down to two from real. Is he under the car now? I think he, he might, might be. just be. <laughs> That is the, I mean, if, if, if getting knocked out of a car wasn't worse enough, now the car's parked on your face, that's just humiliation. Tame and false. All right. It reminds me of a classic Pansy quote. Anyway, uh, Ghibli now still trying to hold the line. It's still doing an okay job of it. Stakers taking down super, super low. Flood flashed. I don't see anybody pushing down just yet. Oh, wait. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Here comes Tosi. They've got more flashes that they want to commit, but there's the knock from Relo on the roof. Able to be traded here. And only one standing for LG. Yep. Just one more player left alive. It's Snakers on the roof. Trying to stay put. Spotted Heaven now on the other side. Heaven can bait as much attention as he wants because he has his entire team sat down below. Good thing for them is that Ascent has no kind of uh, interest in peeking on over. There could be an open Snakers on the hillside if they wanted to. Yeah, well, you, you, Ghibli knows they got to deal with this sooner rather than later. Yes. So here they come up the stairs, and the good news is, is there is a shotgun, but Snakers, does he have enough time to switch to it? No, but he gets one before getting taken down. So Ghibli able to find the right timing to finish the job. And Danoa, I mean, while they have been, we can say a little lesser Korean team today compared to Gen G's performance, have just single-handedly taken out the entirety of Gen G 2v4. It started with Pio flexing into the city. There they lost one. And then off of that, they've just driven one by one by one into annihilation. And now, finally, other people get the better of Danoa. Salute falls. Yeah. Well, you can see Seoul will be trying to go for this res. 17 sees Twisted Minds once again. A, a protracted fight, a long one, mm -hmm. uh, mostly in 17 gaming's favor as Twisted Minds lost a player to them. But so far, Twisted Minds is hanging on. Yeah, 17 still hasn't, I guess, had a real reason of fully committing to a push on to Hospital. But they must have heard that either Lin Shu hasn't been shooting at all, or there's been at most like one DMR shooting from in there. You'd have to imagine that they, if they wanted to, could push on it. The thing is, they still have 
they're rich inside this next circle, so might as well sit tight. Don't go over sellers. Wait for the next shift to come through, and we'll see what happens then. Soul and Salute pushing towards that same angle, but Ghibli's just going to drive a day trade. This is mega aggressive. I don't know if this is going to go well. They're so beat up. One good grenade, a couple good shots. Who chills at Belmoth and Flash all combined to send Ghibli out. Who chills? Tummy gunning. That is not something you see too often. Why not? I mean, in this situation, it's not a bad gun to have, right? It really isn't. It really is not. Oh my god, Donawa is still alive. Okay, Salute's knocked again. This time it's Poochills from afar. Perfectix watching. Soul finds the headshot, finds the elimination. Donawa not able to get into placement points. But a lot of points racked up for a salvage game for this Donawa squad. Finding all of Gen.G and multiple others just short of placement points, though. Uh, Tingleton trying to get the smokes out, and it's actually... Apocalypse and Shao Udd from far that lay in some serious damages. He's trying to set up a smoke wall to prevent Ascend from really getting pushed in. Grenades and other things continue to rain, but Sonic's not able to find the mark in terms of damage. Well, this is not good for Sonic's. They need to use all their smokes to hold back Ascent, but they also need the smokes to make their play on further in because they are outside the circle as well. Ascent, those zero kills so far. They have had a really good position for the majority of this game, but haven't found anything as no real action has taken place in and around their spots. So we'll see what's going to happen now. And then, of course, once they had to leave, no shots been heard from inside here. Maybe one. That's why 17 now finally aggressed towards hospital. Lin Shu had clearly identified a shotgun in this compound a long time ago <laughs> and went right for it as soon as he heard people coming oh. in. Little Ghost only takes a little bit of damage, able to duck into the safety of the corner room. Lin Shu trying to push up the stairs, finally able to find a shot. He needs to get out of there. He is on zero health, but cannot. Twist. Hot on his heels with 17. Twisted Minds is pushing in as well. They heard the commotion. Only two play players left alive. Maybe hoped that Lin Shu was going to be able to do more damage with a shotgun, but had to make an aggressive play. Could not play outside any longer. And now this one might just become a stalemate for a little while. We'll see. This is PNC 2019 vibes here with the fight inside <laughs> of the hospital. Now it's very different regions battling, but looks in a similar scope. And oh, how in the world what? does Shao win that? How in the world does Shao Didi win that? <laughs> that was impressive. Shao Wu out victorious as Twisted Minds fall in sixth. And now this battle was bound to happen as well, but it's actually a send. Kind of falling to Sonics. I thought they would get the better hand of it, but just have not been in the position to really get anything going. It's it's tough sometimes to push this dip, and Mika actually tried to wrap around. Kiliakai gonna go down to the blue. Mika's actually wrapped towards uh, Schofield from yeah. Owl. So this is giving the Sonics breathing room, but again, anywhere north of that dip that they're in is wide open. Yeah. Everyone waiting now for the next circle to pop. Of course, Sonics cannot wait that long as they are currently outside the present circle. Have to make a play on four to think they saw Mika was alone now. Smokes, early smokes have been deployed, but they're under five and pretty much half the server left remaining. Yeah, these shots are good from Apocalypse. Shrimzy did get Mika. Tiggleton has been flushed on the backside. It's only a couple players left. The vehicle explosion is going to land on top of it. <laughs> oh my god. What is it with Kaz just wrecking people today, even after they explode? Uh, dude, spend one of those games. <laughs> just one of those days, dude. Oh. Adds to the chaos. If I could find Swan, but because of, okay, I was going to say because of the speed, I might just be able to fall back behind that smoke, but Little Ghost takes him out. So Shrimsy might be able to get h wit up here, but other than that, not a whole lot's going to happen for them. And in, to make matters worse, the circle just shifted away from them again. Yeah, I mean, this is rough for Sonics. That that dip is great if the circle ends anywhere near it. Mm. Uh, but in this case, it was not in their favor. And then if you have to leave it, the compounds in this part of the map are so, so powerful. Grenades hitting Shrimsy, but no knock. Just a flush from Belmoth onto h win I do kind of like that no one really has the upper hand in this next shift. Howl potentially could wrap out East. They trade the issue for everyone else, or everyone to say um, 17 and Howl, is that they trade is still in, like on the very edge. And you can see now Schofield actually doing the exact rotation I was going to talk about. Out on the east side, you can play the rich line there, depending on how aggressive 17 dares to play on it. I, I like what 17 is doing here. Yes. They understand what the powerful position in this circle is, and they, they got to contest it. They got to vie for it. Uh, if they're going to find themselves a chicken dinner in this game. Day Trade's compound is still technically in, uh, but likely not for phase eight. Mm. Gotta isolate fights. You gotta, if you're Howl, you gotta see how can we take a fight to one team without the other one engaging on us. Issue is, it doesn't really matter when Soju can just lob on eight over the rich line, find two, and have Apocalypse sat back going, well, I guess I have to try and see if I can win this one on my own. Well, and think about 
how much extra utility 17's able to scrape up in that hospital throughout yep, the yep, fight. Yep. Trimsy did go down to the blue. Little Ghost watching the exits. Flash has already been knocked for Day Trade. And now Day Trade's Nurin's trying to get underneath their noses. Apocalypse still trying to be a part of this. Belmont is a headshot on a Shao DD. That could be the biggest headshot of his life. They're just going to crash this. It's just Nurin's left now as Belmont gets taken down. And Little Ghost sniffs out Nurin's and takes him down. Little Ghost took out all of Day Trade. Where were you when you were the captain of my fantasy team? Just like that, I'm Little Ghost able to pop off your team too. I'm asking the same yeah, question. exactly. Yeah. Welcome back, Little Ghost. This is how we play late game now. Apocalypse, you're currently sat down in the 11th with no real reason to deny here. How many points are you going to get in a 1v4 against the very, very steaming hot 17 gaming? He's not going to go for it. He's he has a Groza. <laughs> he has a Groza. This is like one of the few <laughs> moments where I'm like, just, just please, please go for it. Okay. Yeah, there was nothing to go. That being said, it was a phenomenal game from 17 Gaming. 11 kills really navigated that late game well. Whenever the next circle, the west, second circle shifted west, they came in, they forced Twisted Minds to turn around, took the warehouse, read the idea that Tiampa only had one player, stole the position away, end game, all theirs. Precisely. All right, guys, we have some highlights, and that is the desk to wrap up the day. Don't go anywhere. We have just a little bit more here from day number one of PGS1. It's a big win for 17 Gaming as they come out with some much needed points and I think maybe contesting for first off the back of that game. But for me, Martin, it has been a story of crazy, crazy circles that I don't get to see very often all showing up here today. Yeah, a lot of the Eastern circles on Miramar and here and more crazy circles on the Wrangle. I love to see it. It's been very chaotic day one yep. here for our Grand Finals and honestly, this is the kind of start you want to have. You still have a lot of teams that are very, very close to each other at yep. the top. You have a lot of teams that are sitting on a huge mid-pack with one great game that can jump into the top six quite easily. Yeah, we were saying that when we looked at it earlier right afterwards that uh, honestly, except with the exception of maybe our 16th right, place right. team, one big game because that's what we're seeing is we're seeing sort of when you, because the circles are so crazy, your top three teams are pulling anywhere from 12 right, to right. 20 points in a match, opening the door for anybody to get back in this. Now, that's six games down, 12 more to go. Is anybody out of it yet? Um, no, I wouldn't. I mean, you can have a you know 70, 80 point right. day and you can pop off, but it's looking like our, our you know kind of favorite or stronger teams looking pretty good. Donova has had a really, really rough day okay. one. I'm a little bit sad for them, but yep. again, we've seen them quite easily come back in some situations, but they could come back into, you know, the usual fourth, fifth spot we've seen them so many times in in the, in the previous Globals, yep. right? But I'm really hoping for them to step up. Um, their their team, they're a, a rust of a caliber that you're expecting to be like yeah. at least in the top four, top five. I mean, I don't think they're playing bad per se. They're right. they're a very frag forward team for sure, uh, and they've taken some big fights. And while they're winning them, I think they're coming limping out of those early game fights a little too much. Right, and that's part of I think the symptoms of the grand final. And in group stages, maybe there's some teams that you can be a little aggressive with, get away with a few more things. Here, it seems like every mistake is just deeply punished. I mean. Even that Sonic send that we saw, it wasn't that far to drive, and it was almost impossible to make it 60 meters. Let's take a look at the top four teams. 17 comes in with 11 kills. Hal getting number two with four. Uh, a big turnaround for Hal from the start of the day today. Yeah, they started with uh, just one point. Of course, see a situation with, uh, where they're able to get second and four. That's great for them. 17, though, huge game for them. They're able to hold down the hospital and stay strong and stay many players alive. So that's obviously going to do that. Suju with a double nade onto Hal was obviously a huge one. 
32 smokes from the Sonic. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and 11 frags. <laughs> I don't even know where you get that many smokes. Uh, but <laughs> on, the, on the deaths of on, bodies on the bodies and their teammates, else. Yeah. maybe in the trunk of your car. Uh, they did everything they could. And it was because it was a tough spot. Here's that transition we talked about. It wasn't that far to go. But when there's hot lead raining down on you, there's only so much you can do. Get over here. H1 ends up going down to the explosion of the car. They do that the five. This grenade Ooh, oh was you. Tip pull and you open heard the it, door. You heard them screaming right. in here. You're just like, oh my god, what's going on? And then they pull up. I love what I'm seeing here. The aggression for 17 game and the confidence coming in. Also, we heard in an interview uh, during game number one yeah. that the confidence and the changes is coming kind of there. We also they have Kado and Pachinki to themselves. Mm -hmm. That's going to be huge. They're Very playing. spread out kills here. Little goes, of course, with five. He's usually the frag of the team. We've seen him before yep. be able to to really pop off, and he's able to do that here again. Definitely comes out as a very high-value player. This is a team that in the group stages, a lot of people were shocked by their performance. They said in their interview that after being targeted, and they used that word, yeah, right. by the Sonics to be pushed into the loser's bracket, some wonder if perhaps they gave them superpowers and sent them down there, gave them what they needed to get comfortable in the lobby, because they came out so strong today. Man of the match, Low Ghost. Yeah, lovely one from him. Of course, being able to, you know, it's a rough one to get out of the hospitals usually, but they were able to take on both day trade and Howl in a, in a case where Howl, they actually had that rich in them. And usually yeah. that rage is really the counter to the hospital, the team that's coming out here. But team summary, Navi still ends on the total, Looking kills good. the top, followed quite closely by 17 and 32 there. So pretty impressive. But Sonics take the top damage here, Tavis. Yeah, it's one of those things like Sonics is in third for kills at 31, but high in the damage. They're going to be a little grumpy about that right, because right. they have been sort of holding on, not being able to close out as many games as they would have liked. Genji's average survival time has skyrocketed. They seem to have found a really good balance between the aggression, the sort of PO led aggression, and finding the right spot to last into the bitter end. Match leader boys, look at where those numbers are. 21 wow. total points from 17. It's going to skyrocket them up that leaderboard. Four teams on double digits, too, here against Sonics. Again, in a, in a good situation where they're able to. Yeah, get more kills, get more points here. They're gonna set themselves a little bit ahead of Gen G. Gen G's had fantastic opening, yep. but falling behind a little bit. They uh, prioritized gatekeeping Sonics in one game. I feel like a little bit fell off after that a little bit. Another tough game for Luminosity down there in 14th place. 4 a.m. A little bit of struggle in that match. And a big shout out to Donawa, who even though they got no placement points, managed to put eight kills on the board. Let's see, end wow. of day today. Where do the teams stand? Na'Vi finishes in first place with 54. Sonics and 17 coming in in second and third right behind right. them. It is a three horse race at the top, but they're not that separated from the mid pack. The mid pack really tight all the way down to 15. Yeah, I mean, even, you know, you could, one good game and you're literally in the top six quite easily here. So super close still, huge difference to be made. But yeah, it's a little bit of a separation here for Na'Vi. Sonics and 17 is going to be super interesting. Hoping to see Gen.G continue kind of their pop-off game. Yep. I would love to see their focus on the placements and the kills rather than trying to kind of out macro some of the teams that they tried to today. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, yeah, for Danova, for sure, I, uh, 15th is not where we're expecting them to. They're a top-tier team, Absolutely. and they definitely need to be in the top five by the end of the tournament. Also, big ups to Day Trade and Ascend right, for right. ending up in those for top sure. eight positions. Tomorrow's matches, we flip it around. It's MMM as we start out with a wrangle and finish in the dusty dunes of Miramar. Not too crazy. The fact that we're doing it this way doesn't really yeah. weight one side to the other for like the team. I do too. Yeah, I'm not sure what the the players prefer. I would, I would assume they prefer three three, but still, this is shaking off a little bit. I feel like you can break that kind of. If you had okay, we had a bad game yeah. on Wrangle, then when you're going to Miramar, it's kind of easier to break that mentality a little bit. So. Yeah, that's what's going to continue, of course, mm -hmm. for the entirety of the Grand Final. Well, and we've seen teams also who maybe, you know, yesterday they said if we have a good one on our angle, we don't have to worry as much about the struggle that we have on Miramar or sort of some tough rotation. Right. So I do like that back and forth idea. All right. So if you're a team in that mid pack, you're right there in the center. You see those front teams pulling ahead. What does tonight look like? Do you just go back and play your same game? What straight back to the straight back to one of the rooms and watching all the games again together with the team, putting down some strategies and looking at how the other teams played. Of course, you have all this information of the of three in the east. Of course, we have Miramar, where we have right. three northeastern circles, super rare that we're going to continue to see that. But there's been a lot of hardships. You have to be. A little bit more ready for that. You can't just take, you know, circle one, circle two, and hunger down on one of the center compounds and hope for everything. Got to be a little bit more ready for that. I want to see some more, you know, splits, some more greedy 2-2 two -two splits and try to hold down more terrain. Yeah, there's, there's going to be a temptation, I right, think, right. for some teams to point it. Well, all three of those Miramar circles were essentially up there sure, at the same sure. spot. It is what it is. And if that's what you need to sort of mentally get through it, that's fine. 
But at the end of the day, that can't be the excuse. So I hope the teams go back, get ready tonight, and come back ready to play because we have 12 more matches this weekend. That's it for myself and Martin here on the desk. But stick around. We're going to check in with Bella. She catches up with some of our teams. And welcome back to the main stage for your daily interviews with me, your host, Bella. That was day one of the grand finals, and the teams definitely brought their A game today. So let's jump right into our interviews. First up, we're going to have Xiao Didi from 17 Gamings join us for the first interview. Please welcome Xiao Didi. Congratulations on coming in first on day one of the grand finals. I want to ask which match was your favorite one? 嗯,首先恭喜你在決決賽的三天的第一天就取得非常好的成績,然後想問一下你們印象最深刻的是哪一局?嗯,印象最深刻的就是最後一局了,然後因為是我們吃雞了,所以最好的。Okay, so the most impressive like game is the last match because they had a chicken oh, a chicken dinner that match. Yeah. Yeah, that kept us on the edge of our seats for sure. Okay, are you confident with keeping your place on the leaderboard for the rest of the Grand Finals? Um, yeah, they they are so confident. They will keep the pace. Ooh, watch out other teams. Okay, lastly, word for your fans at home? Uh, 谢谢粉丝一直以来的支持吧，然后我们会一直努力的。Okay, thank you for all the support for all of our fans, and we will keep trying hard and fight hard. All right, thank you so much. Good game today. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> okay, next up, we're gonna have Genji's Timin join us for the second interview. Please welcome Timin. <laughs> Congratulations on your play today. You were like a dark horse today. You've been on a roll since yesterday. What's changed? 어제부터 완전 젠지가 진짜 각성한 것 같은 느낌이었는데 어떤 다짐을 하신 건가요? 일단 그 개개인의 실수들이 너무 많이 나왔어 가지고 그 실수를 좀 줄이고 이제 그 외곽을 탈때 어떤 그러니까 이제 외곽 탈때 어떤 점이 제일 유리한지 이제 선점할 거 선점하고 그리고 이제 사실 제일 큰 거는 솔직히 이것도 다 개개인 실수였어 가지고 네. They wanted to work on, you know, conquering the outskirts of the circle, but you know, they picked up on the individual players mistakes and made it happen today. Second question, what's your team's game plan for the grand finals? Has it changed after today? 그랜드 파이널에 임하는 게임 플랜 한번 좀 말씀해 주실 수 있나요? 오늘 첫날 이후에 이후에 좀 바뀐 점도 있는지. 방금도 말했다시피 이제 외곽을 어떻게 타야 되는지 이제 좀 생각하면서 좀 하고 있고 그리고 이제 뭐 잘하는 팀들 거좀 보면서 이제 좀 배울 점도 배우고 뭐 이제 실수를 일단 최대한 줄이자라고 생각하고 있어서 이렇게만 좀 미끄러지지 않는다면 진짜 우승도 할수 있을 것 같습니다. Okay, they're gonna focus on conquering the outskirts of the circle and getting, you know, no mistakes in. And they said, he said, that, you know, if it all works out and if they don't make any more mistakes, they might make it as the champions. 마지막으로 우리, word for your fans, 팬들한테 한마디 먼저 해주세요. 어, 일단 팬분들 항상 응원해 주시고, 예, 감사합니다. 더 열심히 해서 우승해 보겠습니다. 화이팅! So thank you to your fans, and you know they're gonna give their all to make it as the champions. Thank you. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. There we go. There you have it. That was the inside look on day one of the grand finals. We're gonna be back same time, same place tomorrow for day two of the grand finals. So we'll see you then. Bye bye.